Masters. Live from Augusta National with Mark Chapman on 5 Sports Extra and BBC Sounds. Good evening, welcome to Augusta National for our uninterrupted coverage of the opening round of the 88th Masters. Plenty of red on that big white leaderboard, so plenty of players under par. We got underway late because of uh, morning rain and overnight rain, so uh, we didn't start until half past ten. That early rain meant the conditions were a little bit easier. The breeze has started to pick up, though, this afternoon, so it's testing conditions now, uh, and our leader is one clear of everybody else, Ian Carter. Yes, that's Ryan Fox of New Zealand. Bogey free so far through 12 holes. He opened up with three straight birdies, then picked up an eagle three at the par five eight. That's taken him to five under par, and he's one ahead of the live player, Bryson DeChambeau, who also opened with three straight birdies. He has picked up three birdies in a row now and has moved to four under par. So within a short of the lead a birdie two at the 15th for Danny Willett the 2016 champion from Sheffield has got into the group at two under par and ominously for the rest mark Scotty Scheffler is also in that group blemish free so far he's picked up a birdie at the sixth and at two under par is already within three shots of the lead as for Rory McIlroy it's a bit of a struggle so far at one over par as he plays the seven. Thank you very much, John Rahm. Our current champion won it last year, is one under through seven, which actually brings me straight, straight to his interview with you, Ian, which we played last night on Five Live and on Monday night as well. And he talked about his opening round last year when he double bogeyed the first, but he said, as long as you get through the seventh hole and you are level par, then you are doing okay. And he's just birdied seven. He has, just as he did in the first round 12 months ago, so he'll be feeling very happy. And on that occasion, he then followed it up with an eagle three at the eighth and went on to shoot 65 despite a four putt double bogey six on the opening hole so let's see I don't think that kind of scoring is going to be possible with the flags fluttering as animatedly as they are today I should make mention of Matt Fitzpatrick as well because he's off to a very steady start uh, the winner of the US Open a couple of years ago the man from Sheffield birdied the second he's played par golf no drop shots and he's playing with John Rahm heading up the eighth like the Spanish defending champion at one under par. So, so as you've already put your prediction hat on, if the, if the wind stays as is and the flags continue to flutter, what, what are you expecting to be leading in the clubhouse at the end of the day? I think anyone who signs for a 67 or better is uh, is going to be right up there on, on, on that leaderboard. It, it just feels to me that it's not just... The, the, the fact that the wind is blowing but it's blowing in such a fluctuating manner it makes it so hard to judge not just the approach shots which we've so often talked about the need for precision at Augusta but also it can put you off your stroke in terms of your putting as well so I think it's going to be a real challenge out there today well and, and right on cue Catherine Downs we are, we are here above the 15th green the 16th tee just behind us and we're having to whisper because Danny Willett and his two playing partners are on the 16th tee behind us in, in glorious sunshine but actually for the last 15-20 seconds the flag in front of us on 15 was limp and actually now it's just started to flutter again and we've already seen it cause havoc for some of the players at least two of whom have gone into the water in front of this green yeah I think it's what's been putting them off on this 15th this is this long risk and reward par 5 that comes down from the hill over the water they've had the wind behind so they've under clubbed and so they've been catching that down slope right at the front when the wind has stopped they've not got enough club to get them up onto that slither of green and from the top of the hill it's so narrow with that run off at the back down towards the water on the 16th. Danny Willett just about to hit his tee shot on the 16th. I'll keep an eye on that for you, Mark. OK. Any drama with wind for you, John Murray? If you pardon the expression. Well, you caused me to knock over my binoculars there. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe it was a touch of wind. <laughs> um, but is it causing havoc around Avon you know, Corner? The, the, str the strange thing, you know, as, he, as Ian said there, and, and Ian's watching the pictures from all over the course, and is clearly seeing the flags fluttering, at all of the various greens. The, the remarkable thing here is that this, this wonderful spot that is Amen Corner, the shortest hole on the course, the famous part three, the 12th, Golden Bell, 
with the, the flag away in the distance over Re- Ray's Creek, it, Trish Johnson, is just hanging straight down as though these were the calmest conditions that, <laughs> that you'd ever seen. Yeah, it's absolutely bizarre because 11, obviously, just, just a little bit lower down than the 12th green. The flag is, it's, you know, it's giving a, it's giving a fair assessment of itself. Um, but the trouble is you cannot feel it from where they are. So you're looking at 12 thinking, well, there's no breeze coming, but we know we're, we're about 50 foot above that. And we can feel a massive breeze, but it's, again, as we've stated before, it's not constant. So it, it's swirling around uh, and it just makes, you've got to hit the shot at exactly the right time. Well, the, the flag on 16 up away to our left, Catherine, is, is fluttering violently from right to left. It, well, it was, and now it's swung around to come back down towards the... Uh, oh, my goodness, that was very nearly a hole-in-one from Austin Eckert. He judged it absolutely perfectly. The wind was hammering in from right to left, and he slung it out to the right, and it came back in on the wind, and it's come to, to rest about a foot or so from the pin. But I've seen so many leaking out towards those big gaping bunkers on the right underneath the pine trees because it's like a switch. The wind just goes, and the ball's out to the right hand. Just news of Danny Willett? He's put it to about six feet or so, so it could be back-to-back bo- birdie. birdie. Birdies, not bur- burgers. Burgers. Back to back burgers. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> for Danny Willett. Um, Ian, bear in mind, just one on Danny Willett. I'm, I'm sure we will hear from him once he has completed his his round today. But bear in mind, last night when we were talking about UK golfers who were here, there was still a question mark over whether Danny Willett would actually be starting today. Very much so. The practice rounds have been a fitness test in 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 their entire essence, really, for Willett. He hasn't played competitively since the BMW PGA Championship at Wentworth, which was played last September. He went uh, underwent surgery on what had been a nagging issue in his shoulder. I spent a lot of time with him in December, and you know the the just the frustration of rehabbing from shoulder surgery was was hugely frustrating for him and even then he wondered whether he'd be in a position to be able to take his position as a former masters champion in the field here at augusta he came here to give it a go and he'll be feeling very very pleased with himself right now two under par through 15 holes andrew mcgee i know i know we talk about you know players coming to this course and knowing this course and whatever form they may be in it changes when they come here because it, they are their game is set up for this course and Danny Willett a former champion here of course but that is still a remarkable performance it's it's incredible I mean we talked about playing your way into this tournament for for, for him to play what one round um, hasn't played since September I see it written down in front of me that's pretty amazing. I mean, today is the, the golf course is different than when he won. There's some new tees back further. Um, number two was just a monster. Number 11, of course, we know is the hardest hole in the course. Um, but it's it's an incredible, it's an incredible feat by Danny Willett. He's he's really got it. He's got some confidence. He's got a good look in his eye. Mark, the sound you heard there, a very explosive looking or sounding tee shot was from Bryson DeChambeau on the 15th looking to take advantage of the par 5, but the tee shot just leaking out to the right, so we'll have to wait and see whether or not he's got an opportunity to go for the green in two there. When we were talking about Bryson earlier, Andrew, is is the I mean, I know he's obviously launched that one. Is, is the feeling that he isn't we went through a phase, didn't we, where, where it was all about dis- it was all about trying to hit the thing as hard as possible. That's what it felt like. And, and where was it, Ian, where he, he, he drove over 400, didn't he? Where was that? And they were all cheering behind him. That was at uh, um, the uh, Arnold Palmer Invitational um, at Bay Hill on the sixth hole when he was, he was almost trying to drive the green on yeah. the par five because of the water. If you, the, 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 that was you, it. You, yeah, he was trying to cut the corner there. And it was really the first sporting cheer we heard post-COVID, wasn't it? That was the, yeah. that was the, the, the amazing thing about that. I'm just playing for time here because the second shot now of the defending champion is from John Rahm at the eighth, 225 four yards out up the hill on the par five looking to find the green in two and that one is not being found by the camera so, so not onto the putting surface it would seem. so whilst you wait to see where where john Rahm's second has gone on eight do, do you think andrew he's stopped trying to launch everything to the moon 
Um, I, I mean, I do. I think he probably hurt himself. I, I, I've heard that, that he's just trying to slow down. I'm just slowing down to, what, a 125 miles an hour, which was, was a big feat for mm. him from 135. And I think he's trying to save his body. Um, we've seen what Tiger looks like these days. After swinging that hard, you, you're going you're gonna to wreck your back sooner or later. And I think he's uh, in pretty darn good shape. Um, very impressive four under after 14 holes, DeChambeau, to come out and We'll show these fellows the live guys may have a little game too. <laughs> We're still waiting for Brooks Kepka to start. A lot of people favoring him uh, this week. The last players today, by the way, don't go out until 4.30 US time. Uh, Dustin Johnson, Colin Morikawa and Tommy Fleetwood, the final three outs. That's 9.30 UK time. There is no way the last few groups will be able to finish their first rounds today. At the moment, we're keeping an eye on Danny Willett up. In fact, Danny Willett's about to putt, isn't he, Cap? He is, and this will be for back-to-back -back birdies for the former champion away on the 16th across the water, that green that tumbles down in tears towards the slick surface of the pond. Danny Willett crouching over the ball now, head-to-toe in navy blue today. This looks good, and it's in for Danny Willett. Birdies on the 15th and the 16th, and he moves to three under par, two off the lead. Here. Ryan Fox from the trees on the 13th just played out there. Couldn't go for the green in two, but has successfully laid up. So we'll be looking to attack with his third shot into the par five uh, there. We've just seen Ben Ann holding for a birdie at the 12th as well. So the Korean back to three under par alongside uh, Danny Willett, and he is within two shots of Fox's lead. Let's get more details on that birdie from John. Yes, he uh, he just dropped a shot at the 11th, actually, Ben and the popular South Korean. He'd actually raced his, his putt by, and he left himself eight feet, wasn't able to make that, so dropped a shot at the first hole of Amen Corner. But Trish Johnson played the 12th beautifully. The, the flag today the hole is right in the middle it's that central uh, pin position so the uh, if you can imagine the scene that sort of uh, that as we look at it here very narrow looking green that widens at either side and the central portion is very narrow there are two bunkers at the back up on the slope and all of the bushes and the blossom in behind that and the pine straw and then one big bunker at the front so the the hole is right in the middle of those two bunkers at the back and at the front and he hit it Ben and his tee shot to what 20 feet to the right and rolled it in to get back to three under yeah beautiful birdie i mean this hole is just going to get tougher and tougher with this wind blowing we've just seen mickelson hit his tee shot obviously being a lefty he's coming in from the other angle pitched it past the flag just at the back edge i think he's okay he's still in the, just the semi-rough at the back playing okay so this is a cracking group as well though tony finn out next to go and just the players and their caddies just time and time again stand over the ball and then all of a sudden back off because they're just, we can just feel it getting up again. Really, it is blowing a bit of a hoolie up here. Yeah, but again, strangely, the flag away in the distance, barely moving. Yeah, uh, Mark, we've got Tony Fino, who's a level par, and also Sepp Stracker, the, uh, the new Ryder Cup player, the Aust uh, Austrian-American, as, uh, as we referred to him in Italy. And Tony Fino has hit a, a, a lovely shot in there. Just, I think it's just over the hole, isn't it? Yeah, an absolute beauty. Flag high on the left, and he's uh, got a great opportunity from about 15 feet. And, uh, and Phil Mickelson, Ian, is one under. And Rory McIlroy is on the eighth tee now, one over par. Managed to uh, successfully two putt from the front of the seventh green to steady the ship. That's two consecutive excellent two putts for McIlroy from long range. Sends this one down the right-hand side, urging the ball to go and carry the bunkers down the right-hand side. And that is a huge drive from McIlroy all the way up to the spectator walkway. And the green will be within range for him on this par five. For eighth, John Rahm, I can tell you, uh, we were struggling to see his ball after his second shot to the eighth just missed the green to the right and he's actually just chipping now bunts this ball forward up onto the putting surface and the masters champion will be delighted with that that has come up to almost tap in range and that should be a birdie for ram that would take him to two under par and um, probably worth uh, just uh 
telling you some of the players who aren't yet out on the course. Everything delayed by uh, a couple of hours this morning because of overnight rain and then heavy morning rain. So uh, just before 20 past three US time, 20 past eight UK time, uh, former defending cha uh, former champion Patrick Reed will go out in the group after him. You've got Tyrrell Hatton. Then in the group after that, you've got Adam Scott and Sam Burns and Cam Young. Tiger goes out six minutes to four o'clock. So six minutes to nine o'clock alongside Jason Day and Max Homer. Brian Harmon, the Open champion, follows Tiger alongside uh, Brooks Kepka and Tom Kim. Uh, Jordan Spieth is out in the penultimate group at 4.18. And then the final group out, Dustin Johnson, Colin Morikawa and Tommy Fleetwood. And I know, Andrew and Ian, you've been watching TV pictures of Tiger Woods on the practice range. Yes, we have, working on his technique, really sort of grinding away in Tiger Woods style, chomping at the gum that's in his uh, mouth and looking very comfortable, actually, with a, an unfamiliar face as far as golf fans will be concerned in terms of a relationship relationship with Woods because his caddy is no longer Joe LaCarva who's with Patrick Cantlay it's Lance Bennett who used to work with uh, Matt Kuchar among others so he's grinding away on the range the news of the leader Ryan Fox Andrew he has just chunked his third shot on the 13th got way too much of the fairway not enough of the ball and that has skipped into Ray's Creek so the first real big error from the New Zealander yeah it seems like a simple little layup shot shot there on number 13 but if you get too close to the green um, you maybe have to play a, a three-quarter sand wedge looks like he was trying to take something off that and he hit it fat and into race creek a blunder his only blemish so far when this beautiful five under par rounds about to become four or three under what's he um, dealing with one of the important issues what's he wearing tiger now he's ditched nike He's got well. He's got his obviously the new the new brand of Sunday Red, mm -hmm. which uh, it's a, like a powder pink kind of top, sleeveless sweater. Although the sleeveless sweater has has gone, it is muggy out there, isn't it? It's quite quite warm. Um, but yeah, powder pink to start his. Uh, would you say azalea pink? I don't know. Trousers. No. I mean, obviously Trousers. he's got trousers on. I mean, what yeah. colour are they? <laughs> Grey, I think. Right. Grey from memory. Right. It's, it's not the best. Um, it's no. Not, it's sartorial issues are not my strength, no. as you well know, Mark. Well, yeah. I can't tell what colour trousers are. <laughs> I just can't remember. <laughs> That's the but truth. You are, you know, you you are very descriptive. So I thought, I thought you may just have uh, you may just have spotted it. When it, when he's out on the first tee, we'll get a proper look at, at what Tiger is wearing. Let's um. Let's bring Alistair Bruce Ball in, shall we? Mainly, mainly because we haven't heard from him yet and I, I don't want him thinking that we've ignored him and I don't want you listening thinking that he's work shy and not doing anything. So, what are you doing? Thank you, Mark. Uh, keep my powder dry up in the grandstand to the left of the 17th green. So due to our delayed start this afternoon, there's only two groups so far have gone through the 17th. As I think our regular Masters listeners will know, very demanding finish to this golf course, the par four 17th and 18th. Our commentary position is high up to the left-hand side of the 17th green. It's called Nandina, it's 440 yards long. You wanna get the drive out there as far as you can to get yourself as flat a lie as you can for an approach into a, a, a narrow entrance to the green, although the players aren't looking at that. The pin today is cut back middle and the, and the breeze is really blowing hard at the moment. The sunshine has disappeared and it's kind of blowing into the face of the golfers today. Two giant bunkers left and right uh, at the front of the green, but the big no-no here at the back of the 17th is going over the back and, and, and that is where you've got to be really careful with a pin like this. There's only five or six yards beyond that pin and then it's a really steep, shiny slope and, and the up and down from, from the back down at the bottom there is, is a one in ten, even for these world-class golfers. So Danny Willett will be in our, in our was, sight soon. And the, yeah. grandstand, the grandstand here, Mark, is only about an eighth full I, at the moment. Do you know what? I can see it through the mm. trees and I can see a man in a sort of sky blue shirt and maybe a woman on the front row in a bright red shirt. And apart from that, I can't see anybody else in, yeah. in that section. Just swathes and swathes of uh, green bucket seats. I have to say here, the grandstand at 15 is 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 maybe 90% full as we wait for Bryson DeChambeau cat to come down. Yeah, I can see him. He's found a, a lie in the trees down the right-hand side. I think they might have had to 
push the patrons back a little bit behind the ropes and uh, Bryson DeChambeau's had plenty of time whilst he's waiting for the green to clear to have a good chat about this with his caddy Greg Bodine and now he's ready to hit it he's wearing a kind of lightly striped t-shirt up ahead and dark trousers and the white boiler suit of his caddy standing out against uh, all the colours of the spectators underneath the pine trees in the shade as the sun bursts out from behind these fluffy white clouds and Bryson DeChambeau no stand behind this so he's drive down the right hand side of the 15th the par 5 and he's right at the top of the hill and I don't think from where he is he's going to be able to go for the green he's just going to be looking to lay up here and we've seen very few actually go for the green in two haven't we we've been sitting here for over an hour well it's that fluctuating wind isn't it if they can if they can ride a wave of the wind into the green then we've seen one or two go for it I'd say in, in every three ball we've seen one player has gone for the green with, with varying success but a lot of players choosing to play it safe Bryden DeChambeau launching this one high into the sky heading down towards the down slope and everyone is looking slightly to the left perhaps that went into I tell you what he did go for the green from amongst the trees that's huge power from Bryson DeChambeau two balls have appeared on the front a back left hand corner of the green there's another through the green at the back and this is Gary Woodland Tilborn Ollison and Bryson DeChambeau so he's on the green in two he's got to look at eagle here Bryson and, and th <laughs> there was a sort of very muted reaction to that and I think that's because the majority of people who are sitting in this stand with us were looking back down the fairway seeing where he was and the angle that he was and were therefore expecting him to lay up short and it was only the sort of two or three people looking left to the green rather than right back down the fairway who spotted what he'd done it, that is a seriously impressive golf shot from Bryson DeChambeau from amongst the trees he'll have been he must have had a really good lie if he'd been you know in amongst the spectators that must have been stamped down knew he could get the club behind it the water is here if he hadn't caught it properly that would have come up short in the water but he's on the green with a chance at eagle and uh, and to usurp Ryan Fox at the top. Yeah, he's got a share of the lead at the moment as Bryson DeChambeau because we heard that Ryan Fox was in the water on 13 and he's bogeyed 13. So he's four under. DeChambeau four under. Uh, you've got Ben Ann on three under. Danny Willett is on three under. We'll get news of him with Alistair Bruce Ball on 17 shortly. John Rahm, the defending champion, is two under, so we birded the eighth, Ian Carter. Yes, he did. It was just the easiest of tap-ins after that delightful chip that he had from just off the front right of the green also getting up and down on that eighth for Bo, uh, birdie was Matt Fitzpatrick so he's also at two under par Scotty Scheffler's come up just short of the green on the par five uh, eighth there after his tee shot comprehensively outdriven by Rory McIlroy who's yet to play his second into the eighth so all those players at two under par John Rahm Matt Fitzpatrick and Scotty Scheffler McIlroy's at one over par and an early Early birdie for Justin Rose. He's at one under par after two. Shane Lowry has birdied the first. He's at one under par. And Will Zalatoris has gone to the turn in a two under par 34. What's Sander? Now I'm going to pick someone you haven't mentioned. But what's Sander Schoffle on? Because he is with Scheffler and McElroy in that group. And a few people yeah. tipped him last night on the preview. Yes, um, with good reason. He's been a very, very steady player. It, that's under underselling it really on the PGA Tour this year without actually getting across the winning line but he's two over par as it stands at the moment so a disappointing start for one of the favourites there. So at the moment we've got uh, Bryson DeChambeau here on 15 with an eagle opportunity and Danny Willett up ahead on 17 so just give us the lay of the land with Willett Ali and then we'll try and balance these two work out just trying to work out here at the 17th mark which golf ball is Danny Willits because from our commentary position here to the left of the green there's a screen of the famous Augusta pine trees that slightly shields you from where the the players golf balls land from the tee shots and then the second shot into the green now if Danny Willett is one of the two balls uh, on the putting surface that I can see 
he's got a reasonably good shot at a third birdie in the row, having birdied the 15th and the 16th to get himself back to two under par. He looks in extremely good spirits. He's bouncing along, walking with a real joyous stride down the right-hand side of the fairway, deep in conversation uh, with the German Stefan Jaeger. And uh, he does seem to be moving towards one of those balls at the back of the green. So get back to me in a couple of minutes or so. We may well have a, a, a Danny Willett birdie putt to come. OK, Wyndham Clark has birdied the par four seventh. So he is two under. He hasn't dropped a shot yet. He's birdied the third and birdied the seventh. Uh, Bryson DeChambeau is stalking the 15th green, Catherine Downs. He is, and he's going to be the next to putt to a pure tour Bjorn Olesen, just a little tentative, <laughs> really, really tricky chip up onto the green at 15 because the water lurks behind and the ball will just disappear away from you into that murky water if you catch it a little bit uh, thin. But he's safely on the green in three. But this is the eagle chance for a slimmed down Bryson DeChambeau. We heard Andrew uh, McGee talking a little bit earlier about how he's had to change his approach to his golf. He's, he's slowed down his swing because his body was really feeling it. On top of that, completely changed his diet. He'd had loads of tests done. He was feeling a lot of aches and pains. And he thought maybe it's not just the golf. Maybe it's not just about muscle. It's about what I'm eating, what I'm putting in my body. So he had loads of tests done and, and they revealed that he was allergic to all kinds of things milk gluten wheat eggs anything you name it so I mean, he still looks incredible he's still well he's still got those massive shoulders hasn't he he's still he's still built like an athlete he's got those rigid arms as he tucks the the, the grip of his putter into the crook of his elbow enormous brown tanned arms rigid and solid as he swings the putter towards the hole. Given there's a little bit of a light touch, has it got enough on it? Just turning towards the hole, this looks very good. Tiptoes past by a couple of millimetres and nestles up into the shadow of the pin. About a foot or so though, it's going to be a birdie for Bryson DeChambeau and that will be enough for him to take the lead. And also his tan is magnificent, Ali. Our Masters leaderboard, the big white board away to the right, has slightly misled me because on the bottom row of that, Danny Willett is still at two under par on the bottom of the board, but I know that he's three under par, having birdied the 15th and the 16th, and that was indeed one uh, of his balls on the green. I'd say about 20 feet or so from the back right to the 17th green for a third consecutive birdie here, late in his first round at this year's Masters. A Masters we thought he, as a former champion, wasn't necessarily necessarily even going to be able to play in due to the shoulder injury uh, that has plagued him for so long but here he is all in dark colors in bright sunshine uh, that sunshine sparkling off his white golfing shoes sizing up a a 15 footer maybe a little bit more than that closer to 20 feet from the back right at the 17th green to get himself to four under par and into a share of the lead with Ryan Fox and Bryson DeChambeau. A little shoulder shake from Danny Willett. One last look at the hole. Not too many in the grandstands watching this gentle push with the putter and the ball starts tiptoeing its way across the putting surface and it just drifts away to the left. Didn't quite have the pace to get there and it ends up a couple of yards short. But it's one of those lovely pars, Mark, that he's going to tap in from, from a matter of inches. Keep the keep the uh, momentum going, heading on to the, uh, the 18th tee, that narrow tee shot up the par four, steep climb, uh, uphill par 4 18th towards the uh, the uh, magnificent clubhouse right at the top of that hill and Danny Willett just bemoaning the fact he didn't make the birdie putt but he remains at two under par and that is just two shots off the lead three shots off the lead of course because of the, the the DeChambeau birdie yeah and that five under has just uh, has just gone up here on the big white scoreboards opposite the 15th I mean he's been under par Ali has Danny Willett since he stepped off the first green yeah exactly well I mean that, that must and be we that. saw him on the first oh, you weren't with us no. actually but uh, I stepped the rest back to do some work, Mark. <laughs> the rest of us were on the first. He played the first beautifully. Yeah, which which must have put the bounce in his step. I mean, that is one of the most difficult holes on the golf course. I mean, not it's not the most difficult drive, is it? The first, but the, we we well know because we've been here year after year after year and watch people struggle with the approach into that first green. It is a treacherous putting surface as well. Tiny little spot you've got to hit into depending on where they put the pin uh, on 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 the individual day. So yes, got got off to the birdie start. Best he's been so far is three under par uh, after the ninth and he remains three under par now uh, having birdied the 15th 16th and and par the 17th um well, yeah last week i went on holiday uh mark and forgot forgot something rather crucial uh, which I'll tell you about in a second. I've forgotten something rather crucial this week uh, as well, which is my binoculars. Oh. I know. Oh, dear. I know, it's an absolute 
honestly, that is one of the top three things you've got to bring for these commentary positions here at Augusta. What did you forget on holiday last week then? <sighs> My pants. I beg your pardon? <laughs> My pants. I didn't pack any pants for holiday last week. No, not but I've, but I've remembered them this week, so I haven't come knocking. Um, <laughs> So I, th- I mean, I think we're I think we're all grateful, to be honest, that you remembered your pants and not your binoculars, really. Yeah. If I was yeah. given both a choice, both useful, though. Both uh, useful. Both useful in very different ways. <laughs> Ian Carter, Rory McIlroy on the eighth got up onto the front edge of the green, and he's got a long, long putt here. It's probably about 70 feet for eagle. Currently at one over par. It's noticeable, Andrew McGee, that he really is taking every care over these shots. Sometimes he can look a little rushed, but he he just hesitated a fraction there before getting ready to address this putt. One you'll have had a few times. Well, not an easy 70-footer. It goes (laughs) down and up and down again, and the wind is down, so the ball is on its way. It's going to get to this crest right there. It's coming down nicely. A little more speed. Oh, he's left it about six feet short of the hole for birdie. Yeah, just needed an an ounce more, but he's got a birdie chance that would get him back to level par. And he looks comfortable. The body language is is positive for for McElroy. There seems to be a ready smile there, even though he currently stands at one over par. And many a big name is in that sort of group at two under and better. And they include the man he's playing with, Scotty Scheffler, who's got an outside birdie chance to come here on the eighth. Scheffler at two under par, as is Cam Smith and Victor Hovland. Ian, uh, there's a slight delay behind us. Bryson DeChambeau's group having I mean, to wait for the group ahead to finish out on the 16th green um, talking about you know him not being really discussed in the build up to this I was, I was just going through all my notes from the press conferences that the golfers do on a on a Tuesday and Wednesday ahead of the Masters when they go into this big, big oak panelled room at the, the media centre and, and the journalists sit there and are able to, to talk to them um, I, I can't find a Bryson DeChambeau interview anywhere did he has he has he gone that under the radar that nobody even spoke to him well he certainly wasn't called in for interview um that's sort of Mm. the 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 domain of the the very biggest names um and Deshambo has sort of you know withered from that position since he's gone to live out of sight out of mind kind of scenario really but he has done um uh, i think he did some quick quotes with with some of the journalists but i think he's about to hit his tee shot isn't he he is here he is cap that was the mighty swipe of the uh, Bryson DeChambeau forearm, sending the ball up towards the flag, which is hanging limp. It's been fluttering at full stretch on the 16th green. This is looking incredibly good. Has landed just slightly to the right of the pin and has drained itself down towards the hole, which is cut just a couple of paces on the front edge on a, on a serious slope. That is a really, really good tee shot from Bryson DeChambeau. Kick in birdie for Bryson DeChambeau here, which would take him two shots clear. Play Playing some remarkable golf and looking incredibly relaxed, just standing down below us with those big, strong arms folded across his chest. And uh, he's just looking into the crowd, isn't he? Just taking it all in. It's all very calm and all very relaxed around Bryson DeChambeau at the moment. I tell you what, Ian, you know, a few, a few people have, have moved up and down. We've got Danny Willett on three and, as I say, DeChambeau on five under. Do you just want to do a quick leaderboard for us? Yeah, Ryan Fox at four under. He was the outright leader until he dropped a shot at the 13th, just playing his second shot in to the 14th. Reasonably well judged, and he's got around 20, 25 feet. So it's DeChambeau at the top of the leaderboard at five under. Fox at four under as he plays the 14th. Danny Willett is going to be coming up the 18th at three under par. So within two shots of the lead, Ben Ann is also at three under. Then the players at two under. And what a cast this we have here. Will Zalatoris, a resurgent figure after all his injury problems. John Rahm, the defending champion, playing the ninth at two under, but going long with his approach there. So he'll do well to get up and down from there to remain at two under. Matt Fitzpatrick's also at two under. Scotty Scheffler, two under. That's the uh, uh, world number one and favourite. The US Open champion, Wyndham Clark, two under par. The European Ryder Cup player, Victor Hovland, two under par. The former Open champion, 
Cameron Smith at two under par. I mean, this is what we want to see. The big names really showing up very, very nicely. And just going a little further down, Phil Mickelson. He's not, he does nothing on live, really, but at one under par, 12 holes into his round, he's having a, a, a fantastic time of it, really, when you consider that he's not done anything since finishing as runner-up at uh, the Masters last year with that 65. Rory McIlroy rolls in his six-footer for his birdie at the eighth, and he is back to level par. Isn't it surprising, uh, Andrew McGee, that, you know, we live in this era where, you know, no stone is left unturned in sport when it comes to marginal gains and, and sports science and medical side of things and so on and so forth and, and yet Bryson DeChambeau in the last 12 months has done all of these tests and suddenly found out all of these allergies yeah that's kind of you thought he would have figured this out years ago if, yeah. I'm, if, if I'm have a gluten problem I think we'd all know that and um, it's amazing because he is that scientific kind of guy right mm. that would analyze every single little tiddly thing and it's it's crazy, but now he's just at the top of his game at the Masters. Who would have thunk it? Just to let you know, Mark, that uh, John Rahm, who missed the green, as I was saying, on the uh, ninth, has putted from off the green. It was right in amongst the spectators. They cleared a path for him, and very delicately he putted down to the hole side, and he will remain at two under par. Tiger Woods, I can tell you, powder pink kind of top, and greyish trousers does that do the job for you That's he's that. making his way towards the team that's absolutely fine some Bryson DeChambeau stats for you the best finish he's ever had at the Masters was in his debut year in 2016 he ended that tied 21st the last two times he has played the Masters 22 and 23 he missed the cut uh, actually at the end of 2019 he was tied for first having shot a 66 here uh, that year um, so that was his best opening round uh, a 66 at the moment he is on for a 67 John Murray what have you got in front of you anything at all at the moment just putting my uh, glasses back on because I was looking through the binoculars at the oh, 12th well uh, done for remembering them <laughs> yeah well yeah yes I'm and at, have you got your pants with you as well yeah full uh, house yes, got, excellent got all well of them I was, I was rather hoping that Ali was going to say that he'd forgotten his pyjamas oh wow but um, but but it wasn't it wasn't to be his pyjamas but in terms of what we've got golfing wise I'm actually just watching Nick Taylor who's on the uh, on the 12th and, uh, and, and and we can see Trish Johnson the idea Ideal play at the 12th today is that is that tee shot just 10 feet to the left. That's a that's a very popular spot. I think if you land it there as Tony Finau did a few uh, minutes ago, then uh, you know where Taylor is with a 10 foot put for a, for a birdie, which would take him back to level par for the tournament. So more from Trish in a moment. But Ian, you have news. 14th and Ryan Fox putting from the back of the green down the slope, borrowing from right to left and coming up an inch short of the hole. That'll be a par for the New Zealander that will keep him at four under par, one behind Bryson DeChambeau. On the ninth tee, Rory McIlroy pulling and hooking his tee shot into the trees, but getting a good ricochet off the branches of those trees and propelling the ball back out into the fairway. The question is, is he far enough back or far enough down to have an unimpeded view of the green, which is at the end of a severe dog leg left and very steeply uphill? So we're just uh, keeping our and Danny Willett going down 18 at the moment on three under uh, and up ahead just as the breeze picks up a bit here over the 15th green and the 16th tee up ahead on the 16th green we'll be waiting for uh, Bryson DeChambeau's birdie putt given the fact that uh, Torbjorn Olsen I think has already gone and Gary Woodland is going next highlights how close actually Bryson DeChambeau is for a birdie opportunity. From where we're standing Mark you know the perspective over the rippling waters of that black pond it looks like it could just be a tap in from a couple of inches i imagine if you get up a little bit closer it's about two foot i'd imagine there was a smattering of applause but you feel like if it was if it was any closer than that there'd have been some big roars as they willed it towards the hole but gary woodley he's a good story isn't he coming back after after brain surgery the 2009 us open champion back at the masters and then it goes for birdie for woodland he's not going so well though i think he birdied the 15th and now the 16th so he's back to three over par as he goes to hand the ball to his caddy so that the stage is set now for bryson de who's down in the squat position looks like a, a little frog 
frog who may have hopped out of the pond. Quite a big frog. <laughs> well, yeah, a, a big frog. And, and we were marvelous. You said that his tan is quite something. He walked past us below the sixth the grandstand here on the 16th tee. He's the, he's the colour of creosote, isn't he? He's, it's remarkable and it's so consistent. That full on tan that must go layers and layers deep in his skin but he's standing stock still at the moment just rehearsing that putting stroke for a birdie that would give him a two-shot lead at the top of the Masters leaderboard on the opening day and that's got to feel pretty good hasn't it for Bryson DeChambeau best round of course tied for 21 back when he was an amateur and in it goes for DeChambeau, just a couple of paces towards the hole, so that gives you an indication that that was about two feet. Plucks the ball from the hole and on he goes to the 17th green with a two-shot lead in his pocket. He touches the peak of his cap as he walks past his bag and his caddy puts the flag back into the hole and picks that bag up. And off they go to 17 and they'll be in view of Alistair Bruce Ball at the moment. But Bryson DeChambeau has birdied 12, he's birdied 13, he has birdied 15 and he has birded 16 and with two holes to play he is six under and he has a two-shot lead over the field uh, the defending champion at the turn is two under big cheer here in front of us on 15 because that was jasper stubbs he's the australian amateur the winner of the asia pacific amateur championship and he's just put one in he laid up on this par 5 15th put one in to within a couple of feet uh, for a birdie and that uh, will be a real boost to him he's currently two over but uh, he's been picking the brains of the likes of uh, Larry Mize and Jack Nicholas as, he, as he's come here to, to take on Augusta for the first time. Huge moment for a member at Royal Melbourne as well. So he, he's played some of the, the toughest courses uh, in the world. And here he is at Augusta. And a, a smattering of applause for the young Australian with the curly brown hair as he walks in front of the grandstand here on, seven, on 50. Ian. Lovely second shot into the 18th from Danny Willett, the champion in 2016. He's got it at almost hole high. He'll have a birdie chance from around about 20, 25 feet. Willett currently three under par, so that putt would be for a 68 that would mark his return to action following his uh, shoulder surgery last autumn. So a really fantastic first day. I think we can say that regardless of what happens on that closing green for Danny Willett. On the ninth green, uh, disappointment for another a fellow South Yorkshireman, and that is Matt Fitzpatrick. He's dropped a shot there, so he's gone back to one under par. Here's Bryson DeChambeau, the leader, as he hits his tee shot, and it's drifting to the left on the 17th and into the trees catches the trees comes out on the whole side and actually just nestles down in the first cut you don't call it rough here really it's just the the second cut isn't it that's what you you'd call it so it's just a marginally longer grass than the manicured fairways but he could be blocked out there for his second shot into the 17th it, we talk all the time don't we about how difficult it is to gauge the form of a live golfer because the statistics are not necessarily as either as readily available or the same as they have been over the PGA Tour. Is that right? Yeah, and I think that it's that the, the, they're they're readily available, and we can work out from strokes gained, which is sort of the currency of golf statistics these days, how you fare against the average in any particular tournament. So there is a kind of like for like comparison that can be made. So, for example, someone like Joachim Neiman, in those respects, is is considered in the top 10 golfers in the world when you compute it that way but according to the world rankings is 90 in the world the problem that the live players have is they get no world ranking points so the official rankings don't give you an idea of their standing but Deshombo is someone who shot a 58 on the live tour last year when he won the Greenbrier uh, tournament on this breakaway circuit that has 14 tournaments a year so he hasn't lost the ability to play the game by any stretch of the imagination but I think the problem that we have Mark is that we don't have a bank of data in the live era that is dependable um, in terms of how these players sit vis-a-vis -vis those that are playing on the PGA Tour and that's why these majors are so important this is the only place that we can genuinely find out but then there will be 
plenty, and, and some of them have said it to, to us, Ian, on the Live Tour, uh, and Trish Johnson, I'll bring you in on this, who say, well, actually, look at the names that are on this tour. Look at, look at the players that are on this tour. And actually, that is really competitive when you look at some of the big names who are playing Live, from Ram to Johnson to Kepka to DeChambeau. Yeah, I, th- I think to be perfectly honest, uh, Chappers, when you look at those names, regardless of what tour they play on, um, uh, they're just top players. Mm. And yes, OK, the, the live goal, 54 hole, shotgun start, no cut, guaranteed money. I mean, it's an absolute dream come true for any professional, basically. It's just a, you know, it's, it's not real golf. But, but nonetheless, once you get into competitive action, there's no question that those players, you know, they don't lose, they lose their competitive spirit uh, no matter what. So, and they're, they're class players. I think, um, you know, as far as DeChambeau was concerned, and I think Kepka as well comes into this category, watching uh, the, the series on Netflix, really, you got the impression that those players went to live because they just thought their injuries were too much for them to actually yeah. compete on the PGA Tour as it's turned out certainly in Kepka's case uh, that wasn't the case whatsoever and uh, he's always going to be involved in these majors because he's such a top player Yeah, here's Danny Willett then from 20 feet on the 18th green cast in perfect sunshine here putting from his own shadow as he sends the ball forward this looks very good oh it's superb and Danny Willett caps a sensational return to action with a birdie at the last he's come home in 35 for a round of 68 and Danny Willett having not played through injury since September is all smiles he is laughing away as he hands his putter back to his caddy there because Danny Willett has carded a four under par 68 and he's the clubhouse leader on this opening day of the 88th Masters. I think I must say this every time I do a golf event, Andrew McGee, but what a silly game it is at times. (laughs) (laughs) You know, that's what we all say. It's such a funny game, but why isn't anybody smiling? I mean, it's... uh, it's Danny Willett is. He is is now. When when you finish Augusta on 18, that's when you start to smile because you know you don't have any disasters ahead of you anymore. Ryan Fox on 14th with a big rip off the tee. 15th he's uh, sending 15th. it down that that par five oh, down lovely. into the middle of the fairway so i would suspect uh, cat and mark you will be seeing the kiwi uh, going for the green in two on that par five it, it, in short while and i hope you're ready for what's going to greet you when you see sergio garcia by the way okay why well put it this way he's he's norwich city in res- in 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 reverse Oh, right, OK. And you'll know him. You'll know when you so see what, him. So what, we go in green shirt, yellow trousers? Yeah, but okay. it's that you've not really given oh, him the full... You'll see you. When you see him... <laughs> oh, my good grief. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's a... That is a... Not vivid. Many, not many, that is vivid. Not many people could... Uh, could carry that off that's a sensational outfit it will be and he's actually just hit his second here on 15 and he's gone right of the green he's gone over the bunker that's on the right hand side of the green so he's got a chip his third shot back a chip back onto the green it it will be really interesting to hear from Danny Willett won't it Uh, Ian Carter afterwards because look it's not a free hit playing the Masters okay but you've had shoulder surgery you haven't played since what what did you say since September since September since September Um, it's it's you know I'll I'll be really interested to find out how relaxed he was coming into this with, with probably very little expectation on himself maybe Yes, and I think if you talk to an awful lot of golfers, they will tell you that one of the biggest imposters that, that, that they can have is high expectations. And when expectations are low, then it's, it's a much easier game to play. Just hesitating slightly because John Rahm playing his second shot into the 10th has pulled it left and it's gone down into that deep depression to the left of that green. Such a difficult downhill par four but he has missed on the right side. Plenty of green to work with, but Ram not finding the green in two on the 10th. Sergio has come more into view. And uh, I mean, that, that, is a, that is a phenomenal outfit choice. 
He looks like he's at the Rio Carnival, doesn't he? Yeah. He looks like a canary meets a parrot. And and you said not many people could pull that off. I'm not sure Sergio Garcia... Are you not having that? No, no. Look at the trousers. They're, they're hurting my eyes in the sunshine. The wind favourable for all the players in this three ball. Sergio Garcia, Chris Kirk, Ryan Fox, because all of them have gone for the green in two. And uh, I can see two balls over and the back. And one of them has just dribbled into the water. Yeah, that was Chris Kirk. So uh, Ryan Fox and Sergio Garcia safely on dry land on this. It's like a little kind of slither of green, isn't it, between the two ponds, the one on the 15th, the one on the 16th. Ryan Fox, Sergio Garcia through the back of the green and the dappled shade cast from those huge, tall pine trees. And Chris Kirk, I'm afraid, dribbled into the water. Yeah. I have to, you know, look, there are so many golfers who wear a, an array of blue, white, grey, black that I just I just find Sergio's choice of bright yellow trousers incredibly refreshing. Let's um let's go up 17 to commando Bruce Ball and find out uh, what Bryson DeChambeau is doing. Yeah, I think I think Sergio's green and yellow choice a little disappointing. I think a, a, a blue and white. Yeah, exactly. I think a blue and white <laughs> would have been a little bit better, but maybe we'll see that uh, come Sunday when he's striding towards winning another green jacket. Slightly disappointing news. Uh, two bits of disappointing news, actually, Mark. One on the Five Live Masters sweepstake. I wasn't sure whether Danny Willett was actually going to be fit enough to participate in this year's Masters, so he wasn't included. Wow. I mean, and there's the, there's the headline. There's, there's, the headline. there's your headline. Bruce, Bruce Ball writes Will it off before the <laughs> first ball has been struck. But Bryson DeChambeau, your other news, which is probably a little bit more important given the fact that he's leading the Masters by two shots in the first round at the moment, coming down the 17th, has missed the 17th green to the right-hand side. Now, I don't have Trish or Andrew sitting alongside me, but both know this golf course extremely well. So if I was to describe it, they might be able to tell us how difficult the up and down will be from the right-hand side of the green. He's not, he's not off the back of the green where the really really steep slope is but he's probably about six yards off to the right of the green and he's got about 15 maybe 30 feet to work with before the flag which is cut deep in the middle of the green ian Rory McIlroy for birdie at the ninth, having played up into the middle of the green, the flag right up at the back of the green, so it's a lengthy putt, it looks like he's given it enough, but just a fraction to the left of the hole, beautifully judged from McIlroy, and he'll tap in and go to the turn in a level par 36. As for Victor Hovland, who's got the most extraordinary shirt with a, a, a dramatic azalea imprinted all over it. Well, he's, uh, he's looking pretty as well on the leaderboard as well because he's knocked in a birdie at the eighth. And the Norwegian at three under par is in fifth place within three shots of DeChambeau's lead. How, how much time did you spend ahead of majors choosing your outfits, Andrew? <laughs> I would never wear yellow trousers, okay? But um, I wouldn't spend that much time. I mean, I, I, I know these clothing companies send out what they want you to wear, mm. um, shirt-wise anyway. Um, but no, I wouldn't spend that much time. Yeah, I, I, think, I think at the Ryder Cup, I think Matt Wallace was talking to us, this, this may have been off air, that outfits are sort of chosen about a year yes. in advance. That's because obviously they then need to get them in the shops and so on and so forth for, for when they're worn. So nowadays, for, for a lot of the big players, it's, it, it's very, very coordinated on their behalf. Oh. Just going to jump in here because Rahm oh. is playing his third shot at the 10th from way down in that depression to the left of the 10th. Not a bad shot, but he's left himself 10, 11, maybe 12 feet to save his par, and he's chuntering as he climbs up that steep bank to get to the putting surface. Chappers, if I can just jump in quickly and finish yeah. up this clothing discussion. Yes, yeah, absolutely. I was staying in the same condo building at the International in Denver one time with Nick Faldo. He was on the bottom floor and I was on the top floor and he'd missed the cut. As I'm walking out the next day, I've looked in the wastebasket, the trash by the, by the front door, and he's thrown all of his brand new shirts away. <laughs> they were just brand new that you can see the wrapper is in the, in the trash bin also. And he's chunked them all away. Brand new shirts. I thought about taking them. Oh, I really did, but I left them. I would, that was going to be my question. Not even <laughs> one? Did you nope. not even take nope. one? Nope, nope, nope. Bad karma. <laughs>
<laughs> We're just watching Scotty Scheffler oh, well, here, just um, tapping in for his par well, after a tentative attempt at a birdie for the hot favourite. Um, let me Tiger go to Woods Ali, is then. just about let to hit to his Ali. tee shot, but uh, Ali? Well, go on, Ian. I think you've probably got time because Bryson DeChambeau is now lining up a birdie putt on the 17th green to try and get himself to seven under, but he's marching around the back of the hole and he's going to take a little bit of time sizing this up. So t talk us through Tiger. Well, he's just going through his fast, limbering uh, actions and just prowling in that tiger way. Dead eyes, a study of concentration. You jump in, Ali, if you need to. He's standing beneath the scudding clouds here on this blustery, blustery Thursday afternoon and he's just rehearsing and he knows full well Andrew McGee that he's not going to get the full 18 holes in today because of that two and a half hour delay and he's just prowling as he one-handedly practices his swing driver in hand but how many times have we seen that look on his face just oh. dead-eyed isn't it uh, he is staring this fairway down and he's he's jumping around like a like a basketball player before the game he's hopping up and down he's shaking his shoulders and he's getting himself loose a massive gallery surrounding mm. this meanwhile first huge. tee box Amazing. meanwhile meanwhile on the 17th green the uh, distinctive ramrod straight arms of the putting stroke of Bryson DeChambeau for a birdie for a fifth in sixth holes to try and get himself to seven under par. This looks really good from the back right of the green. I don't believe it. He's held that from 25 feet from the back right of the 17th green. A fifth birdie in six holes. He is absolutely flying round Augusta National in this first round. Seven under par. That is now a three shot lead, Ian. Huge applause on the 17th, huge applause around the 18th green for the announcement of the 26th attempt at the Masters for the five times champion Tiger Woods. And there are the roars as his ball arcs from left to right and lands smack in the middle of the fairway, going with the three wood. He knows the wind is right behind him. And if there's anyone who can plot his way around this golf course in these difficult conditions, it is Tiger Woods. A uh, beautiful shot tracer to see that slice. It wasn't just a fade right in the middle of the fairway. Beautiful start for Tiger Woods. So Mark Woods is underway and he will take with him the biggest galleries, even though he hasn't played competitively since uh, January when he pulled out in the second round at the Vivri Riviera tournament, his own tournament, the Genesis Invitational. And of course, he hasn't completed a PGA Tour event since uh, making the cut here 12 months ago. And he didn't even complete that, did he? Because he pulled out injured as well. So it's a big, big question as to whether he can be competitive this week I think the big objective is to make the cut preserve that proud record of always doing that as a professional and usurping uh, Fred couples uh, in terms of making consecutive uh, cuts at the Masters there's someone else he's usurping as well and he's just gone completely out of my head Gary but player. Never, that was Gary player thanks Kat well done Gary player Fred couples and Tiger Woods all on 23 consecutive made cuts can Tiger make it 24 I think that's the first and most pressing question for Woods at the 88th Masters uh, here on uh, 15 Sergio Garcia in those stunning yellow trousers has a uh, birdie opportunity which will take him to one over Ryan Fox is in this group as well and he's probably left himself four to five foot for par. The problem with Ryan Fox, Mark, was his uh, chip back onto the green from over the back in two. I mean, he let go of the handle of his club, let the, the wedge tumble to that perfectly manicured turf. He was disgusted with himself, left himself about 25 feet or so for the birdie that he was hoping to set up, failed to get up and down for that. And because this green is so sloped back towards the water, he's got about two feet now, but in it goes safely for its par. Ryan Fox then will stay at four under par, two shots off the lead, but he was hoping, he was hoping to gain on Bryson DeChambeau there after taking the risk and going for the green. Sergio Garcia, I think he's just birdied. Yeah. So uh, the 2017 champion, who hasn't made a, he's only made one cut since winning in 2017, he goes back uh, to one over par as uh, his blinding trousers pass beneath us. 
and back they, uh, they, they, uh, they do and they waited on that big white scoreboard just opposite us they were about to put a seven up for Deschambeau to, syndic- to signify he'd gone to seven under but they just waited they waited for Fox and Garcia to putt before that seven under has gone up and it's been barely noticed uh, by the patrons here at Augusta National and I just wonder Ali as, as you watched him sink that 20 foot for birdie on 17 how he reacted because he's birdie here on 15 his birdie on 16 16, the, the reaction was very, as, it, as it probably should be you know we're on the opening round of, of, of the Masters but you know very understated yeah. little tip of the peak of his yeah. cap and off he goes exactly to the next the hole yeah exactly the same on the 17th and I think a little bit here Mark because this grandstand that I'm standing in at the moment I would still say it's a handful of spectators so there's, there's room for hundreds of spectators here there's probably 30 or 40 watching so I think a golfer might get a little bit more pumped up if there was an enormous roar beside the green it, it was a, such a beautiful Beautifully judged putt, one of those classic ones that just drops in with its very last roll. Looked good right from the moment it left the blade. Perfect pace across the green uh, and dropping into the hole. It's such a picture here, up by the 17th as well. So Bryson DeChambeau now has made his way back uh, to the uh, the very narrow corridor of the 18th tee. The 18th hole, par four, all the way up the hill. You can't really see any fairway from back there. You're just hemmed in by these giant, thin, tall trees that are swaying in the breeze that he's picking up uh, again. Bryson DeChambeau is, is waiting to hit the drive. I've seen hats blown off heads, as Kat was describing earlier on. I can see lots of uh, the patrons sitting in these little collapsible green chairs that they march out early morning and park in their favourite positions on the golf course. They've got the refreshing beverages in those familiar dark green Augusta National Cups, and they're enjoying some fantastic golf this afternoon. So DeChambeau is in the middle of the 18th tee, three-shot lead at the moment, seven under par, but exactly as you say, Mark, just very very, very calmly going about his business and actually people sort of milling around that 18th tee at the moment I think blissfully unaware some of them of, of what's going on the spectators probably only one or two rows deep uh, as they look back down uh, towards that 18th tee slight delay back there at the moment so I'm guessing the fairway further ahead might still have golfers in it but now I can see Deshambo who is just bending down and putting his tee peg in the ground this is 25th round uh, at the moment Masters, and only three of them previously have been in the 60s. Well, he's certainly going to do that today because if he pars this 18th hole, he's going to start with a 65. And you mentioned in 66 that got him in the lead at the end of the first round in 2019. So DeChambeau has just disappeared from view for a second, hiding behind one of the tall pines. You sound like you want to come in and well, I was say just, something, Mark. Well, you could just hear the cheers in the background, and that's because Cat Sergio Garcia is maybe... 18 inches from an ace. He's done Bryson DeChambeau, hasn't he? He's about the same distance that DeChambeau was. Absolutely at it like a dart. And there was no wind when Sergio Garcia hit it. Now here's poor old Ryan Fox. He's going back to the bag to pick a different club. Oh no, he's hit it and it's gone onto the right-hand shoulder of the green, so miles away from the pin because he tried to play it into the wind and the wind must have dropped and he's left himself out there. But Sergio Garcia, that was a golf shot of somebody who was playing his 25th Masters Championship, 25 years after his debut as well. That is the golf shot mm. of a player who knows this course like the back of his hat. John Rahm's just dropped one, Ian, on the par four tenth. Yes, it was a, a, a very delicate uh, putt that he had to negotiate. And it never, he never gave it enough in terms of break or pace, and it came up short. He's very frustrated. He flicked away some something off the the green as he went up there to tap it in, and uh, eventually he did tap it in, and that was a bogey five. So the defending champion back to one under par. Remember, Scotty Scheffler's at two under par. Matt Fitzpatrick dropped a shop at the ninth had a good chance on 10 couldn't take it he's at one under as is Shane Lowry Rory McIlroy at level par and Tiger Woods has hit his second shot into the first and he has a really good opportunity really good look at birdie on the very first hole and from what you've seen on on your monitor Ian the biggest galleries are following Tiger oh by a distance by an absolute distance so many people made sure that they hung around and waited to see the 15 times major champion tee off and they will be following him I would imagine every step of the way this afternoon 
Uh, he's playing with Jason Day and Max Homer, so we've just got three more groups to come out onto the course. Brian Harmon, the Open champion, who'll be alongside Brooks Kepka uh, and Tom Kim. Then the penultimate trio of Jordan Spieth and Ludwig Erber and Sahith Tagala. And then you've got the final group who go out at half past four local times that's half past nine in the uk dustin johnson colin morikawa and tommy fleetwood has bryson driven off on 18 ali he has mark because he's going to march just beneath our commentary position here at the back of the 17th green and again very business like you can hear actually from up here just uh, some words of encouragement from the patrons left and right and you can see him looking left and right just nodding and saying thank you very much and then he prods his tongue into the corner of his cheek and i think he might have found the bunker uh, off that 18th tee. if only i brought those blooming binoculars <laughs> honestly <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna have to go hang and buy some i'm gonna have to go and buy some augusta national uh, hang, issue binoculars on, which are going to set me back a fair bit Bit. They're not x-ray binoculars, though, are they? I mean, because <laughs> it went down the left-hand side. You, yeah. There's no way you could have seen where that ball finished okay. up, even with them. And it, you're right, though. He, he did finish up in the bunker down the left-hand side, the first of those two bunkers on that 18th. Mm. There's, uh, Kat, I think you can see Ryan Fox. Uh, I have seen Ryan Fox teeing off on the par 360. That was a, a while ago, so I think uh, you're back at the uh, the content centre, aren't you, Ian? So I think you're on a bit of a delay looking at that tee shot. He, unfortunately, was bamboozled by the wind, so... Ryan Fox's tee shot, four under par, who was leading until a short time ago when Bryson DeChambeau put the burners on once again. He's on the right-hand side of the 16th green, the uh, the New Zealander. He's got a very long, sinuous putt coming up for birdie, but it's, uh, yeah, certainly Sergio Garcia, who's taken a bit of a break here on the 16th. He's given a ball to a kid. He's obviously loving his time here, and he's just marching up to his ball, which is about a foot or so from the pin for a birdie for Garcia on the 16th. And we're also going to see as well we've got Ryan Fox up ahead on 16 and Ben Ann will come into view on 15 as well and he's another player who is on four under at the moment and just joining them on four under Victor Hovland who has birdied seven birdied eight and has now birdied nine and you know we're very early on aren't we Ian but we talked about wanting a leaderboard that had the big names on it had a mix of the names on it and you look at it and Dushambo is on there and Ram is just clinging on there but Hovland's on there Wyndham Clark is on there Scotty Scheffler's on there Danny Willett is on there it's it's the, the, the omens bit, are good. Yeah, the li little bit of everything in yes. there, isn't there? And that's really, really encouraging. Um, you know, if this if this continues, then we have the, the, the prospect of a vintage Masters. I'm really impressed with Victor Hovland, who's been struggling of of late. Uh, it hasn't said he hasn't really been concentrating on his short game, which was so good last year. He's not needed to rely on it uh, so far. His puttings look really assured. And as you say, that's now three birdies in a row. Really rammed home his putt on nine from just off the right edge of the green to get to four under par and into a share of second place. Deshambo in the bunker on 18 but in a commanding position at seven under par and I have to say Scotty Sheffer looks absolutely superb at the moment. He's hit a wonderful second shot into the tenth and he'll have a good birdie opportunity to get to three under. Well without having seen a single shot that he has played but looking at how he is building his round just just on the scoreboard, Andrew McGee, it is very Scotty Scheffler-esque. Um, totally. Um, you got that correct. He is This shot on, on number 10 is the best shot we've seen. Pin way back to the right, hanging, hooking live for all these players. To, to hold that shot with a little fade into that right pin is very nervy, and he's just pulled it off in Scheffler fashion. The, the numbers are not going up and down and here, there, and everywhere. It's, you know... Birdie, few pars, yep. birdie, few pars. Thank you very much. I'll just build this up gradually. Yeah, he's not come close to, to dropping a shot uh, so far. We can see the Open champion, Brian Harmon, is next to uh, get his round underway. Those clouds still scudding across overhead, little patches of blue sky, shafts of sunlight, and the left-hander diminutive figure fires off his tee shot down the left-hand side of the first hole. Among these very late starters who won't be able to get their, their rounds completed. We've got about enough daylight until 8 o'clock in the evening. And here's Brooks Kepka, who's many people's favourite, and a little nod from him. 
his PGA title next month. And here he is, just getting himself ready to play his tee shot. And now he's uh, ready to go. Shadow just a little paler at the moment as the cl clouds skid across the sun. And here he goes with his tee shot and sends it forward. Looks a little concerned as he watches this one as it lands down the right-hand side, and the concern was well-merited. It was flirting with the bunker, and it's gone into that bunker. Now, up ahead on the first, Tiger Woods from 10 feet. This for birdie for the five times champion. What a story if he can get off to a flyer. Sends this putt forward, turning from right to left, <laughs> right into the middle of the cup. Wouldn't you just know it? Tiger Woods, the man for the moment, so many, so many times in his glorious career. Well, there's another little moment as he birdies the very first hole and goes straight into the red figures. Now, Bryson DeChambeau from the bunker, 172 yards out here, Andrew. Yeah, this is the Sandy Lyle bunker. We get this ball up quickly, up quick, over this lip, clean hit. Ball's up, I think he likes it. He's staring it down. I think he likes it a lot. On its way. Oh, it's right, and it carries the bunker, rolls onto the green. Pretty good shot there. Yeah, he uh, managed to just carry the bunker to the right of the green, catches the slope, trundles down onto the putting surface, and he's going to have a putt of around about 30 feet um, into uh, potentially a birdie that would give him a round of 64. Out in front at the moment at seven under par and safely on the putting surface on the closing green mark. OK, thank you. We're watching Ben Ann here in front of us, aren't we? Cat, who is four under, one of several on four under. Uh, right, I, I have absolutely no idea what Ryan Fox has done up on 16. I mean, he was a good 50, 60 feet away, but he has three putted that. Yep, I can see up ahead they're just finishing up on 16 there's still uh, uh, action going on on that green Sergio Garcia in his bright clothes is, is long gone and I think Ryan Fox has trudged off as well onto the 17th tee just see them uh, heading up towards the hill there but yeah I can see on the big white scoreboard over to the left hand side those numbers for Ryan Fox five under par as he made the turn dropping a shot on the 13th and then another drop shot for him on the 16th he, he was a long way away on that on that 16th green and it has a really difficult roller coaster of a part down towards the hole yeah his uh, his first part uh, went 12 13 feet past and then he missed the one coming back for par so he has bogeyed 16 and he drops to three under Benan on four under in front of us let's find out about Wyndham Clark who a bit like Scotty Scheffler looks to be going along serenely Ian yeah very very serenely and when you consider that this is his debut uh, at the Masters. It's uh, extraordinary and he has picked up a birdie at the ninth. Lovely approach in there and has knocked in the birdie putt. So he's gone to the turn in 33 in his first nine holes in the Masters. Of course, the reigning US Open champion and someone who has really established himself as one of those figures who can play his best on the toughest tracks. So he's very well qualified for his first tilt at a green jacket. What, what are the challenges, Andrew McGee, for, for, for those who are going out now you know who are starting their rounds at around four o'clock this afternoon when they would have been expecting really to be getting underway around two half past two are, are the challenges today in in getting ready for such a late tea time or will they come tomorrow when you're obviously going to have to play more holes just before you answer andrew Scotty Scheffler missing that glorious opportunity on 10, settling for a par, remaining at two under. Well, I think these players, they've, they've done this many, many times. They, they know they've had rain delays and, and, and delays in all kinds of reasons, but um, they're going to have to finish tomorrow morning. They're going to take their time. They're going to try to get as many holes in as possible, of course, and, and uh, it's just part of the game. It's just what happens quite often out here on the tour. And accept the luck of the draw. You just got to accept the luck of the draw. Teeing off late. Um, you always want kind of the, the late early draw if you're a player because if, if you're if you're playing well and you finish in the evening you get to just sleep and get right back up and get right back at it instead of finishing up midday um, but uh, here we go on our screen in front of us uh, tiger woods left off the second tee in the trees okay ian's also got bryson and i think john rahm is is battling to save his power on 11 so ian and then john 
Okay, here is uh, Bryson DeChambeau just coming up onto the 18th, taking the cap from his head, taking the applause, and getting himself ready for that birdie putt that would give him a 64. John, news of John Rahm? Yes, John Rahm has hauled out from four feet at the 11th, Ian, to remain at one under par, the defending champion, and, uh, and keep an eye out for Matt Fitzpatrick on your leaderboard as well, because he's just birdied the 11th, one of Rahm's playing partners. So Matt Fitzpatrick, two under as they walk up onto the 12th screen. He's playing very nicely indeed, isn't he, Matt Fitzpatrick? Uh, battled to make his par on the first, picked up a birdie at the second, then went to two under par with a birdie at the eighth, dropped a shot at the ninth, uh, then par 10, and now has picked up that birdie on 11. And birdies on 11, they are gold dust, aren't they, Andrew McGee? Oh, the hardest hole at the Masters for decades. Plays well over par, long par four, down the hill towards Ray's Creek. Justin Rose with a bogey to go two over in front of us. That's not what he's uh, looking for by any stretch of the imagination. So many leaves have come down. It almost looks kind of autumnal uh, around certain parts of the, of the course because they're being scattered by this gusty wind that is uh, just blowing so much debris about the normally pristine Augusta National. Uh, we've got pictures here of Wyndham Clark on the 10th as we wait for Bryson DeChambeau, who's going to be putting into a really severe and gusty wind as and when he gets to his uh, putt. But Wyndham Clark, we can see on the 10th, playing his second shot into this par four and sending it forward and staring down as this one comes in and lands on the putting surface, pin high, but a good 30, 35 feet left of the flag, but not flirting with any of the trouble there. Yeah, terrific shot. 10 is just an, an, another hole, really, really hard hole. Guys left of the hole here, that's the only play you have. Wyndham Clark, very steady, has that abbreviated follow through we're kind of getting used to seeing, drives the ball low with lots of spin, with lots of power. Brooks Kepka is playing his second shot at the first from the bunker that he drove into, and he's lost that one out to the right, just down in a little gentle uh, depression to the right of the green. The place to miss, though, with plenty of green to work with with his third shot, the live player. And now we can see Tiger Woods' ball, which has come up to rest right next to a tree down the left side of the second. And if he is to advance that forward, he's going to have to play it left-handed. Yeah, with a, almost had a pine cone on the other side of the trunk of that tree. Not a good tee shot from Tiger Woods. Yeah, left-handed. Let's stay tuned and watch this again. This set up be interesting. <laughs> Tiger chomping on his gum, walking gingerly. Still has a, a bit of a limp as he's going, but he does look, he does look very good, though. He's, he looks he, like Tiger Woods. There is a hint of a limp yes. there, but it is way, way better than it was last year when, of course, he, he pulled out in all that awful weather on the Saturday, having made the cut earlier in the day. And he takes the cap from his head and he comes Hasn't down seen it. and looks rather... Yeah peeved about that. I don't know if on the 12th we can get news of Matt Fitzpatrick with John. You can, Ian, because I'm watching his tee shot, which is terrific. It is, that's the best tee shot that we've seen so far today at the 12th, right at the flag, and that is within inches. Trish. Yeah, I think it's maybe just a tad more than it looks, but it's a, I think it's a couple of feet just short, but a, if, if it just rolled on, I tell you what, every chance of seeing our first hole in one there today. <laughs> in fact, the, the, there's not been a hole in one at the 12th, Ian, in the Masters since 1989, I think it was. Curtis Strange, wasn't it? I think it was. 1988. 88, was it? Yes, I think there have only been three in total. I think you're right, It was Ian. very, very close. Now, yes. here is Bryson DeChambeau looking for a 64, putting into the wind across the back of the 18th green, sending this on its way, heading down towards the hole. The flag remains in the hole, and the ball nestles up next to it, beautifully judged for pace, and that was not easy to negotiate no. in these conditions. No, we could... You can see the leaves are starting to gather. This wind is just playing havoc with the players, crouching down, getting closer to the ground as the wind picks up. Beautifully judged from 40 feet right at that hole. Bryson DeChambeau, just, a, just one foot 
left for a 65. Who would yeah. have thunk that? What today? a start. What wow. a start. He started the USPGA wow. very well last year. He was one of those who showed that the live players, John, can really do a job still in the majors. Well, he's done an outstanding job today. Now, it's John Rahm with you, isn't it, John? Yes, it is. He's taking his time just as Andrew McGee was talking. Absolutely right. The wind absolutely swirling around here. But his ball is on its way now, and he's landed it on the left portion of this figure of eight shape green at the par 3 12th right over to the left so a long long way probably 25 feet and more Trish for his birdie put but he's safely on the green the defending champion yeah pulled it straight away straight off the club face you could tell that um, there was a little bit of breeze up there but it's straight into us if anything it's not right to left so yeah not the greatest shot but he's got a what a 35 foot outside birdie chance but Matt Fitzpatrick the Yorkshireman has a chance to go birdie birdie at 11 and 12 and you're right it's probably what two feet if that yeah and do you know what we don't talk about Matt Fitzpatrick hardly ever well, you know he is a major champion and we sort of we don't really put him in that bracket and I do think he's a major champion that he's going to win more majors he has the up most belief in himself and yeah, the way he's putting I think he's going to be a, a, a contender this week well, he should be going to three under very shortly do, do you know what Trish uh, myself and Ali watched Matt Fitzpatrick practice yesterday actually round Amen Corner and he was on his own on 11 and on his own on 12 and nobody, nobody was really paying any attention whatsoever. So you talk about how he goes around sort of unnoticed and people forget he's a major champion. There was nothing around him, really. And in fact, there was probably more interest once Tony Finau, up ahead on 12, asked him to sort of join him to come down 13. And then a few people started watching. But it was all very understated. Yeah, I think he's just one of those blokes, to be honest, Chappers, that you, you sort of, I don't know, he, he doesn't have that aura about him. Um, and, and you you know even the way he sort of sets up to a golf ball it's very unusual for a professional golfer he puts his left hand on first no one ever does that they put your right hand on first and then you sort of set up and get in he puts his left hand on a very sort of <laughs> I can't describe I mean Andrew will understand when I say kind of amateurish in a way that the, he sets up but he's such a hard worker he takes every stat he has done since he was a, you know, a young kid 14, 15 years of age he never ever misses a stat of any practice round anything he does he works his socks yeah. off and I tell you what he is some ball striker and he's made himself into a top ball striker and he's always been a top class passer and there is <laughs> that's a pretty damn good combination yeah but that was true wasn't it, Ali no but nobody was paying any attention to him whatsoever <laughs> but apart from us um, it's Tony Finau, wasn't it? Were you just saying? Yeah, you yeah. gave him a wave up, waved him up you on the 12th. And then you weren't then... paying attention to me, were you, then, really? <laughs> I was. I was. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, the, the only thing that, uh, that distracted my attention, yeah. Sergio Garcia has just arrived on the 17th. Now, green. do you like them? No. OK. I mean, it's bold and yeah. it's, it's dazzling and it's bright and it's strident and you can't miss him from a mile off. And without binoculars, he's helping me. But mm. not for me, Clive. Okay. Thank you. Well, let's not forget, if you were wearing them, you probably wouldn't have anything on underneath, <laughs> Ian. <laughs> oh, what an image. Um, Tiger Woods uh, up against the tree. Guys have to play left-handed. The other thing to just note right now is that Ludwig Aubert has made his major debut. He has hit his first shot as a major golfer, already a Ryder Cup golfer, already a winner on both sides of the Atlantic, an extraordinary talent. He has hit his first tee shot at the Masters and he has found a bunker down the right-hand side of the first. Now here's Tiger Woods and he's having to play this left-handed, turning the club upside down and then just a swing back to about a third and then going through a third in terms of follow through and showing all his experience just hooking it out into the fairway taking his medicine no other choice yeah i think he can still probably hit the green from there maybe about a 230 40 shot left on that par five number two not in huge danger that looked like a lot of danger but he could just escape with a par just a quick question to you, Andrew. We've talked about Wyndham Clark, who's making his Masters debut. We're talking about Ludwig Olbert making his Masters debut. Do you think that these conditions make it easier to make your debut here because of how things happen? Or 
is it harder because of the, the conditions that they're playing? I'll get your answer after I tell you that Victor Hovland has gone way, 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 right. Way, way right. Wow. Completely the wrong side wow. on the 10th after hitting a wonderful tee shot. Now we can actually see Tiger Woods with his third shot from 190 yards yep. on the second. This one is on its way and goes way over the back of the green and into the crowd. That's the wind. That's just the wind playing havoc. Look at Tiger looking up into the sky going, oh my gosh, what have I done? I escaped and now I'm back in trouble. Here we go. Brooks kept on the very, very first hole. He shipped up. Oh, he's bogeyed his opening hole, this 88th Masters. Kapka, one over par after one. And of course, we're just uh, awaiting the conclusion of Bryson DeChambeau's round, which I'm pretty certain will constitute the first round lead. He putted up a while ago just to the whole side. He's got a, a tap in, which will be for a 65. And we just await news from that 18th green. But the cheers come up for the champion in 2003, the lefty from Canada, Mike Weir, who has just hold his fourth shot from well short of the green on the eighth for an unlikely birdie. John, I think you can see John Rahm on 12. Yeah, the defending champion with a long, long putt from the back left of the 12th green, which is on its way down towards the hole. And uh, he walks after it, so he will have that to tidy up and remain at one under par while Matt Fitzpatrick stands leaning on his putter, waiting for the, uh, the two-footer or so that would take him to, to three under. Now from short range, Bryson DeChambeau taps into the middle of the hole. He takes the cap from his head and a huge smile plays across his face. And he has every reason for satisfaction. A superb opening 65 for the American. Coming home in 31, just one drop shot. And at seven under par, he currently leads the Masters by three shots. And that is his best round at Augusta. Uh, his best before that was going back to 2019 when he made a uh, six under 66. And in fact, he led at the end of that opening round back in 2019. By the time the whole tournament had finished, he'd, uh, or the whole championship had finished, he'd, it was on uh, 29th. Uh, and the last two times here, he has missed the cut Ali a gutsy par made by the New Zealander Ryan Fox we were talking about him a lot earlier on in our coverage playing in only his second Masters with his eagle at the par 5 8th got himself to 5 under par I think was leading by a couple of shots then as drop shots at the 13th and 16th then committed the big no-no at the 17th went over the back of the green the up and down from back there is so so difficult the green is about 10 feet above your head he had about 15 yards of the flag he hit one of those really clever little skinny bump and runs into the slope it killed the speed it rolled about six foot by and he's rolled the putt into the hole for a par and Sergio Garcia he of the brightly banana yellow colored trousers made his par on 17 couldn't make the birdie putt so he remains at level par and someone here John Murray uh, one of the spectators here in the grandstand at the 17th is wearing earmuffs 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 baseball cap and earmuffs is it chilly it's not no it's lovely here at Amen Corner and even though the sun's just disappeared for the time being, we've got spring-like skies above, someone beautifully hammering away on the grandstand below us to, uh, to shatter the rural idyll. And away in the distance on the 12th green, Matt Fitzpatrick duly holes out for his birdie. So he's birdied the first two holes of Amen Corner and the Yorkshireman is three under par and well within sight of DeChambeau's lead, Trish Johnson. And John Murray, you were a 100% right, that was an absolute tap-in. It was not two foot at all. Your eyesight is spectacular. We are wow. also watching in front of us, Mark, uh, Scotty Scheffler and Rory McElroy, who are also into Amen Corner. Both Scheffler and McElroy were short of the green in two. Scheffler has played up to within a couple of feet 
and Xander Shoffley, who was on the green, the groans you heard there, his put for birdie from 25 feet just rolled by, but then kept on rolling, as of course most of them do at the at the 11. Well, we, we can we can stay with you because, uh, as far as I'm aware, there's there's nothing going on for me and Cat at the moment. Don't think there's anything going on for Ali. So it's it's all yours, and obviously you know your eyesight helped by binoculars. <laughs> it is yes, mm. binoculars well which prepared, are, which are right on my eyes at the moment as I look down at Rory McIlroy in his lilac trousers putting from short of the green but he did not like that and he started walking off after it immediately and he's left that five feet short. Yeah, it's a horrible putt from Rory. Uh, I think it was just one of those, it's right in between whether he's going to chip it or putt it. Decided to use the putter and he's such a great chipper of the ball, I'm surprised at that. Uh, the moment he hit it, it just popped popped up straight up in the air and he knew that it was nowhere near and he's left himself at least I tell you what he's got all of four four and a half feet yeah. here for his part but Scheffler just played an absolutely exquisite little chip shot right to left as quick as you like just pitched it on the front edge just let it roll down take the break a little bit to a couple of feet a beautiful little chip shot yeah and it will be Rory McIlroy okay. to play first so as I say, it's just clouded over for the time being, but that breeze, I think capricious is the word, isn't it, that we often use for a breeze like this that is swirling around us. McElroy steps up, wastes no time and does just hole out. Well, he, he made quick work of that because that was by no means straightforward. No put is at the 11. No, it was good for, I mean, this hole today is spectacular. Uh, it's a six yard, It's eight yards on the flag here, six yards from the left. It's 520 yards into the breeze. We can, you can count on one hand the amount of players we've actually seen hit the green here today. This is Scheffler's part. And when you do hit the green, you've just left yourself such a quick putt. And he's got a little four-footer here, just straight up the hill. Yep, Xander Schoffle then does duly get his par four to remain... A two over, he was quite fancied, he's got a good record here. He looks, Trish, a little bit like he should be playing for West Germany, doesn't he? <laughs> Today, Sander Schoffle with the white shirt, black trousers, and he's got a pair of golf shoes on that look like they'd be more at home on a Bayern Munich player. Black with the three stripes on either side. And Scotty Scheffler, the, uh, the winner here two years ago, the world number one, the strong favourite, Dooley gets his par four as well after, as Trish described, a very good chip shot from off the front of the green. Yeah, I must admit, if you give me, uh, I'd give me that outfit over Sergio Garcia's any day of the week. Uh, <laughs> oh, uh, uh, sorry, but it's Honestly. true. Yeah, Trish, Trish calls for everyone to wear black and white yeah. at the Masters. I'm just trying to bring a bit of colour into all your lives. Goodness me. Chappers, there's colour, and then there's obviously your dress sense. <laughs> there's a man just to our, my right walks past in a sort of uh, black and yellow tartan patterned cap, which made me think, actually, of who we saw earlier, John Murray. Yes, we saw Jackie Stewart. Yeah. We saw Jackie Stewart near the scoreboard Sir on the Jackie. first. Sir, Sir Jackie. Jackie. So within a few hours this morning, I saw with my own eyes... Jack Nicholas, Tom Watson, Gary Player, and Jackie Stewart. Uh, that's so not a bad collection, there. That's not a bad collection. And he, ha he had a, uh, a tartan flat cap on as he well. He did, and tartan he? trousers. And tartan trousers as well. The, uh, if you want the man in the lilac trousers, the Northern Irishman, Rory McIlroy, is right now on the 12th, the first time playing the 12th at the 2024 Masters. The man who's trying to complete the Grand Slam and his tee shot is right on line and lands between the front of the green and the hole and he has given himself a birdie chance from in your with your binoculars trish i'm going to say that's six feet Ooh, I'm, I'm, I'm far bit from me to disagree with you anymore john because you were perfect but i think um anyway either way six eight feet it's straight up the hill it's as easy a putt on this green as you're going to get beautifully controlled because just as he stood over it the wind really whipped up there Scotty Scheffler now next to play. Scotty Scheffler, the, the bearded again, world number one. Somebody's having real problems with something in this grandstand. <laughs> I was, they are absolutely giving it what I for. Mean, they are, aren't they? <laughs> yes, it's, it's absolutely... The scene we've got here, it could hardly be better. Beautiful, warm conditions, and someone is hammering away at the grandstand. You would have think they could have done that yesterday. I mean, is that... 
I mean, that isn't. Is that behind you? Therefore, not it's disturbing under, the it's, golfers. It's, it's, under. Like it's underneath it. Yeah. Uh, where's Scotty Scheffler's tee shot gone? Yeah, he's gone big. I think he liked it. Yeah, he's gone in the back bunker. He liked it. He followed it all the way, but he just didn't judge the wind correctly, and he's uh, he's got a tricky bunker shot coming back down that hill. Yeah, so Scotty Scheffler's got work to do to make his par and to remain at two under, as somebody else has very much got work to do. And he's not going to let the masters get in the way of it either. Are you able, are you able to judge whether, whether the workman is finding whatever he's hammering trickier than Scotty Scheffler's putt? <laughs> now, Sander Shoffle, I don't know, I'm amazed that they're not, I am. can't hear this. I am. They're just down in front of us. And an excellent tee shot from Sander Shoffle, who's, who's headed to that position where we, we've seen a number of players 10, 12 feet to the left of the hole. Very good shot. It's like something out of wacky race, isn't it? It's unbelievable. <laughs> Um, no one else but us seems to know so some bloke is hammering this grandstand to <laughs> within an inch of its life. Can, you, me, can you imagine if Colin Montgomery at his peak <laughs> was about to play here? He'd be, he'd be twitching like mad. Yeah, I'm not sure that hammer would still be in that bloke's I'm hand. I'm see if I can look over the back and well, see you, Go on. You, you, look, you're, you're, a versi- you're a versatile broadcaster. Switch, switch your attention to sort of... I think it's a, right d- underneath it. SOS, DIY SOS and see what's what's going on below you. News of Victor Hovland, he has uh, dropped, <laughs> he's dropped two shots uh, on the par four 10. So we heard from Ian Carter. Are you still with us, Ian? Yes, I yes, am. Okay. Yeah, very much so. I'm just checking, you haven't gone to fix the stand on 12. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, me. So <laughs> I've got my little toolkit. No, um, he's double bogeyed the par 4 10. Yeah, he got into such horrendous trouble with uh, the miss down the right hand side, well, up the right hand side, and ultimately has racked up a double bogey 6 after looking so, so good earlier in his round. So from 4 under par back to 2 under par heading to Amen Corner for Victor Hovland. And also just on our leaderboard here they've taken John Rahm off at the top who was on one under and they've put the Australian Cameron Davis on there who is three hang on they're just changing his score which is not massively helpful when you're about to read it but he was three under through seven so I'm assuming they're just about to put up his he's actually three under through nine yes he now. is yeah yeah so he's gone to the turn in 33 Cam Davis so uh, looking looking very good there John Rahm to confirm remains at uh, one under par as it stands at the moment uh, and Ben Arn uh, bogeyed 16 just like Ryan Fox did so he's dropped to three under Fox is three under as well as he goes down eight Team. Mark, I've y- got Scotty Scheffler playing from out of the, the 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 left of the two back bunkers as we look at it, and out it comes, rolling down and in. What a shot! What a shot! And a clench of the fist from Scotty Scheffler. A huge plume of that white Augusta sand came up. The ball landed on the green and rolled down towards the hole and dropped in for birdie to take the. The world number one to three under par. Well, an amazing, amazing comeback. Made a huge mistake off that tee, hitting it into that back bunker. Very little green to work with, but played an exquisite little shot, really. Just all you saw was sand first, and it was travelling a little bit, I think, but it was bang in the middle of the hole, and an absolutely superb recovery from Scotty Scheffler. So Scotty, Scheffler, Ian, three under, birdie chances to come for Shoffley and McElroy at the 12th here. Meanwhile, up ahead at the 13th, Will Zalatoris rolls in from seven feet, something like that, for an eagle three. So the American back on the comeback trail, a bit like Danny Willett after so much uh, injury trouble, is right in the thick of things here. That eagle propels him to three under par and a share of third place with, among others, Scotty Scheffler, as you've been describing, and Matt Fitzpatrick also at three under par. And to settle any arguments, I've just gone to the tracking device on the brilliant Masters app, which is available to everybody. And Rory McIlroy is 10 feet away with his tee shot 
uh, looking for a birdie at 12. Yeah, should have recommended that. I say that, that it, 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 is, it is one of the best, if not the best sporting app that you could download and it is free and it's available to you and it's got every stat and fact that you could wish and it has the shots on there that the players uh, are playing. I'm assuming it's not geo-blocked the shots in the UK so you can just access anything to do with the 80th, 88th Masters via the app. It is a really, really impressive piece of work just go back to Zalatoris Ian and the struggles that he has had because you go back three or four years and, and he would have been on a, on a path to winning a major yeah absolutely um, you know he came so close on so many different occasions most notably perhaps at Brookline in the US Open that was won by uh, by Matt Fitzpatrick he had the opportunity to go to live as well he turned that down got a terrible injury and now he's coming back John Ian McElroy has holed that 10 footer as you told us and, and again very quick wasting no time over his puts a 10 footer there and admittedly as Trish you said you know that's the that's where you want to be but even so very quick got up looked at it rolled it in and uh, and Rory McIlroy that takes him to one under for the tournament yeah, just a magnificent. I have to say, I just lo love McElroy's outfit. Chappers, you might uh, notice a bit of bit of class there. White shirt, mm -hmm. sort of lilac trousers, and his shoes have just got, I think, have just got a hint of lilac in the in the golf shoes okay. as well. Now that is a class outfit. All right. Well, there's a bit of colour in there. So yeah, okay. That's. I mean, what what's the what's the biggest difference between lilac trousers and yellow trousers? Well, it's, it's what he's got on top. Ah, OK. You can't be mixing the two. And as Ali well knows, you know, a, a bit of, what, green and uh, and yellow. Mm, mm. It's not the right colours, is it? It's what, blue and white. Yeah, but no, Chris Sutton would, would disagree with you uh, uh, on that. And, and, uh, and the news from the uh, the man down at the uh, bottom of the grandstand, he's got the pneumatic drill out, <laughs> and, and that's done the trick. And I think he's got his fence up. <laughs> it's, it's now erected. I'm, so I'm... I mean, I'm not 100% sure on this, having not being a DIY expert, but I'm fairly sure you don't use a pneumatic drill to put something up. Don't use a pneumatic drill to break through tarmac. Well, it was the one that was... Not doing that. No, no, hang on, he's... Hang Doesn't on, sound he's like not, he's got his no, fence up to boot. The pneumatic, whatever it was, whether it was a pneumatic drill, it's not quite, did it? It's the one that goes... Yeah, but What's that? That, 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 yeah, as Kat says, that sounds like a pneumatic drill. But I Hence thought, the reason I said a pneumatic yes, but drill. I thought a pneumatic drill is to break through things rather than to attach things. Well, I think he's probably trying to do exactly that, to be fair. Right, OK. <laughs> well, all is quiet now here at Amen Corner. It's not. And for <laughs> once, well, apart from that, apart from, from, from him, apart from him. <laughs> Other than that, if, if, in terms of what we can see, yeah. there's actually, we cannot see a golfer currently on the 11th and 12th, but very shortly, uh, the, the group that uh, involves the, the US Open champion, Wyndham Clark, who's three under, Victor Hovland, who's two under, and, uh, and also in that group, Cam Smith, the, uh, the former okay. Open champion, who is two under, so all playing very good Let's golf, but uh, they're not here yet. OK, well, why doesn't Trish stay where she is? And why don't you pop down and, and ask our friend what he is trying to do? <laughs> I might just do that. Go on, just go down and say, any ideas when this will... I can, I can sing him if I look over the back. Well, don't, don't shout, because that's incredibly uncouth. Yeah, I, so, I tell you what, though, John, just before you do that, just keep your eyes peeled here, because Hovland's hitting his second shot into 11. All right, maybe not, maybe not the best time <laughs> to go yeah, down. Maybe not. Maybe no. do that a bit later. Ian, should we do a leaderboard? Absolutely. Um, I'm going to just pause now, because I think that Hovland's ball is heading down towards you, John. And We're it's watching. looking We're good. Watching. We're watching. Yeah. Uh, it's on the front right of the green. It's just landed on the front right of the green, so the distance is excellent. And he will have a put right. Uh, he'll have a put. <laughs> he'll have a put right across the front of the green. Now for I am. Birdie. I am not being. But how is he getting away with that? When when? So what do you call that? What is that he's using? There? Well, that just sounds like a drill. I think pneumatic drill. No, just a drill. I think. But I mean, when when you're not allowed to even run at this place, how on earth is he managing to drill with what? the golf going on? Do you know the most amazing thing is we are. It, 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 <laughs> <laughs> I'm in this grandstand and we appear to be the only people looking at this. Nobody else is reacting at all. 
nobody else is. There's not a flicker from anyone else in the stand. I mean, I, I don't know how they're not hearing that. I, I really don't. Back to, should we do the leaderboard here with the accompaniment of DIY this, in the this, background? I don't know whether I'm allowed to say it, but I'm going to say it anyway. This leaderboard brought to you in association with Black and Death. <laughs> Bryson DeChambeau, the leader, seven under par, round of 65 today. Magnificent play from the live player, and he leads the Masters by three shots. Danny Willett, 68, his first competitive round since September, coming back from shoulder surgery. What a performance from the Englishman, the 2016 champion, four under par. Ryan Fox, three under par, 69. He's in the clubhouse now, so it's been an excellent day for the Kiwi, the son of the great all-black Grant Fox and he is at uh, three under par. Plenty of players on three under out on the course. Ben Ann as he plays the 17th. Will Zalatoris playing the 14th. Matt Fitzpatrick playing the par five 13th. The hot favorite Scotty Scheffler is playing the 13th as well at three under par. As is the US Open champion Wyndham Clark three under. He's playing the 11th as we speak. The Aussie Cam Davis also at three under par having gone to the turn in 33. Victor Hovland's back at two under par. St. Marcus former Open champion Cam Smith. So many of the big names have turned up so far today and Rory McIlroy getting in on the act with his birdie at the 12th. He plays the par 5 13th at one under par. Tiger Woods is one under through two holes. He's playing the third and so he's in the red figures as well. Uh, OK, thank you. A little bit of a lull here on 15, 16. Currently got Patrick Cantley, uh, Minwoo Lee, Ricky Fowler coming down. They're all in green numbers, so they're all over par. But uh, Catherine Downs alongside me, when you, when you look at the ones that are coming next, though, you've got some of the big hitters who are just starting to threaten that leaderboard coming down here. Yeah, I'm excited to see this as well. Hideki Matsuyama, former winner, Will Zalatoris, who uh, Ian mentioned going well on the leaderboard. Justin Thomas in there as well. These are the box office names in this next kind of wave that will come over the hill on the 15th here just as the wind drops and the sun is so intense on the back of our necks now here at the back of the grandstand by the 15th green it is really quieting down there should be some good scores this afternoon I'm guessing. Uh, Trish just talking about um, Ryan Fox actually um, and we talked last night on the preview about coming here for your first Masters and then getting used to it after that and, and Ryan Fox yesterday said uh, ahead of this he said last year I just felt the week went so quickly it's like a whirlwind and all of a sudden it is over this year I feel like I can for want of a better term just take some time to smell the roses to go out and enjoy it and have a bit of fun and enjoy being able to use this facility and have lunch with the family and various things i felt rushed last year so yeah this year has been good to be able to enjoy some things that augusta offers us as players was that a question for trish yes well in actual fact she's just nipped down to um to to get something from uh, from from <laughs> down the back of the uh, stand so um, what I can tell is you is it a hammer uh, what, I, what I can tell you is she's just shouted up to me and she said the reason that they're work, doing this work is that the gate on the back of the stand fell off so they're, they're putting it back on okay. so um, so when she comes back she'll answer that question about Ryan Fox but uh, in the meantime I've got Wyndham Clark the US Open champion who is three under par so right in it on what is his Masters debut the world number four he's pitching from 50 yards short of the green and he's landed it right up towards the hole and it's bounded on by but then pulled up so he will have a, a put to stay at three under of probably some 10 feet both Hovland and Smith his playing partners Cam Smith they're both on the green and uh, and Victor Hovland will have a long birdie putt to come to go to three under. Uh, OK, uh, waiting for Andrew McGee to come and join us here on 15-16. Alistair Bruce Ball will have seen one of the men on the leaderboard just go through 17. That's Ben Ann. Yeah, he's, he's parred the 17th, Mark, and he's hit a putt from the left-hand side of the 17th green. So he's, he's three under par at the moment, which is four shots off Bryson DeChambeau's lead, round of that incredible 65 earlier on today. And as soon as the putt was hit from our side of the green, I was thinking... 
he has hit that way too hard and it really did look like he'd given it a thump but it's quite deceptive from up here the 17th green when you're putting from the left hand side across to the right you have actually got a little bit of a slope to climb before you sort of crest the brow of a hill and come back down towards the hole it was a fabulous putt that just grazed the right hand edge of the hole and then he's tapped in for his four so he's going along very nicely first masters since 2020 last win on the main tours of course almost uh, nine years ago 2015 it was the bmw pga championship uh, at wentworth but um 26 at the open last year and going well in the first round at the masters here by the way all the shenanigans down at amen corner hmm. when john was saying it's up again it's down again reminded me a little bit of that brilliant episode of faulty towers you remember with the moose's head <laughs> where basil's getting the moose's head up and sybil's in hospital barking the instructions down the phone <laughs> with with john playing the role yeah, of definitely, basil yeah. definitely definitely uh, back to you then, Basil, because there are plenty, plenty what, of action what, around. What Amen. is it now? <laughs> uh, we've got Victor Hovland. So this put across the front of the 11th green, the pond. It looks that with the water in there in these conditions, it looks black, but reflections of the big, tall pines. And Victor Hovland, who is also all in black, apart from that massive pink picture of an azalea on the front of his shirt. So Victor Hovland, this for birdie at the 11th. You don't get too many of them. This is from all of 30 feet. He's given it a lovely touch, the Norwegian, down towards the hole, still rolling, still rolling, creeping down, and he's judged it pretty well. He's left that to within probably 18 inches. He will mark it. He won't hole out just yet. Or will he? Yes, in fact, it's close enough. He just walks up to it, not even marking it, and he just rolls it in from close range uh, to remain at two under par. So uh, safely in to remain at two under. Cam Smith's birdie put is to come next, Mark. And uh, Wyndham Clark has to hole out to remain at three under. Uh, yes, remember the leader is Bryson DeChambeau in the clubhouse on seven under, and that gives him a three-shot lead over Danny Willett, who is also in the clubhouse, a four under uh, 68 for Danny Willis today. Out there on the course, Scotty Scheffler is on three under, Will Zalatoris is on three under, Ben Arn is on three under, Cam Davis is on three under, uh, and Wyndham Clark is also on three under. But interestingly, in the last half hour or so some of those players who had been on four under had at one stage even with Ram Fox got himself to five under they just fell away a bit and again Kat here around 15 16 we're looking at the flag on 15 and the flood it's starting to flutter more and more and there's just you can feel a slight freshness around and some of the huge trees the loblolly pines opposite us are really swaying in the breeze at the moment and you've got to be careful around those haven't you it was, it was three of those that fell down on the 17th uh, last year in the in this swirly storm that we experienced uh, over the weekend but i don't know mark it's been it's been tricky round here sh for sure but we've seen a lot of birdies since we've sat here so the 15th 16th with the wind behind on the 15th there are definite birdie chances here and then the 16th where the pin is just a few paces on to that front edge if you can catch that little down slope and spin the ball in from the right to the left that's where the ball sucks down towards the hole we saw Bryson DeChambeau putting one in close Sergio Garcia following with one in close as well the birdie chances round here We've actually seen quite a few, and we just, the crowd letting out an enormous gasp as Minwoo Lee just spun one past the hole as well from over the back of the green on uh, the 15th here. That would have gone in for Eagle. Minwoo Lee broke his finger, you know, in what must have been a, a particularly strenuous workout about a week ago, but he says that he's not feeling any pain at the moment, and uh, he's ticking along OK-ish. This group, Patrick Cantley, Minwoo Lee on one over par, and Ricky Fowler as well, who... Uh, runner-up at uh, the US Open to Wyndham Clark last year. He's at two over par at the moment. Matt Fitzpatrick, what a brilliant aim and corner he had. Birded 11, birded 12, and he's birded 13. He's four under, having played 13. So he's three off our leader, Bryson DeChambeau. John? With Wyndham Clark, the US Open champion. Now, this is a tester to remain at three under. And he rolls it towards the hole 
and he's up. He doesn't. He knows it's not going to go, and it's going to be a drop shot for the the U.S. Open champion, Wyndham Clark, playing his first Amen corner in his first Masters, and he drops a shot at the 11th, Trish Johnson. Yeah, very tentative. It wasn't an easy putt. It was about 10 foot down the hill, left to right, but he's left it at least two foot short. Very unusual type of putt. Obviously really scared of, of one that just got away from him, but this 11th hole, as we say, it's going to catch so many players out. Yes, uh, I know there were, there were many who fancied him to do well this week. And well, he's right in there, Wyndham Clark. Re and remarkably, Mark, you know, the world number four playing in the Masters for the first time, which makes him the highest ranked player to make his debut in the Masters. It, and, and that's his first, his first drop shot of the day, though. Is it? I'll, I'll take your word for that. It is. Yeah. The, the, the other thing, um, Trish, when, when you were going down to check what the guy putting the gate back on <laughs> was, was doing, was I was talking about Ryan Fox, who said that last year, in his first Masters, everything was just a whirlwind. He had no time to enjoy it. This time, second time round, he's felt able to enjoy what the course and, and Augusta National has to offer both him and his family and make use of the facilities. And I suppose when we're talking about the difference between playing it for the first time and then subsequent times is that first time it must feel like a whirlwind for them. Oh, my word. I think coming and playing here the first time, especially under you know these conditions today with the gusts of wind as well, you, you must just feel like, wow, I really, you know, you just don't know You've never played anything quite like it, put it that way. You can play any golf course on tour at any event, and it's nothing like Augusta. So when you come back, that little bit of comfort, that little bit of know-how, you know, just the, the calmness that you feel. And obviously, Ryan, he's not been in the greatest of form, to be honest, the last mm. few weeks. But, uh, he, you know, if you, he, it's very difficult not to like this place, Chappers. No matter how poorly you might play on your first appearance, you always look forward to coming back here, same as we do. And it's just a dream to be here and playing. And obviously, it's a bit of a shame, 13, that, you know, he, he messed that up today. But all in all, he, yeah, it's, it's just one of those places that when you get the feel for it, it's just an absolute dream come true to play it. A cheer rolls down the course from somewhere. It sounded to me like a tiger cheer, but maybe Ian will be able to tell us about that on a monitor very shortly. First of all, news of Scotty Scheffler in trouble. Yes, at the 13th, he's just played his second shot, going for the green in two, and the ball coming up short and ending up in Ray's Creek, the stream that runs in front of the putting surface. Rory McElroy has just played his third shot into the par 5 13th and he'll have a birdie chance of around about 15 feet just wanted the ball to suck down a little foot closer to the hole it didn't oblige but a birdie chance coming for McElroy nonetheless currently at one under par uh, John Murray Victor Hovland on 12 yes but I'm just watching Cam Smith's Tee shot at 12, which has rolled into the water. It landed on the top of the bank in front of the green. And I just wondered with the wet conditions that we had this morning, whether it might just cling on in a Fred Couple style, but no, it, it didn't hold and it rolled down into the water. So the uh, former Open champion in the drink in Race Creek. Yeah, it was a really poor shot. I mean, he, he's trying to pitch it at least what, another 10 yards further up the green than he than he actually did. And it just, you're right, John, just for a second, it looked like it might hold on. But as soon as it started moving, you knew it was swimming. Yeah, I think it was wishful thinking. So we will now see the, the ever-friendly-faced, the ruddy-cheeked Norwegian, Victor Hovland, who is also like Cam Smith at two under, and he sends his tee shot off towards that thin sliver of green in the distance and I've lost it with the binoculars and there's not any applause oh yeah it's on the right portion of the green it's landed on the right I think the right side of the green yeah back right back right of the green so you will have a long you will have a long birdie put from there and now it is Wyndham Clark full of confidence I was quite struck when we went to the Ryder Cup in Italy, listening to him, when we had the chance to sat down, sit down in the same room, and of course the US Open champion, but he talks an excellent game, one of the top golfers in the world, and, and he just backs away now, and it will start again. He's uh, got dark blue trousers on and a sort of powder pink colored shirt, blue cap. Wyndham Clark, slightly bearded, and his ball now 
off towards that looks like the left side of the 12th green it's big it's over the back left and it's landed down in that hollow just off the back left of the green so you have an awkward a very awkward pitch from there Clark three under the other two on two under so more to come from here at Eamon Corner after Ian well, news of Scotty Scheffler, he got very, very lucky indeed on that 13th. The ball hung on to the bank. He didn't go down into the water. No penalty shot, was able to play his chip from the bank. And he's played it very well indeed. And he's got three or four feet for birdie now for Scheffler. So what looked a bleak picture for the world number one and hot favourite is now a much happier picture for the big tall American. Now here's Matt Fitzpatrick playing his second shot into the 14th and just creeping over the back of the green. It'll be an interesting choice between chipping and putting from there with the flag cut at the back of the putting surface. Here's Rory McIlroy on 13. Delicate downhill putt looking for a birdie. Still going, still going. And how that didn't just turn at the end and disappear. He wonders as he looks to the clear blue skies. That one tantalizingly hangs on the edge of the hole. He comes up, taps it in and has to settle for a par five there, Rory McIlroy. <coughs> and that keeps him at one under par. Uh, a man in front of me here has just returned from the concession stand with four glasses of beer for him and three friends. But they've also got they've also got four lads with them who I would guess are aged between about 11 and 14. Who all looked expectantly as, at the dad as he came back with the beer to see whether they were going to get a, a taste of it. And it was a very much a no when they sat down with those uh, four beers. We're waiting for Will Zalatoris here on 15. 15, Ian. And it's just a delicate, delicate little uh, tap in for Scotty Scheffler, whose heart must have been in his mouth as he walked up the 13th fairway, flirted with Ray's Creek, got away with it, got up and down, and now he moves to four under par into a share of second place with Matt Fitzpatrick, with Danny Willett in the clubhouse, and they, those players at four under, as I say, sharing second place, three behind the leader, Bryson DeChambeau, after his brilliant 65 earlier. Uh, Will Zalatoris here on 15 count might have an opportunity to go two, four under. Yeah, he's got a good eagle look here as he's walking up towards his ball, which is in that back right-hand portion of the green, that avocado-shaped green on the 15th. And uh, Will Zalatoris just bending down to mend one of his pitch marks underneath the dappled shade of the overhanging pine trees. And he's playing alongside the man to whom he came runner-up in 2021, Hideki Matsuyama. A glittering Masters debut for Zalatoris a few years ago and then a, a tie for sixth place as well a couple of years ago in 2022 so for his two round two visits to Augusta National Will Zalatoris has become a little bit of a specialist of course couldn't play last year because of the back injury that forced him to withdraw he's missed so much of his golf but has come back and has been playing some really good golf second at the Genesis and a tie for fourth at the Arnold Palmer and now here he is on the leaderboard as well on the first day of the 88th Masters Championship three under par Will Zalatoris down on his haunches in the shade Hideki Matsuyama the first to hit into uh, this par 5 15th in a lilac shirt, bright white trousers, former champions chosen to lay up in front of the dark pond which is rippling in the breeze and this is right in the Hideki Matsuyama wheel park from about 99 yards he stopped it dead 15 feet or so form the flag for a birdie for Matsuyama. He's currently three over par, so things not going so well for Hideki, who's every time I've looked at a leaderboard recently on the PGA Tour, Hideki Matsuyama has been in there somewhere. He's been putting in early charges, late charges, hasn't had a win for a while, but uh, he's always been in the mix every time I've looked at leaderboards recently. Now. Zalatoris doing a little bit of gardening on the green at the 15th, tapping down the, the area around the pin, which is cut, if you're looking at the avocado, kind of at the top of where the stone would be. And Will Zalatoris is heading back towards the kind of fleshier part of the avocado shape. He's got about 40, 45 feet for this eagle chance that would catapult him up the leaderboard to five under par and two shots off the lead, wearing a kind of grey-green t 
t-shirt, skinny blue trousers. John Murray and I went out to watch him play in the par three yesterday. And uh, his wife, Caitlin, looked very similar to him, very similar Zalatoris shape, that kind of long, sinewy legs, with tall, straight back, blonde hair, insect-like features as well, big eyes, small face. And playing alongside Justin Thomas, who had played some brighter golf after his slump last year, but it hasn't been going so well recently. Justin Thomas missed the cut at the players and putting one up close to the pin. He makes a massive swipe with his right hand, hoping that it comes down the borrow a little bit more towards the hole. But that's a third shot in for Justin Thomas. He'll have a, a good chance of birdie here at uh, about three feet from the pin. That'll take him back to uh, level part. And now the stage is set for this eagle opportunity for Will Zalatoris. Third Masters appearance and, of course, had back surgery in April last year, missing the rest of the season, but back at the Masters for the first time since 2022. Could this be a major championship breakthrough opportunity for the man from San Francisco? Lost the playoff as well at the US PGA to Justin Thomas, the man the other man who he's playing alongside. So he's been bettered by both of his playing partners at uh, major championships. And with a point to prove here on the 15th, on the opening day of the Masters at Augusta. Putting has not been a strength of Zalatoris's, but he's swapped to that broom handle putter and now he rests his hand on the, the white grips and sends the ball on its way. Just the lightest of touches to cover the 45, 50 feet or so, and he's judged it absolutely perfectly, curving round from right to left and just below the hole. That was a great, great effort from Zalatoris. It'll be a birdie, I should think, although that is not the Zalatoris distance. Two feet or so, and he's always just the most uncomfortable putter to watch. He twitches and he wobbles over it, but uh, his putting has been better since he switched to that uh, broom handle putter, so hopefully he'll sink this in a few moments' time and he'll move to four under par. Andrew McGee has just joined us here on 15-16, uh, and your, the, your first words to me as you sat down were? My hat blew off at the clubhouse area. It's really windy on top of the hill. As you walk down, down closer to Ray's Creek, it calms down a little bit, but it's very blustery. So difficult. Difficult. A uh, lot calmer down here at the moment. Uh, Will Zalatoris with this little two foot, three foot to take him to four under and join a plethora of players uh, on four under, including uh, Scotty Scheffler, uh, Danny Willett in the clubhouse and Matt Fitzpatrick all uh, on four under. Going to be a little while before Zalatoris. John Murray, what do you have for yes, us? Yes, I can, I can tell you, Mark, that Cam Smith his ball going into the Rays Creek at the 12th has ended up costing him a double bogey. He actually went and took his drop way over to the right, near the Byron Nelson Bridge, actually, which is the bridge you walk down from from the 13th tee. If you remember, that's where Jordan Spieth took his drop many moons ago when he had his difficulties here. I remember sitting alongside Andrew McGee when we witnessed all of that, uh, and uh, he missed the green with that, Cam Smith, so a double bogey. That means he goes from two under back to level par, the Open Championship from St Andrews a couple of years ago. And Victor Hovland and Wyndham Clark both parred the 12th, so they remain at three under Clark and two under Hovland for the tournament as they go to the 13th altogether. News of the defending champion, Ian? And it's not good news. He's dropped a shot at the 14th, uh, and so he goes back to level par. And here's Matt Fitzpatrick looking to save his par on 14 and missing. Chipped up, chipped up to four and a half feet, and that was always on the low side. Just looked like he pulled that uh, putt to save par. Frustration for the Englishman, and he drops back to three under par. Ram drops back to level par. Uh, and here, Cap. In it goes for Will Zalatoris, so with that uh, long eagle putt from in the shadows down the left-hand side, put it into a couple of feet, and he has managed to tap it in with that much steadier broom handle putter, so he'll move to four under par, three off the lead, with three holes left to play on the opening day. Um, so he moves on 
to 16 and uh, the uh, media at the back of this 15th grandstand just starts to increase as Justin Thomas actually hasn't finished on this green at the moment. A couple of players have just walked off, just standing to the left, Matsuyama and Zalatoris, but the media is starting to pick up. Two or three uh, photographers have come and joined the Japanese media who are watching Matsuyama, but the uh, the photographers are here, I would imagine, because Rahm is coming down 15, and then McElroy and Scheffler and Hovland and Wyndham Clark, and they are all coming in the next half hour down here, and Andrew McGee will be alongside uh, cat for that Ali I'm going to come and join you do you have anything at the moment yeah well interestingly uh, Wacky Neiman uh, is about a putt on the 17th green he's hit a wonderful second shot here into the par 4 he's got about 7 or 8 feet from above the hole at the back of the green he's 1 under par at the moment the Chilean so that would get him to 2 under which obviously would still be a full 5 shots off Bryson DeChambeau's lead but I'm pretty sure I heard our golf correspondent Ian Carter uh, talking up the chances of, of Wacky in Neiman, Australian Open champion this season, winner a couple of times on the Live Tour uh, as well. So this is looking like a pretty solid start, consistent with good form so far this season. If he pops that in, he'll be at uh, he'll be at two under par. But um, but if you come up here, Mark, there'll be there'll be fireworks, bound okay. to be. Yeah, it looks like the correspondent knows what he's talking about. Sometimes I don't know. <laughs> Who'd have thought? Don't, think, don't forget your drill when you go up there. <laughs> right, uh, it's all yours, Ian. You 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 take it away. I'll go and join Ali, and then Andrew can slide. In next to Cap. Well, Bryson DeChambeau is the leader after his seven under par 65. The sound of the shot you can hear is from the fourth tee. That's the Open champion, Brian Harmon, and he finds the heart of the green. Harmon yet to make an impression on this leaderboard, but Tyrrell Hatton has the Englishman holding from off the green from probably about 50 yards out for a birdie on the par for fifth, spinning the ball back into the hole and a big smile playing across his face a few moments ago. Scotty Scheffler with his second shot into the 14th as well sets up a, a birdie chance in the 20-foot uh, range as well. And Nikolai Hoygaard, Ryder Cup debutant at the seventh, chips in for a birdie and goes to one under par, arms aloft, and uh, there is a birdie for Hoygaard to take him to one under. As we go back out now to you, Ali. Yeah, your man, Wacky Neiman, has rolled that putt in quite beautifully. Eight feet right to left on the 17th green. Perfect pace, dropping into the hole uh, to get himself to two under par. So he's in the mix. The big white leaderboard away to my right-hand side here on the first day of the 88th Masters. Uh, sees Bryson DeChambeau uh, at the top. Seven under par in the red numbers. Five birdies on the back nine today. Danny Willett, his closest challenger at four under, alongside Scotty Sheffield and then a whole host of players. Zalatoris, of course, four under par as well. whole host of players on two under par, uh, including Wacken Neiman, Ian. So, as you said, um, playing well going into this Masters. A lot of people talking about him, including you. Two under, one to play in this first round. And an interesting um, thought about, Zal uh, uh, about Neiman is that he was an invitation to this tournament because he's not picking up the world ranking points because he plays on live, but he did win the Australian Open. That caught the eye of the uh, members of Augusta and hence the invitation to be part of the field. Remember, the Masters is an invitational tournament. Now, what news of Will Zalatoris and his tee shot, latest tee shot cap? Yeah, just watching um, Will Zalatoris, Justin Thomas and Hideki Matsuyama hitting their tee shots on the 16th. Zalatoris the first to go with the lowest score out there at the moment, four under par. And he has found the front edge of the green, the ball just clinging on to that treacherous slope, which is now dappled in shade from the overhanging pine trees. Here goes Justin Thomas high into the now clearing sky, just a few fluffy white clouds remain from this morning's overcast conditions and this looks incredibly good from Justin Thomas, the ball tracking down the slope towards the hole absolutely beautiful from Justin Thomas there, Andrew McGee who has joined me on the 15th grandstand. Ah, uh, so nice to be out here at 15, this is my favourite place, I just love this to look back at 16 and see these beautiful tee shots to this possible hole-in-one pin placement today Matsuyama, I'm next in this Nice white trousers, flipping that three over par. He needs to get it going to be here for the weekend. 
Yeah, three over par for Matsuyama, the winner, of course, you remember back in 2021, taking the uh, green jacket just uh, five months after Dustin Johnson had had the green jacket draped over his shoulders. And Matsuyama now is casting a vivid black shadow on the long, thin tee box. Looks like a cricket wicket, the tee box at 16, and he sends it right down towards the bales at the far end and then over the water and right at the flag. Matsuyama's ball bouncing four feet from the pin and coming to a dead stop. Beautiful shot below the hole, a little right to left putt coming up. Excellent three shots on the screen on the 16. Yeah, they've all gone for the pin there. And that, Andrew McGee, is because all of a sudden there's not a breath of wind here. Yeah, that's the easy pin placement. We know the difficult one on 16 is that back right pin placement that we'll probably see this weekend. And we can see away to our right-hand side, a group of players has appeared at the top of the hill. And the next coming down this uh, par 5, 15th, and playing over this murky, dark pond towards this avocado-shaped green. And now the flag-hanging limp will be John Rahm, Matt Fitzpatrick, and the amateur Nick Dunlap here. On the 14th, Scotty Scheffler looking for a birdie and coming up just shy from around about 20, 25 feet, something like that. Never threatened the hole, but it will be an easy tap-in to keep the world number one right in the mix here at four under par in a share of second place. Three shots off the lead held by Bryson DeChambeau at seven under par. Ryan Fox in the clubhouse at three under par. Danny Willett in the clubhouse at four under par. Matt Fitzpatrick's out there at three under now, having dropped that shot at the 14th. Corey Connors, uh, the Canadian round in a two under par 70, the same mark as Ben Ann, who's in the clubhouse. Wacking Neiman we were telling you about at two under par that's the same mark as Wyndham Clark who is the um, US Open champion and I think we're going to have news of or get sight of Rory McIlroy yes here he is now this is on the 14th and he's played a lovely approach shot in now can McIlroy get things going couldn't get the birdie at 13 this is from 18 feet sends it on its way looks good oh it's in it's in for McElroy and he is starting to move in the right direction he's been patient today that's his third birdie fourth birdie of the round now and he has had a couple of drop shots early in his round but McElroy is now muscling into the top 10 into a share of seventh place at two under par so now Matt Fitzpatrick, I think, playing his second shot into 15 with UCAP. Yeah, he's right on the top of the hill. I can just see them. They look like tiny dolls away in the distance through the pine trees. Matt Fitzpatrick taking a mighty swipe because the wind, as we've been saying all afternoon, is behind the players. So they're getting a real bit of help from the breeze coming down the hill. Matt Fitzpatrick deciding to go for the green and flirting with the water, the pond, uh, through the back of the green that uh, constitutes that uh, Span that takes you over through the 16th, so nearly falling into the pond on the 16th. He's just come up short by about a couple of feet, really. Must have had his heart in his mouth from the top of the hill. Another ball coming flying in. Andrew McGee is just looking through his binoculars to work out who is who at the top of the hill, but uh, the defending champion John Rahm among this group of players, Matthew. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Matthew, Andrew. Matthew. My brother's name is Matthew, but that's close. <laughs> I do have some handy dandy binoculars I purchased before I arrived. Well done. Stuff. Now that's just good preparation. Oh, sorry, Ali, but uh, Nick Dunlap <laughs> with a beautiful shot and hit the green way right here on 15 with an eagle opportunity. John Rahm behind the trees, off to the right on 15, has to lay up. So that's the layup ball. John Rahm has had to lay up. He's a bit short. He's about 100 yards or so out of the green has to fly the water but that could really put him in close that's we've seen a lot of players laying up here with the wind behind nice bit of backspin can suck the ball back towards the hole here yeah i like the play getting a little bit closer with this much wind if you're back too far with that wedge you could spin it too much back into the water john rom a little closer than 100 i think in that range to hit that low spinner bounce twice stop it by the hole let's see if he can pull it off and matt fitzpatrick just walking a solo down the left-hand side of the fairway here at 15. Billy Foster is uh, scurrying along a good uh, 100 yards or so behind him. Matt Fitzpatrick looks deep in thought here, Andrew. Yeah, with a fantastic round, three under par at this point. Doesn't want to waste one here on 15. This is a good birdie opportunity. And then 16 coming up, another one. And then just hold on tight for 17 and 18. Possibly could finish with five under par. Matt Fitzpatrick in 
beautiful shape in this first round. John Rahm, though, at level par, grinding at the moment on the opening day, the defending champion. Ian, you've got to look at the five-time champion. Tiger Woods with his second shot into the fifth, dropped a shot at the fourth to go back to level par. He's hit a lovely drive and a lovely second shot into that fifth hole, and he'll have a look at birdie on that very difficult par four. Now, superb from Tom Kim on the fourth, holding from all the way across the green, this exciting young Korean, and that moves him to one under par cap john rahm just sizing up this and i'd said about a hundred yards but i think he's a bit closer than that isn't he andrew what do you think he's looking to do here yeah this is that this is that low skipper he's still on a bit of a down slope we all know you come down the hill towards the pond on 15 so this is a a down slope it's going to drive the ball lower he's over the ball now with that short john rahm backstroke and the ball's on its way low. It looks like it's got good distance. One's bounce, two bounces, stop right there. Backs up towards the hole. Nice shot. Ten feet, eight feet, seven feet, seven feet. Getting closer. Excellent shot. I was looking at the flag as John Rahm was hitting that ball. I wasn't looking at the player at all. The flag, at one point, as he was taking his backswing, the wind was behind. All of a sudden, the wind spins around. It's in his face as he hits that, but uh, he's judged it perfectly. Tiny bit of backspin. He's about six feet away for what would be a birdie for John Rahm getting back into the red figures. Where do you think John Rahm would like to be come the end of the round? Three holes left to play after this 15th if he's going to feel like he can successfully defend the green jacket from last year. Yeah, even par at this point. I think he's been a pretty sloppy golfer today. He hasn't really had all of his all of his metal out there. He looks very calm, very patient. He knows it's a four-round tournament. And he's just taking his time. If he could hold this, get one or two under today, that would be a good start. Because you never know what's going to happen at Augusta National, do you? Just can't play yourself out of it on the opening day. Nick Dunlap is just walking through those dappled shadows on the, the far corner of uh, the 15th green here, making his master's debut. The 20-year-old from Huntsville, Alabama, became the first amateur in 33 years to win on the PGA Tour when he won, won the American Express back in January, turned pro a week later. But it's been a bit of a grind for him, hasn't it, Andrew, since he turned pro? Missed uh, three cuts in, in six starts but a little bit brighter uh, on the couple of uh, tournaments in Texas over the past few weeks for Nick Dunlap just propped up on his putter on the back edge of the green looking at Matt Fitzpatrick who's standing almost above the water on the 16th and he's misjudged this one Andrew coming up well short well difficult shot his second shot put him in put him in a bit of danger over there he had to try to drive the ball into the grain which you never want to do it's hard to judge with the water past the whole down slope blah 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 we know how difficult that shot is he left it well short of the green so Matt Fitzpatrick has uh, to get up and down to save his par. Nick Dunlap, a long putt coming up uh, for Eagle for the young uh, man from Alabama. So he'll be putting for Eagle shortly. He's three over par. Fitzpatrick, the best of this three ball. He's three under par, but struggling on the par 5 15th. John Rahm at uh, level par, and he's got a birdie putt to come. Mark, I think you're back with us. I am, yes. And I just arrived at 17 to a smattering of applause from the 20 people that are sitting in those, a bit more than that. There's probably about 100 people sitting in this stand uh, just to the left-hand side of the green on 17 because Alistair Bruce Ball? Well, well, I promised you fireworks. You I, did. I think, I think we describe it as a smattering of fireworks, really, because, you know, there weren't quite enough people here to go as nuts as they should have done. Patrick Cantlay has just leapt from one over par to one under par by holding his second shot on the par 4 17. That had me furiously, like some crazy librarian flicking through the record books to try and find out how many times that has been done and here it says 17th hole that is only in master's history i believe the fourth eagle ever lowest score on this hole is a two takaki kono in 1969 remember him tommy nakajima i think people will remember yeah, him yeah. 1989 who had terrible problems in the road hole bunker uh, one year at the open at st andrews and davis love the third 1998 made a two patrick Cantley, the fourth man to do it how about that yeah. and he looks Absolutely, uh, as you would expect Patrick Canley <laughs> to look uh, after that too. And actually, he'll put him in the red numbers because he came up 17-1 over and he is now one under. Ian, what do you have for us at the moment? Well, just a, a look at Mathieu Pavon of France, who's 
Quite a story, really, because he was the 10th man to earn one of the 10 cards with his performances on the European Tour last year to get on the PGA Tour, made himself a winner on the PGA Tour. That gave him eligibility for the Masters. And years and years ago, his parents came here and they buried a little euro in the ground here to almost lay down a marker that maybe one day their son could come here and play. And he has come here and played, and he's picked up two early birdies on his Masters debut, and he's now nearly had a hole in one on the sixth, tapped it in for a birdie, and so the Frenchman is at three under par, as we just watched Tiger Woods on the fifth looking to make his birdie to get back to one under par. Do we know where they buried it? No, that he couldn't. He went. He went to have a look, but he said he's not going to try and find it. But he's thinking of doing the same thing while he's here for his mm -hmm. child. And Woods very, very tentative with his uh, putt there, and he's left himself three feet tested to to save par. Very un Woods like that uh, attempt at birdie at five. You could get into trouble doing things like that here. John Rahm with cap. Oh, and he can't believe that it just glided past on the right hand side. The birdie putt for the defending champion. He dips his knee in frustration as the ball just glides by on the right-hand side. Tap in par for John Rahm and he's walking back uh, towards uh, his bag and, and his caddy with, with his, his bottom lip bit, bitten between his, his teeth. He's gritting his teeth, now filling in his, his scorecard. He knew that was an opportunity to get into red figures late on this opening day. Yeah, downwind par five. With He probably could have hit six or seven iron in here and he missed the fairway and behind the trees and now looking back up to the fairway, we see McElroy dead in the middle of the fairway. Scheffler on the left side of the fairway. It looks like Xander Shockley is in the right trees. He has chipped, not chipped out, he's punched out, and Xander Shockley will be laid up having a wedge. But let's see what Rory McElroy and Scheffler can do from the top of this hill. Can they stuff it in there for an eagle opportunity? A nice tap in right there for Nick Dunlop. Yeah, that was uh, Matt Fitzpatrick oh, saving his par. par. And it was more than a tap-in, Andrew. That oh. was about three feet. And that could have been a drop shot very easily for Matt Fitzpatrick, making that mistake through the back of the green, nearly going in the pond on the 16th. Bad chip back up, catching that upslope. And he's got up and down for his par. For Matt. So Matt Fitzpatrick stays at three under par. And that is, that'll be important for him going into the final three holes of this opening yeah, day. Yeah, nice save. It just caught the left edge. You're right. That was a quite a nervy putt. Three footers are very, very difficult at Augusta National. As we all know, the wind blowing, you got to grip down the grip a little bit further down, crouch down, widen your stance. Putts on his way. That's Nick Dunlop for a birdie for very well done. Yeah, and he, he acknowledges the applause from the crowd. And I don't know if you can tell if you're listening on uh, Five Sports Extra, the BBC app, BBC Sounds, the decibel level here at the 15th has really risen because if we look up the hill, we can see the figures of the world number one, Scotty Scheffler, Rory McIlroy looking to complete the Greer Grand Slam on the 10th attempt, and Xander Schauffele, the Olympic champion, who's been playing some glorious golf of late, all lined up on the horizon. Rory McIlroy deep in conversation with his caddy Harry Diamond Scotty Scheffler I can just see him lining up here sending one up into the blue sky past those pine trees the branches of which are reaching up towards the floor oh my oh. goodness me the white fluffy clouds Scotty Scheffler almost slam dunked it from the top of the hill on 15 that's got to be all of what 250 yards he went right at the pin he's got about 10 feet for his eagle scotty scheffler with an absolutely sensational golf shot this this exhibition of iron play from him this year his well his whole life i guess has been exquisite amazing shot from way back there to eight ten feet now rory mcelroy over the ball crowd is gathering crowd excuse me the patrons here at Augusta National, all peering down this top of the hill, the top of the hill on 15, McElroy, over the ball, over the ball, looking at it, big backswing, big follow through. Here it comes, can Rory McElroy match the magic of the world number one? Heading in towards the green, it's come up short, it's clinging on to the bank, just above the water between the bunker and the pond, and Rory McElroy not 
quite making it, playing to the right-hand side, maybe playing it safe, looking to make sure that if he was going to miss, he was going to end up in the sand rather than in the water. But just, just clinging on above the water, Rory McIlroy will have to get uh, up and down if he wants his birdie, but it's definitely advantage. Scotty Scheffler at the moment, four under par, the world number one, the 2022 Masters champion, cutting a tall figure in his blue trousers and his, his light green shirt as he walks that long, languid stride down the hill towards the green here alongside Xander Shoffley, who's in black trousers, white top, white, a black baseball cap. Shoffley at one over par. Rory McIlroy, two under par in those uh, rather fetching lilac trousers and that uh, characteristic McElroy bounce coming down the hill. That's good, a good sign, isn't it, Andrew? Roy McElroy's got a little bit of swag in his, in his step. Oh, absolutely. With um, kind of iffy start to, to get to two under now to fight back, this is a, this is a really positive sign. As we all know, the first round at Augusta has been his nemesis, has gotten behind the eight ball, and not so much today. He's got, a, he's, he's got away with that shot to the right here on 15, the second shot, but he's got lots of green to work with right to left, fast chip coming across the green. But Scotty Shelf here again, oh my gosh, you're going to hear the roars for Eagle if it goes. Meanwhile, behind us on the 16th tee, Matt Fitzpatrick and uh, Nick Dunlap have sent their balls, both of them, onto the putting surface up ahead. And now it's the turn of the world number three, the defending champion, John Rahm, standing over his ball on the par three. The water glistening in the distance, the green bathed in a pool of golden light as we head into the evening here at Augusta, Georgia. And uh, the ball of John Rahm just bouncing to the right-hand side and trickling down the slope to get better and better just under the flagstick, about five, six feet for birdie for the Spaniard as he pulls the white glove off his hand and uh, tucks it into the pocket of his uh, his black trousers walking along the 16th. Matt Fitzpatrick just glancing to his right to watch uh, Rory McIlroy sizing up a, a bit of a chip here and it looks like he's going to play before Xander Shoffley perhaps, who laid up. No, it's going to be Shoffley first, who's standing in the middle of the fairway. The downslope here at the 15th, currently one over par. The man from California sending it up and over the water. One bounce, two bounce, now needs to grip and suck back, but he's overshot, just caught up in the first cut, the collar of the green, and held up there. And Xander Shoffley's body language doesn't look good, does it? No, his head is hanging down. He just kind of slapped his thigh with his right hand, and no, he knows he's uh, not played the 15th well, off, the, off into the rough, off the tee to the right, behind the trees, chipped out. Now he's had a full wedge to, what's he, what's he, 25, 20 feet behind the hole with a defensive putt coming down the hill. You don't want defensive putts at Augusta. You want offensive putts from under the holes. You can bang it. Um, Scotty Scheffler certainly doesn't need to bang it from where he is. He's 11 feet from the pin and he's putting with the wind behind him and down the slope towards the water. Not a putt I would like to take on, but remember this is an eagle putt for Scotty Scheffler that would propel him up to a shot behind the leader. Bryson DeChambeau already in the clubhouse, seven under par for DeChambeau. What a round he put together a little earlier on here on the opening day of the 88th Masters. Rory McIlroy now looking to just punt this one up third shot into the par five chipping up onto the putting surface now needs to settle as it flies past the flag and there's a bit of a slope there that it's caught it's trickling even further away Rory McIlroy with a, a shrug of the shoulders and he reaches up his right hand and rubs the back of his neck now looking down at the face of his club thinking what on earth happened there that wasn't what I wanted no he smashed it just a little too hard and high and that ball just trundled and trundled hard to, hard to predict I mean you don't sit here and practice these kind of shots a whole lot but greens this fast and he thought it would probably grab I think and it never did it never grabbed it never settled down until it finally stopped 15 feet past the hole left to right uphill putt still has an opportunity though yeah well you've been watching a lot more of Rory's round than, than I have I've been out here on the 15th grandstand all afternoon you've been watching in the media center alongside Ian these are the kind of length of putts he's been rolling in all day aren't they 
Um, yeah, he's, he's starting to get his feel. I mean, it takes some time to kind of get your feet underneath you here and start walking the course and get into the tournament again. It's four days. It's not just a, a sprint to the finish on a Thursday. It's, uh, you know, he's still looking at the sky. He's still a little bit upset about that shot right, right there because this is the last par five, and you know you you don't get a birdie here. You've, you've really missed out on one here, but uh, I think we're all going to be – he's outside of Scotty Scheffler, so he'll be putting after Xander Shoffley hits this little defensive – Hiddler down the hill. Let's see how fast this is. A couple years ago, we saw a couple of these putts go in the water. I think it was the greens are still green enough. They, they can get dry if it doesn't rain. They get a little bit of a light green, brownish tinge to them by the weekend. It's, it really gets fun out here. So Xander Schauffele to putt next, Mark, for his birdie. Then a birdie putt coming up for Rory McIlroy and the eagle chance for Scotty Scheffler. Don't know if you want to go somewhere else well, first. We'll, we'll just stay here on 17, actually, Cat. Oh, because I was expecting Will Zalatoris about to play his third. Just got a bit of work to do here, Ali. Yeah, he's committed the cardinal sin on the par 4 17th of going through the back of the green. You cannot afford, wherever the pin is here, to go long because he's standing right at the bottom of this steep, shiny slope with the green, the putt surface about 10 feet above his head he's got about 15 yards back to the flag but only five or six yards of that is green i've seen a couple of players hit this shot today both of them so far have gone for the little bump and run but one of the really difficult things to judge here mark is the sort of difference in speed between the fringe so even though that looks super smooth and tightly mown the sort of stickiness of that fringe and then the, the, the shiny sort of you know dining table speedy surface uh, of the green so as soon as it gets onto that putting surface it's going to go streaking towards that hole. Zalatoris, of course, three shots off the lead. The angular, spiky Californian back from back surgery in his light blue shirt over the ball, bumps it into that slope, then just climbs to the top of the hill. He looks to have judged this really well, but he's not going to be able to stop it short of the flag. It's good for pace. It's getting applause, but he's left himself maybe seven, eight feet or so to try and save the pie. You cannot afford to go long at the seventh. How many times do we have to tell them, Mark? Well, exactly. And he had the wind behind him as well. I'm not sure he could have done much more than that really cat Rory McIlroy those uh, lilac trousers bent at to right angles as he's down crouching behind the putt that he's about to attempt for birdie here on the 15th that would take him to three under par four off the lead of uh, Bryson DeChambeau who's uh, already in the clubhouse and probably showered and well rested by now as Rory McIlroy really going to work on this putt 15 feet or so across the green on the 15th and uh, as Andrew McGee was mentioning a little bit earlier these are the kind of putts that he's been rolling in he's been walking up to them quickly he's been rattling them in but he's taking every care over this one three holes left to play after this if he could move himself to four off the lead then that would feel incredibly good for Rory McIlroy looking to complete the grand slam and this looks like it's bending round a little too sharply for Rory McIlroy it's going to be a, a par for him from just a couple of feet Oh, he's having another look at this. Rory McIlroy went up to it and he just keeps one foot back from the putt, but he's, uh, he's stopped. He's having a conversation with Scotty Scheffler about who's going to put it next. Scotty oh, Scheffler has uh, got his oh, palm oh, raised to the ceiling. What's going on there? They're talking about his ball might have moved because they're discussing, did you ground the putter? Did you, did you help it move? Oh, they're probably going to call for a ruling here. That's what happens on these windy days is, the, is you have to be very careful with these short putts because the, the, the greens are so fast. I think they've decided that no harm, no foul. It's going to tap this one footer in. But they talked about it. Scheffler was, was watching, so he, he really had a good, a good sight of that. Ah, par's in the hole, five. In it goes for Rory McIlroy, and there was a smattering of applause from away to our left on the 16th as well, where John Rahm has uh, sunk his birdie putt. So John Rahm in the red figures, the defending champion, and now the stage is set for Scotty Scheffler to try and sink this eagle putt. Andrew, what's he got? 10, 11 feet? Oh, I think he's going to make it. <laughs> as good as this guy's been putting and hitting, and he's just so calm. I just loved his press conference yesterday. He's, he's just... He's checked all the boxes. He's ready. He doesn't need to practice anymore or worry about anything but going out and trusting himself and playing. And I just loved his calm demeanor and his over the ball. He's done his due diligence. He's lined it up from four sides, behind it, left side, right side. Ball's on its way. Good speed. And here it comes towards the hole. Ooh. 
Oh, you can hear the groans of the crowd and Scotty Scheffler puts his right hand into his pocket to pick up the marker. He's just going to lift the ball up here and give himself a moment. That was very close indeed, but it should be a birdie from a couple of feet or so for the world number one to move to five under par and two shots off the lead. A dangerous position for the rest of the field. Oh, they don't want to see his name up there. It's like saying Tiger Woods in the 90s, you know, he's the 2000s when... Oh, just taps it in for the four. High side, beautiful putt for Eagle. Good speed, had a good chance. Let's go back to Chappas. <laughs> Thank you very much. I was just enjoying li listening to the two of you. We're still waiting for Will Salatoris to have this uh, par putt. Uh, Hideki Matsuyama, as he hit his chip in from just from the front of the green, <clears throat> really didn't get much purchase on that whatsoever, and he landed it right next to Zalatoris's marker. So Zalatoris had to move his marker For Matsuyama then had his putt for par, which he missed, so he's bogeyed it. Zalatoris has now had to put his marker back, <laughs> and finally, eventually, he's now lining up his putt. What, what's quite interesting about that, though, Mark, because I've seen you know quite a few groups go through this hole today, is that Matsuyama, with the chip, as you said, came up well short of the hole. Justin Thomas then had a birdie putt from the right-hand side of this hole, and he seems to have been fooled by it as well. He came up three or four feet short, and I've seen that happen quite a lot today. And I do know that this, this putting surface, I mean, all the greens are magnificent here, but there's sort of deception in the 17th. You can quite easily be fooled by this green. We've seen it happen countless times before. Now, this is a tester for Will Zalatoris. So he's currently four under par, went over the back of this 17th green in two. He's chipped up to about seven feet, standing over the tall broom handle putter, staring down at the ball, sends the putt on its way. No, it hangs on the right-hand side of the hole, but the gravity it will not drop, and he has to walk up and just knock it in very gently, one-handed with the putt a drop shot Salatoris he goes back to three under par only his second drop shot of the afternoon tee shots on 16 Kat and Andrew and uh Scotty Scheffler's been deep in conversation with Ted Scott. They've still got the yardage book out as Scotty Scheffler bends down to put the tee in the ground and now lining the wedge behind the ball. That's all it's going to be. The wind, though, whilst they've been discussing, has swung. Instead of going right to left, it's now going left to right. But Scotty Scheffler is just, as he says, as Andrew McGee said, he's checked all the boxes, he's prepared, he's ready to go navy coloured trousers, light grey top, long tanned arms with a tall Texan white cap, a couple of twitches of the head towards the hole and now he's ready, that lovely long metronomic stroke sending the ball up through the pine trees over the water right at the pin. <laughs> And oh my word, we've seen some tee shots on the 16th on this opening day. Bryson DeChambeau, Matt Fitzpatrick, Sergio Garcia all putting them close. And Scotty Scheffler's is right up amongst the very best of them. How about that? Oh my gosh. I'm just, just amazed at this hole after hole, swing after swing, just this iron play is... I'm thinking about Johnny Miller back in 1972 or three when he was hitting all those irons to one foot. I asked his caddy one day, Andy Gore, Andy uh, Martinez, how do you hit it to a foot so often? He goes, well, we have yardages to the foot. I said, that would be called footages then, wouldn't it? <laughs> now, has Rory McIlroy got the right footage? Has he done his calculations correctly? The crowd falls silent. And there's a smattering of applause from behind me on the 15th as the, the next group are playing in. Rory McIlroy with that new waggle, nine iron in his hand. Butch Harmon has given him that little bit of pre-swing preparation to line up that backswing and Rory McIlroy puts one in pin high to the right of the flag and now it gets closer, creeping down the hill not as good as Scotty Scheffler but still within three feet of the flag almost like a match play situation Oh, they're just eating this pin up they know this is their chance to make a hole in one on 16 here and this pin is just getting killed I'm sure this is probably more birdies on this hole than any other hole today. Ian will probably give us the answer here in a little bit, but uh, last but not least, Sanders Shoffley in the black trousers and the white top of this Callaway hat that's black and white is Adidas shoes that are black and white. I'm not sure about those shoes. They mm. look a bit like um, kind of 
primary school plimsolls, don't they? Oh, yes. Yeah, not sure about those. A black cap and a couple of little waggles from the Olympic champion, just tapping his thumb on the grip of the club. Now sending the ball in the way. This one leaking off to the right-hand side, curving away. He was maybe hoping for a gust of wind. Bounces to the right, pin high, and now coming down the slope. And this one is really gathering speed as it heads towards the flag. And he'll be just below the hole, putting up towards the flag. All three balls within six feet. And that was an absolute masterclass of par three goal. Beautiful. I love this vantage point to be able to turn around to see these shots on 16 after the eagle opportunities and the water opportunities on 15. And just beautiful. A bunch of birdies coming up for you folks who love birdies on 16 bunch of birdies coming up. Uh, Mark, what's going up on with you on the 17th? Uh, nothing at the moment, but we're waiting for Ram and Fitzpatrick and uh, Nick Dunlop to come in to view Ram, one under Fitzpatrick, three under. Ian, do you have stats? Is 16 playing the easiest? No, it's not. It's, oh. it's interesting. There have only been eight birdies. Um, there have actually been more birdies on the 12th than they have on the 16th of the two par threes on the back nine. So it's, it's, it's Maybe very we've just seen them all. Well, maybe, yeah, that, um, maybe myself and Kat well, and now Andrew, since we were there, we've seen them all. It, it's that gathering pin position. So if you do get it right, then you are going to profit. But um, but actually the statistics, you know, and I can see Xander Chauffle as well, so a, a really nice one in there as well. But it, I don't know whether it's, you know, they're all just coming towards the end of the day and also bear in mind there are way more players who have played earlier in the round than have played at the 16th yet so, yeah, it, will, so. it will balance out as the day goes on. Do you want on. to do a quick leaderboard? I don't think we've done one for a while as we wait for Ram and Fitzpatrick and also John and Trish still have players coming around Amen Corner and we'll wait for the putts on 16 as well with Scheffler and McElroy watched by Kat and Andrew. Absolutely we've been treated to a wonderful round from Bryson DeChambeau today a seven under par 65 to set the pace but Scotty Scheffler looks really really ominous. Five under par, three holes to play, and everyone was talking about him being a very short odds, hot favourite. Well, he's justifying that at the moment. Danny Willits, four under par, 68 in the clubhouse as well. Ryan Fox in the clubhouse at three under with his uh, 69. But then you've got Zalatoris, Fitzpatrick and Pavon out on the course at three under par. McElroy, Clark, Poston, Hoygaard, Nikolai Hoygaard and Max Homer, they're all at two under par. So some really Really good names on this leaderboard. Victor Hovland dropping back. He went to the turn at four under. He doubled, bogeyed 10. He parred 11, parred 12, parred 13. He's just bogeyed the poor, the poor, the par four, 14. I really like the 14th. We walked it properly for the first time yesterday. I don't know why I'm calling it poor. Anyhow, the par four, 14. He's just bogeyed that, so he's dropped back to one under, and he will loom into view shortly uh, with Kat and Andrew Alley. Uh, Nick Dunlap, third to play, I think, in this group. Ram Fitzpatrick and Dunlap on their way down the 17th in the sunshine, and and he's made the same error that Will Zalatoris did. His ball has, has gone all the way over the back of the green. It's almost run beyond the uh, those thin green ropes that keep the patrons just off uh, the uh, the back of the green, that area where they're going to chip from. So they're just going to have to sort that out and make some room for him. John Rahm, the drive went went right at the 17th fairway, but not far enough right to cause him a problem with the trees. He's ended up pin high, sort of back left of this green. Now, I saw Ben Arn hit this putt uh, probably, I don't know, an hour or so ago. And this one, from this side of the flag, the pin is sort of cut back middle, and look at look how stiff the breeze is now. The flag is yeah. really being torn and, and is really flapping furiously on top of the flag stick. This one, you've actually got to hit harder than you think, because Ben Arn, the one he hit, I thought that's going way past, and it didn't. So John Rahm will have that to get himself to two under par, but it's an outside chance. I think he'd be happy to get off here with a par, and Matt Fitzpatrick at three under par. He is just making a little note in his yardage, but we can't see his ball, and I presume that means it is in that bunker bunker front right of the green so bunker with a um, bunker shot coming with a with a lot of green to work with yeah well it is really blustery up here on 17 a woman to our right was uh, just struggling to keep the the straw hat on her head and having to use her right hand to to keep it on cat 
absolutely not a breath of wind <laughs> down here. It's so weird, isn't it, that here we are down in this bowl in the kind of bottom left-hand corner of the course, the 15th green and the 16th uh, green away to my left-hand side. All the water, the water in front of 15, the water in front of 16, all dead calm, like a black mirror. Now as the sun is sinking down below the big bank of trees to my left-hand side, it's casting these black lace shadows across the undulations of the 16th green away in the distance where Rory McElroy is standing just a few feet from the hole putting for a birdie that would take him to four under par and this would be a very useful birdie indeed for McElroy. he's walking after it he was up and after that almost as soon as it left the putter face and it's a birdie chance gone begging oh it just you just can't keep missing these kind of putts the putt he hit on 15 was poor it was low right away doesn't doesn't give you any confidence to hit a putt like that and he took it to 16 and he just continued to miss another putt a birdie putt from oh my god three or four feet just can't continue you gotta make those has to keep repeating that mantra that he's been saying since he arrived here on the premises at uh, Augusta National. Patience. Patience is the key for Rory McIlroy. He'll stay at three under par as he heads to the 17th. Two more holes to play. Can he move? closer to Bryson DeChambeau at the top of the leaderboard at seven under par. Now Scotty Scheffler in the middle of the green in that little bowl where the pin has been cut on this opening day where the ball gathers down really inviting pin to attack and Scotty Scheffler has gone right at it. Two foot here then for the world number one for a birdie that would move him to within a shot of the lead and of course of course he makes it. Well he's full of confidence isn't he where Rory is not you can just see that right there and my goodness gracious, I just can't think what he's feeling right now. Rory McIlroy is probably his, his putting guru, Coach Brad Faxon, has probably got some ideas for him this evening to talk about. But my goodness, what a one loss there. Yeah, real chance slipping through the fingers of uh, Rory McIlroy here on 16. Uh, Ali and Mark as uh, the world number one, Rory McIlroy, and the Olympic champion, Xander Schauffele, head to the 17th tee. So they'll be heading up the hill through that big corridor of sunshine and back into the breezy part of the course. And Andrew McGee has scooped up the binoculars and he's looking up towards the top of the hill here on the 15th where we're expecting Wyndham Clark, Victor Hovland and Cameron Smith to hove into view shortly. The luxury of being able to scoop up binoculars Alistair Bruce Bond. Two yeah. pairs of binoculars <laughs> here guys. <laughs> That's gratuitously showing off. Uh, I've unfortunately left mine at home this week. We don't need them for this part. What a fantastic view we have of John Rahm's 25 footer from the back left of the 17th green defending champion tall imposing figure in the white shirt matched by the white baseball cap just widens the stance ever so slightly rocks himself into position glorious sunshine splashed across the 17th green and this one is really going to turn from left to right but it turns early and there you go Mike you see he's not I giving it yeah. enough and that putt does fool you and he's left himself maybe four or five feet there for the par Matt Fitzpatrick with the bunker shot again coming up that slope didn't quite get enough of that or, or didn't get it to where he wanted it to and he's got about 12 foot for par to keep himself at, at three under par but Nick Dunlop has got about 20 foot 25 foot for par so he's going to go first here so news to Scotty Scheffler back down 17 on the tee Ian yes and he's striped it straight down the middle just as he always seems to do such an ominous figure on this leaderboard at six under par and firmly in the fairway off the tee on 17 and have you got views of Rory as well haven't seen him as yet because uh, it's Xander Schauffele to play first. And Schauffele is on the tee now. He'll be disappointed, won't he? He'll be very disappointed because he's been one of the form players of the year really? without making the spectacular breakthrough and at level par at the moment, given the blistering pace set by DeChambeau and Scheffler, uh, he would have wanted an awful lot more than that. Tiger Woods, we've not spoken about. He's at level par and he's just fashioned a low one into the front bunkers on the seventh after finding himself <laughs> out of position on the I'd, team. The reason I smile at that is because myself and Ali here at 17 have got a perfect, well, we can't say anything of the 17th, of the seventh green, but we can see crowds around the seventh <laughs> Yeah. and I reckon they are 10 deep and so it was just a, we think Tiger's coming down 7 at the moment <laughs> I mean is it the, the contrast between the, the 10 deep round the 7th green and literally you could park a double decker bus on one side of the 17th green where you've got Ram and Fitzpatrick and there are this this 
grandstand is maybe a third full and Matt Fitzpatrick has just missed his par putt to, to kind of in, in, and this is nothing to do with him Ali but to complete indifference yeah and he's left it a couple of feet short it's causing real problems this green as it always does at the 17th so came up 12 feet short with the bunker shot and the, and the putts come up a couple of feet short he's had to mark it and that is no tapping and that is for the bogey five so he's definitely going to drop one here John Rahm this is important I'd say this is about five feet sliding across the 17th green left to right looking at that leaderboard away to the right hand side just those Scheffler numbers going up yeah. in the red one two it nothing just gone seems, down seems so inevitable in a way but it's not easy to play with that pressure of being the red hot favourite in the world number one he's just absolutely magnificent at the moment John Rahm was truly magnificent here last year and it earned him a green jacket. This one, to keep himself at one under par. On its way, he's going to miss on the right. As soon as that left the blade, we were right behind it, just sliding by on the right. He's missed it. Drop shot for Rahm, so he drops back to level par. The other thing, whilst they're 10 deep round the seventh green, they're five deep round the eighth tee, and there's nothing going on on the eighth tee at the moment. They're just waiting for Tiger on the eighth tee, and they could literally, all of them, turn round and watch what's going on on the 17th. They don't have to move. They could just <laughs> turn round, watch what's going going on on the 17th green and hey, then turn back to the 8th tee. Mark, you wanted news of McElroy's yeah. tee shot. He's just tugged it left. So whether or not he's going to be blocked out for that shot, the second shot on 17, but he's missed the fairway down the left-hand side and the ball's coming to come to rest in the pine straw that surrounds the base of one of those tall pine trees as well. Ram Bogey back to level par. Fitzpatrick Bogey uh, back to two under par. Dunlap Bogey out to three over par. Very underwhelming on this hole. Um, Cat on 15. Yeah, well, Wyndham Clark, who's been going along quite nicely at two under par, found a bit of trouble down the left-hand side with his uh, tee shot. Had to almost putt out. The ball didn't leave the grass. It just came skidding out over the surface of the grass, almost as though he'd, he'd hit it with the flat stick. And now he's about, oh, about 120 yards out from the green on the down slope, looking to uh, fly this over the water. A couple of skips, stick on the uh, backspin, and he's gone right at the pin with this one. Absolutely beautiful. Oh, but some really fierce backspin, and this could go in the water. Listen to the crowd. Listen to the crowd. Can it put on the brakes in time? No, it hasn't. It's gone for a swim with the Terrapins, who are all under the water as the, the wind has dropped and the temperature has risen here. I can see a little, a little Terrapin face has disappeared below the surface of the water about three yards away from where Wyndham Clark's ball sunk beneath the murky depths there, Andrew McGee. Now what do you do? Do you drop it in the same place? I think you move up a little bit and try to take some of that spin off. I, I believe, again, that was a, a tee shot problem there. He got behind the left trees and didn't, couldn't punch it down the fairway much further than he did. He is walking closer, um, keeping that point between him and the hole. He is always oh, calling through an official now to make sure he's doing the right thing because that's what you do these days. The rules are ever changing and Wyndham Clark needs some consultation. No, maybe he's pushing the guy he was starting to walk out or is Hoblin going to play from the way back right of the green here. And it was a really interesting second shot from Victor Hovland as well. He was right at the top of the hill, hadn't got much distance with the drive. I wonder if that was a, a choice from Hovland. He was down the left-hand side as well, but he gave it a mighty lash with whatever it was he hit. From, he was so far away we couldn't see him through the trees. And the ball came out really long and low and flew through the back of the green. He's almost up against the, uh, the grandstand that's over the far side of the green, just below that big white leaf leaderboard uh, over the far side of the 15th green and he's in he's in a big square of shade that's cast by the green tv tower standing in his dark trousers that dark t-shirt with the big splash of pink azalea across the chest and Hovland is about to play so he's just got a little bump and run here into the slope the upslope of the green now catching that down slope as it tracks towards the pin and that is a Lovely. devilishly difficult shot and it is getting better and better and better and the crowd showing their appreciation for that listen to the applause for Victor Hovland and that was lovely as That's you kept saying so nervy to come in low like that I'm thinking I'm gonna go up high and try to spin it and fly it on the green and hopefully it stops before it goes in the water and he's hit this just kind of touch this young Norwegian has with the low runner beautiful shot below the hole for birdie from eight feet coming up Wyndham Clark consulting now he's looking at 
Oh, he's walked all the way down here near the drop zone. He's in the drop zone. He's, is he going to go drop zone? Yeah, he's standing in the black circle beneath the pine tree that's uh, smattered yep. with uh, pine straw. And he's calling his, his caddy over. He's going to go for the drop zone. Uh, that's because he doesn't want to spin it back in the water again. Because <laughs> this is going to take the spin off the ball, getting this close to the green. But this is no easy shot coming is up he still talk? Is he still talking, Kat? Who, Andrew McGee? No, no, no. <laughs> He's still talking. <laughs> He's still talking to the rules official. Is Clark still talking to the rules no, official? No, the oh, rules right. official is, uh, is clearing off. Because we've got Scheffler coming you in. You go to, for Scheffler. We've got Scheffler coming uh, in to I 17. Think it, well, Wyndham Clark doesn't even have a ball to play yet, well, so that's, that's why he's beckoning his caddy mm, over. Always a problem, that, in golf. <laughs> yeah. uh, Scotty Scheffler does. It's it's at his feet. He's standing tall over it. He's in the middle of the 17th fairway. Of course he is. He's six under par for the Masters. One shot off the lead held by Bryson DeChambeau. It's on its way to the 17th grade. Green, and it has landed short right of the flag, but it's in a beautiful spot. 12 feet, that's the Fitzpatrick putt. We is, saw, yeah. saw him leave a couple of feet short moments or so ago, but it is just tee to fairway, fairway to green. Give yourself the birdie chances, knock him in, don't drop any shots. Scotty Scheffler, is, um, he's, he's just turned up and playing brilliantly again. Well, that's it, that not, a, not a drop shot, as, as we said earlier. You know, he parred the first, birded the second, he birded the sixth, he then birded 12, he birded 13, he birded 15, he birded 16, and he has serenely plotted his way around this golf course with the swirling breeze at different points of the course, and it is a stiff breeze here on 17. That woman's keeping her hat on her head again with that with that right hand. It, it could go at any minute. She needs some earmuffs to hold that. That was amazing. I saw that earlier on today. But the other thing, and the point you just made to me, Mark, off air, there's no one here watching this because they're all watching Tiger Woods. Scotty Sheffield world number one hot favorite for the masters playing alongside rory mcelroy the grandstand's half empty and this is mcelroy yeah mcelroy shot on its way oh that comes skedaddling through the left hand side of the green and that ball disappears from our view that will have actually gone beyond the ropes in amongst the legs of the spectators no, it's stopped short of that it's stopped short of the, the rope and it's not where the spectators are but he's you know roughly from this side of the green to where Zalatoris was on the other side of the green away from the flag yeah and it's, it's that really difficult chip we keep describing so that really steep slope uh, in front of him very little green to work with because the flag is the pin is cut right at the back of this green so it's going to be fun to watch Rory McIlroy attempt this he's fought back well after a difficult start today two under par for the Masters at the moment but that is going to be a real challenge for him and it's the difference isn't it Scheffler is causing himself no stress because he's not putting himself in difficult spots that that kind of shot to try and get up and down from there I I think, I mean, even for a golfer of McElroy's calibre, Mark, that, that is probably a one in ten, two in ten chance. That's really going to test him here. With it also blowing a hooli, as we were saying earlier. Let's find out if Wyndham Clark has been given a ball. He has. He's had his ball and he's hit it. And that was a fourth shot for Wyndham Clark after going in the water. So the penalty drop into the drop zone. And he's put himself a good 25 feet or so past the hole to Good's save his par. Putting for bogey. He's putting for bogey. He was in and three, out and four, hitting five. Now putting for six. Yeah, because he had to hit that flat shot out of the trees, yes. didn't he? So I've lost track of the, the, the shots that Wyndham Clark has hit on this par five. Uh, that is uh, an eagle up opportunity for for Cam Smith just coming up a couple of feet short, but it'll be a birdie for the former Open champion. He'll move into the red figures at one under par. But what I'm really interested in is how Wyndham Clark deals with this because he's playing in his first ever Masters. He's tackling Augusta National for the first time and he's finding himself in a spot of bother for the first time. Well, he's tackling his demons, which we've all seen the Netflix show where he's now seeing a psychologist and he was totally adamant about not seeing a psychologist and he ended up doing it. It's really helped his mental game and he is staying calm. He knows this is not the end of the world. It's the first round. Even if he makes a double here, it'll still be even par with a chance for birdie on 16. So the bogey part is about 25 feet and it's from that higher side of the hole coming back down towards the water into the wind. So help a little bit there to, to save it from the murky depths into which his first ball fell. But uh, Wyndham Clark just standing over this bogey part now. Can he limit the damage here on the 15th to just the one drop shot on towards the hole now it's a really good effort but no it's going to be two drop shots for Wyndham Clark on the 15th and the US Open champion is back to level par seven off the lead mark 
a big shot for Rory here on 70. Almost an impossible shot for an ordinary golfer. Rory McIlroy is not an ordinary golfer. Bumps it into the slope, hits the back of the green, but goes speeding past the left-hand edge of the hole. It's so, so difficult, that shot, to stop it anywhere near the flag, and it rolls on and on and on towards the front right portion of the green. So I would say that's maybe 18 feet or so for McIlroy to try and save his pass. Scotty Scheffler from 12 feet has a birdie putt to come to get himself into a share of the lead alongside Bryson DeChambeau. And as soon as McElroy saw that ball end up there, he knew how difficult it was going to be. It's, it's trying to hit that shot into the slope to kill the bounce, to then sort of trickle the ball onto the green and cosy it up to the hole. It, it is so difficult. Meanwhile, Scotty Scheffler just lines up his putt a little bit, waggles his knees, waggles his putter, just stands there, a man at peace, crosses his legs, leans on his putter, uh, and watches his two playing partners in Xander Schauffele and Rory McIlroy who will both have to go again before it is the world number one's turn. And still 10 deep away to our right hand side, perfect view here of where well, it's got to be, I mean we can't see Tiger Woods but that is, I'm sure that is Tiger Woods in amongst that absolute scrum, thousands, hundreds and thousands well not hundreds and thousands but looks like hundreds and thousands, like sprinkles you put on the old ice cream or the custard all sprinkled around multicoloured uh, around the 8th tee. We're looking at the action on the 17th green. Xander Schauffele is level par for his round today. This this is, I mean, they're all tricky on this green. This is a long, long 35-footer from the left-hand side of the green, and he's going through the putting routine, and he looks like he's going to give it a real biff, and I think you've got to from this side of the green. Relatively short man, Xander Schauffele, and the tall yellow flagstick with that bright yellow flag, the map of the USA, and the flag plonked in the uh, position of Georgia on the map. is being tugged furiously uh, at the moment. He was about to step up to the putt and hit it. He stepped back again. He's gone for three or four more practice strokes. And I think it's that thing, Mark, of trying to tell yourself, I've got to hit this, I've got to hit this. Then your brain's saying, this looks really quick. Surely I don't have to hit it as far hard as this. So let's see if he gives it enough. Shoffley looks like he has given enough. Looks really good. Turning from left to right. Fabulous. But, oh, it might drop in on the very last roll. No, it doesn't. It cruelly just parks itself right on the edge of the hole. All those practice strokes worth it. Fabulous putt. And he's, he's, he's made a really good two-putt par to keep himself at level par. It's probably the best putt we've seen here, isn't it? Yeah, Ben Arn. Ben Arn from, from, from exactly the same position actually lipped out from about that range, right-hand edge of the hole. But that one was going a little bit quicker. Shoffley's one there was just about to die and topple into the hole. Right, Mr. McElroy, what have you got for us here? Missed the fairway to the left of the 17th. He's currently two under par for the Masters, so five shots off the lead. And knowing the charges he can make around this golf course, absolutely by no means out of it. But Scotty Scheffler, who he's playing alongside, currently at six under par with a 12-foot birdie putt to come, is really showing him how it's done. So I'd say about 18 feet here for McElroy from the right-hand edge of the 17th green, taking his time, going through the familiar routine, stands directly behind the ball, about three or four yards behind it, couple of practice strokes. He's not been taking too long over these. White shirt just being tugged by the breeze, tightly tucked into the lilac trousers. McElroy has two looks at the hole. Putter head goes back, sends it on its way. Has he given it enough? Everyone has been fooled by that. They do not give it enough. That putt from the right towards the pin, drop shot for McElroy, so he will go back to one under par. And now Scotty Scheffler's turn to, to take centre stage. And also the other thing now there, Mark, he's seen the McElroy putt pretty much on a similar line, seen that he didn't quite give it enough. And you, I've, just got a I've just got a feeling he's going to learn from that and just say, bonk, thank you very much. Let's have another birdie. Just before he hits the putt, what news of Zalatoris, Ian? He is finished with a bogey, so a bogey, bogey finish, and he's signing for a two under par 70, Ali. OK, thank you. Scotty Scheffler, I'm just checking the numbers on the leaderboard. Birdied the 15th, birdied the 16th to get to six under par. This for a third consecutive birdie to get himself into a share of the lead. Golf seems a very easy game for this man at the moment. Tall figure, shadow stretches out long in front of him, settles himself over the putt, 12 footer, little bit of right to left across the 17th green, sure strike from Scheffler, but doesn't give it enough. And he's made exactly the same mistake. He's human, but it's a nice, cozy, comfortable par, and he stays at six under par, one shot off the lead with a hole to play. 
Uh, let's go back to uh, Kat and Andrew. We've had all three tee shots on the par 3 16th for uh, Victor Hovland, for Wyndham Clark and for Cam Smith. Uh, the best of them is Victor Hovland into within six feet of the pin or so. Cam Smith about ten feet. But Wyndham Clark with a bit of a miscue, Andrew. Yeah, I think that's what happens when you make a double bogey the hole before. You just, you, your mind's just not right. And he's he's hit his eight iron to, you know, 40 feet right of this hole, which is a really, really difficult, fast putt coming down that hill. So he needs to grind this out to finish this round. But, uh, yeah, he had something going early. His head is down. I can see him walking at the last person walking along the banks of this big black pond to the left here. Yeah, he needs to gather himself and get ready to go tomorrow. I don't know if it's a bad omen for Victor Hovland, Mark, but as he was lining up his birdie putt on the 15th green, which he did miss, he had to just settle for a par on the 15th, his name blew off the leaderboard in a, in a swirl of wind and disappeared out of view, which just I just thought was a really bad piece of luck for him. And, uh, yeah, we, we, we lost Victor Hovland's name for a while. He's walking down the 16th now. He's got a big bag of snacks in his hand and he's looking as, as genial as he always is. Well, just... Just coming on to our leaderboard is uh, Max Homer, who is two under having gone through seven. And I, the only reason I mention that is because if you looked at the Five Live Sports social feeds, Max Homer is the pick of Trish Johnson, I think, to win this year's Masters. That's right, Ian, isn't it? Did she pick Max Homer? Uh, I think she did, yes. Yeah, yeah. so, um, yeah. And, and uh, someone who, who hasn't punched his weight in the majors, um, really, for the other success that he's enjoyed in his career. Very, very good in the Ryder Cup. First major since the Ryder Cup. So maybe this is the time for, for Homer to start making an impression. Should tell you that um, Tyrrell Hatton has got to two under par. Matt Fitzpatrick has played his second shot into the the 18th he's at two under par but he's gone way way through the back of the green and I'm watching now as Scotty Scheffler fires his tee shot on 18 and it's up into the bunker down the left hand side Sandy Lyle's bunker the first one down that left hand side so into the sand for Scotty Scheffler who's currently at six under par and needing a birdie at the last to match the opening round of Bryson DeChambeau our leader round in 65 at seven under par do you know, of, I'm just sorry. Gonna just, Go on, just yes. let you give you a couple of other notables because uh, Ludwig Aubert has got into the red figures. He's at one under par. John Rahm's got a chance of birdie on 18. He's played up into the heart of the green. And Tiger Woods and Tommy Fleetwood, they're all at level par. Shane Lowry is at one over par. Uh, Tommy was the one I was going to mention, actually. So he's level through how many? Because they're five. The, uh, through five. Five so. straight pars to start. And in fact, I can see him now on one of my screens playing his tee shot into the sixth and finding the heart of the green but uh, with a long birdie putt so, to come from there. So what do we think of them? Five past six and the final group are on the fifth. Um, Tiger's just gone, just on the eighth tee. Has he, has he gone down eight? Yeah, I don't Tiger think he's gone down. Is, nobody's, yeah, nobody's moved. Yeah, yeah. Um, so he's on eight. So well, what would, will Tiger get around Amen Corner? Probably you would have yes. thought. What have we got yeah, another 90 so. minutes? Yeah, I think Sunset is around 7:57 local time, so they'll push it as close to that as they can. I would have thought. Um, so yeah, it should get round Amen Corner uh, definitely. Tiger Woods, I which think, so. which means John Murray and Trish Johnson, your work is not done. We were having a similar conversation, and and Why we were you trying to knock off early. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're, no, we reckon Trish and I that um, the, 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 the groups will just about get through here, won't they, today? Yeah, reckon just, uh, yeah, should just make it through 11. And whether or not you want to hit your t shirt on 12 in the dark, I'm not so sure. But there again, would you want to hit it first thing tomorrow morning? But. Uh, I'd rather be able to see, to be fair. Uh, that's a very good point, Trey. Good one. And um, we, we've had a number of groups, uh, Mark, who've come through Amen Corner in front of us here. N no one really doing anything spectacular. And, and right now, just watching Justin Rose, who, uh, who left a par put on the 11th from round about 12 feet, just short. So a drop shot for Justin Rose, runner up twice here at the Masters, but he is three over as he stands on the on the 12th tee uh, right now. How where, are your crowds at the moment? Uh, thin. Mm. Yeah, pretty thin. The odd hat blowing off here as well. 
Um, but, uh, but, but I mean, it's quite unusual, isn't it, for us to be sitting here at, at this time because of the delay well, this yeah. morning watching the, uh, the, 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 the players of the standard I'm, that we are. Yeah, I mean, look, we often talk about we often talk about this. Big names go out the last couple of groups always at the Masters, and every year we, we, we still seem to get surprised by the fact that nobody seems to watch the last couple of groups, and there have been some big names in those final groups over the years here at the Masters, but all the crowds, all the crowds at the moment are just following Tiger, who is on the eight, and the rest the rest of them are, are carrying minimal crowds with them because Tiger is out on the course, Ian. Matt Fitzpatrick chipping at the back of the 18th and that's just slightly clumsy. It's taken the slope and it's just trundled down and he's got a real tester now. Probably 18, 20 feet up the hill, borrowing from left to right to avoid a bogey bogey finish. Such a promising round for Fitzpatrick. Four under after 13 holes. It looks very much as though he may have to settle for a one under par 71. So real frustration for him there. Uh, of course, John Rahm is on that 18th green as well, and I've got sight of him just missing with his birdie attempt. So the defending champion is just going to knock this in from just a couple of inches. There we go. It's a par to finish for John Rahm, and that is not a par. In fact, it's a bogey, a bogey, bogey finish for him as well. So the Spaniard won over par 73 today at the start of his defense of the green jacket, and he folds his arms and he shakes his head and he mutters to himself and it's pretty, pretty hostile words, I think. <laughs> are you, are you, it, I mean, after you interviewed him, I know there was the discussion about how amazing his English is and which is, you know, Spanish is his first language, but he is, I mean, he is fluent in English. Are, are those words in Spanish or English? Uh, difficult to say. I'm just judging by the body language. Okay. And the way that he's uh, the way that he was uh, admonishing himself for what uh, what was I mean Andrew called it sloppy uh, his golf I and mean, it's just a really inconsistent scorecard and it's not the kind of golf that we would come to uh, associate with John Rahm and if he doesn't win this week then that's over a year since his last victory when you think how dominant he was at this time last year. Oh, yeah. It's and interesting. Despite double bogey in the first last year, his opening round was a 65. Mm. And today, his opening round is a 73. News of Victor Hovland's birdie on 16. Cat. Julie sunk for the Norwegian, so Victor Hovland uh, heads to the 17th at uh, one under par, two under par, I should say, after that uh, birdie on the 16th, and uh, off he goes, two holes left to play. It's tied for seventh last year, Victor Hovland, so he has some pedigree around this course. Could he be uh, someone to sneak up on Bryson DeChambeau over the next uh, three days? But uh, off he goes to the 17th with a birdie in his back pocket at two under par. Andrew McGee, should we be surprised by John Rahm, 73? He, he just didn't have it. I mean, his face, he didn't, he didn't look like he was really into it. I mean, maybe he's got 450 million reasons why he's not into it, but um, <laughs> he, he just looked almost disinterested a little bit or waiting or being patient or whatever they want to call it. Um, but he didn't drive it well. He was in the right. He was in the right trees quite often, and so he's over overcutting the shots. And because uh, he's a pretty hard fader, a hard slicer, that, that's how he plays. So um, yeah, I'm I'm not inspired at all by John Rahm today. How's Fitzpatrick going to close out, Ian? Here he is. This is for a bogey from three feet, and he knocks it into the middle of the cut. Came up short with his par attempt. It's a bogey, bogey finish. Indeed, three drop shots in his last five holes after hitting that high point at the 13th of being four under par. It's a one under par, 71 for Matt Fitzpatrick. Patience is going to be the order of the day, but that is going to be difficult to maintain for these players who lie in the wake, in particular of Scotty Scheffler. Yes, Bryson DeChambeau is a major winner, and he is one shot better off as it stands from Scheffler, but Scheffler's commanding position here is going to potentially apply an awful lot of scoreboard pressure from the off here, and players who are trying to play that patient game are going to really have to stick to their, their guns on that and it won't be easy. Here is Scheffler now he's uh, in the bunker on the 18th, second shot here on the par 4, up the hill fires away high trajectory 
looking to find the putting surface and just finds the very front of the green and the ball is just tiptoeing backwards and he's looking alarmed as that's not going to tiptoe off the green he's saying and he watches and he goes no it's not it's stopped and i think it has stopped and if it has stopped then he has got a putt of well 23 of the 24 yards that uh, that flag is cut onto the green and the flag is absolutely whistling in the wind. Rory McIlroy's also driven into the sand, but he's in the next bunker along, the second of those bunkers. And McIlroy needs to make sure he makes no mistake on this uh, 18th. This is his second shot. The shadows of the trees just playing in the... It's not a breeze, it's a wind in front of him. He's oblivious to that. He's hitting from the brilliant white sand. This one's on a left-hand trajectory and he wants it to sit because it bounds off the very firm putting surface, careers into a couple of spectators sitting in the front row behind the green and bouncing back into the moan area and they did him a huge favour there. So through the back of the green, McElroy needs to get up and down to post a under par round of 71. The, it probably, Ian, highlights the conditions out here over the last hour, particularly for those coming down 17 and 18. But we've, we've seen several of them who might have thought they could have got within maybe two, three of Deschambeau or Scheffler. You know, I'm thinking Fitzpatrick, I'm thinking Zalatoris, I'm thinking um, Rahm, really. I'm thinking McElroy uh, as well, who it, it, it probably highlights one, how difficult 17 and 18 are playing in the wind. Secondly, just how imperious Scotty Scheffler is. Absolutely, because he is, he is able to get through these very, very difficult conditions while everyone else is really struggling with their distance control. The wind is, is obviously fluctuating, but it, to, to my eyes, what I'm seeing here, it is blowing harder and harder as this day goes on. So those who teed off earlier certainly got a big, big break, and it's a real battle for those out on the course. Uh, Kat and Andrew, what have you got where you are at the moment? Very little at the moment. We've just been plunged into the shade as well. The sun has sunk behind that big bank of magnolias and pine trees along the left-hand edge of uh, the 16th. And all of a sudden, the sunshine has been switched off. It's been baking the back of my neck for the last a few hours. And the 16th now completely in the shade. Long shadows cast over the green on the 15th. The pin hanging absolutely limp as we uh, look up the... the the fairway and the back up into the sunshine, back out into the brightness to see uh, Camillo Viegas and Denny McCarthy and Cam Davis appearing at, at the top of the hill. So another lull, if you like. Our, our grandstand What's, is um, emptying out at the moment. Lots and lots of empty green seats as we await the next tranche of those box office names of Tiger Woods, Adam Scott, Brian Harmon, Jordan Spieth all coming later on in the day. Ask him for a friend who may have Denny McCarthy in a sweepstake. What, what's he on at the moment? Uh, he's one over par at the moment, Danny right. McCarthy. Yeah. Could, so, you know, if you not, could just not get a message it. to him from my, that same friend to get a wriggle on, that would We'll help. give him a whisper when he reaches Thanks. the 15th. Just to say, Mark, the players have arrived at the uh, 18th and someone who is in the prox near proximity to those players, Scheffler and McElroy, is Tyrrell Hatton because he's on the ninth green. He's just hit a wonderful approach in there. Should make his birdie and that would take the Englishman to three under par so he's going along very very nicely and hugely significant these majors for Hatton now that he's on the live tour and it's the only route to the world ranking points that he needs to ensure his major status for next year so Hatton going nicely we're concentrating on 18 here we don't have a shot imminent okay well so. we have shots coming into the 17th green myself and Ali and we are bathed in sunshine once again so we've got Wyndham Clark who's level Cam Smith who's one under and Victor Hovland who is two under just quickly on the sweepstakes was Denny McCarthy the name that came out of the bottom of Andrew Cotter's pocket that you weren't very happy about uh, no, I think that was, I, I mean, no, I mean, there were, there were several imperfections with the sweepstake, <laughs> but uh, Denny McCarthy actually picked out of the right receptacle. Uh, it was one of the others that came out of Andrew Cotter's pocket. Yeah, says the man who's got John Rahm and, and Brooks Kepka in the sweep. Let's well, not doing me much good at the moment, but anyway. <laughs> uh, oh, here's Ian. Sorry, we do have a shot now. And it's from the world number one and the favourite 
and the wind is just tugging away at his grey shirt. Bearded figure, tall figure, Scotty Scheffler beneath the white cap now addresses the ball. The lone leaf just blows across the green right onto his line and so he backs off and then he comes back forward and addresses the ball. Long, long putt, 75 feet here. The flag fluttering animatedly. Brilliant yellow, as they always are at Augusta as the ball climbs up the hill, up towards the flag, beautifully judged for pace, left out to the right. Little tester to finish to make sure of a 66 for Scheffler. He's got four and a half feet after that putt for birdie from the very front edge of the putting surface. Well, back on the 17th, Cam Smith uh, has a few problems. Open champion a couple of years ago when he pipped Rory McIlroy at St Andrews. One under par uh, for his third Masters appearance here. No, in fact, he's... Is that right or wrong? I don't, you're going to have to look that up now, Mark. But I do know... No, he's, he's played in more than that, but he's had, he's had a couple of top five finishes. He's missed the green to the left-hand side, having gone way right with the driver uh, off the 17th tee. Ian, back to you. Rory McIlroy just flicking a couple of rogue leaves away from the ball that sits beyond the green here. And he is chipping from well off the putting surface. Looks to have made good contact. The ball very controlled. Comes up towards the hole side. Beautiful stuff from McIlroy. And he'll be able to tap in and make sure that he goes into the second round in the red numbers. Part of his game that is so seriously underestimated, but he has wonderful touch around the greens, and we saw it there with a magnificent chip. Right, we got our facts straight on Cam Smith, the Australian, yeah. <laughs> who is now marching onto the 17th green, who's finished second, third, and fifth at the Masters. He is always a form horse here, very recognisable with the long mullet, long straggly hair poking out of the back of the white baseball cap. A horseshoe of spectators had to form around him away to the right-hand side side of that 17th fairway there was no way he could actually get the ball onto the green couldn't even sort of fade it slice it hard enough to to bend it from uh, from from left to right to get it onto the 17th green so he's got an interesting pitch shot here uh, from the left of the green because he's got to he's got to flop it over uh, the bunker that guards the front left of the green got plenty of green to work with then to work it up towards the hole victor hovland the norwegian two under par four under at the turn has dropped a couple of shots on the back nine he's got a little bump and run pitch shot for for him not always the uh, the greatest strength of his game, a challenging one from behind the green away to the left-hand side. And Wyndham Clark, US Open champion, we heard his troubles on the par 5, 15th level par, his ball safely on the putting surface. So Cam Smith first to go, hair fluttering in the breeze, slowly pulls the club head back, bounces it once, twice, three times, and it skids to a halt. A couple of feet beyond the hole, glorious skills from Cam Smith. So I'd say about a three-footer for par for Smith to stay at one under par. Let's see what Hovland can do with this. Very lofted club face here from Hovland. Jet black trousers, jet black back uh, to the polo shirt. But as he turns towards us after he's just gone up and had a look at the putting surface, you'll see uh, on the front of that a real sort of splash of orange-pink on the front of the polo shirt. Twizzles the, uh, the club a couple of times in his hand and goes marching back back down to the bottom of the slope, just to the left of this 17th green, DeChambeau, seven under, Scotty Scheffler, closest challenger, great first round, opening round of the Masters from Scotty Scheffler, Ian Carter waiting for us, watching the action, Victor Hovland uh, about to play here, Hovland just settles over this third shot, back of the 17th green, waggles the club a couple of times, looks again towards the hole, on its way towards the hole, beyond the hole, and he's going to leave himself a good 10 feet. Ian. Scotty Scheffler knocks it in for his par, almost with nonchalance, but it was a tester. It was from four and a half feet. The cap comes from his head, revealing that dark shock of hair. He shakes hands with Xander Schofle, and what a brilliant, brilliant start to his quest for a second Masters green jacket. A six under par, 66 for Scotty Scheffler. And it's a one under par, 71 for Rory McIlroy. He shakes hands with his playing partners. A frustrating day for McIlroy. Three bogeys in there, four birdies, and a 71 for him. But really, 
the danger man is the man that we identified way, way out. The winner of the Players' Championship, the winner at Bay Hill, the undisputed world number one. That was a 66 that could have been a lot lower because he created so many opportunities, Scotty Scheffler. He took his fair share, no drop shots, six birdies, 66, and within a shot of the lead as he lopes off to the recorder's hut with a very, very contented look on his face. Um, it couldn't have gone much better for him, could it, really? No, I mean, that's just absolutely perfect. No drop yeah. shot. No drop shots, uh, stress-free golf all the way round, and just doing what he has done basically throughout the golfing year so far, and that is make the game look ridiculously easy. And his record this year then, tournament-wise, of, of what he's won? Well, he's won the Players' Championship, which is the biggest title to date so far. Uh, he has uh, won at Bay Hill, which was the, um, was the, the toughest golf yeah. setup of the year so far. So, the, you know, those are two massive titles that he's had. He very nearly won in Houston, where he was finished in a tie for second place, uh, as well as a, a, a string of high finishes. The Phoenix Open, he was third. The Pe Pebble Beach Pro-Am, he was sixth. Fifth at the, the Century, which was the first tournament of the year. That off the back of winning the uh, Hero World Challenge in Bermuda at the end of last year. I mean, he is just such a dominant figure right now. And, um, you know, it's everything is trending towards a second green jacket. Because he just doesn't seem to have an off week, does he? I mean, it, you know, if he's not winning it, well, he's but, there or thereabouts. Um, we've talked about this a lot on the on the chipping forecast with Eddie Pepperell and, and Andrew Cotter. And, and basically the mantra that we find ourselves saying every week on the podcast is, if he putts well, he he wins by a mile. If he puts average, he wins, but he might have to just sweat a little bit. And if his putting is right off, then that offers the chance to, to the rest of the, the field. And that is the one area of his game that isn't a, quite the elite standard that the rest of his game is. And it's almost exposed because the quality of the ball striking creates so many birdie opportunities that you think, oh, if only this guy could putt. Well, that's a very kind of naive way of looking at the package, the golfing package that is Scotty Scheffler. And if you think back to players like Colin Montgomery and Lee Westwood, who were always known for hitting fairways and greens and you always said oh their putting just lets them down a little bit well elevate that a little further in terms of the class of everything and then you arrive at Scotty Scheffler and if he puts half decent over the next three days you know I hate writing off tournaments very very early on and let's face it there is a man ahead of him on the leaderboard already who is a major winner but, but I can't help feeling inside you know that he could win this by a distance given the evidence of what we've seen today and what we've seen in the season so far. Well, another one of the chasing back pack has fallen back. Victor Hovland stopped, stomped off 17. Not the first, won't be the last to bogey it. Yeah, missed the green to the back of the green, back left, left himself 10 foot with the chip, left the putt short. They all have, so that was a bogey five for Hovland. Drops back from two under to one under par. Entertaining par, though, from Cam Smith. Sprayed the driver way right of the fairway. Came out from that sort of um, screen of trees away to the right-hand side, flopped the chip shot over the bunker, skidded it to a halt, knocked in a two-footer for a par. Very entertaining. So Cam Smith uh, remains at one under par. Wyndham Clark, with his par, uh, stays at level par. I think you and me may be the only ones left in this grandstand within half an hour's time. Uh, Kat, how many are around you? I can, well, probably count them on uh, my two hands and Andrew McGee's two hands. We could probably, uh, yeah, they're all enjoying a bit of an evening drink and there's a real kind of evening golf feel to it down here on the 15th. Golden light bathing the fairways, these long shadows, the wind just beginning to pick up, the trees beginning to dance in the breeze once again. And, and Cam Davis, I'm just looking at the Australian here. He, we haven't talked about him very much today but he's been ticking along nicely two under par and he had a really good chance of an eagle here having put his second shot right on the front edge of the green here at the par 5 15th he's cozied his eagle putt up to the hole to within a couple of feet so he will have a birdie putt coming up very shortly to move to three under par so within five of the lead of Bryson DeChambeau but it's getting well it's as nippy as it has in the last kind of five hours or so yeah. hasn't it Andrew McGee the, the wind has dropped there's, there's 
ripples fanning now across the, the surface of the lakes. The sun just about peeking through the topmost branches of the trees to kind of light up the fairways, but it feels like it's time for a sundowner. Yes, that sounds about right. And the clouds are looking back behind us. They're kind of picking up. I know it's supposed to be windy all evening and into tomorrow and all afternoon. So we can expect the same kind of blustery conditions tomorrow, which is which is good for the chasers. You know, they want a, a tough day to maybe slow down some of these leaders. I don't know how you slow Scotty Scheffler down. I have no idea how you do that. Cam Davis will be amongst those chasers. The Australian, the 29-year-old from Sydney, just sliding in that uh, birdie putt from about three feet. So he moves to three under par as he heads to the 16th with three holes left to play. But uh, I'm just eyeing up one of those. Are they called azaleas, those pink cocktails? There's a group yes. of men yes. here, all with them in their hands. They've got those lo that lovely frosting on the outside of the glass where the ice cubes have cooled everything down in the heat. I've got my mouth around one of those, uh, Mark. Do you, uh, do, you, uh, do you talk about the temperatures? slightly dropping do you wish you'd brought those pajama bottoms out with you that you bought earlier in the in the shop here to put on over your shorts listen you've all been very rude about my new pajama bottoms but they've already been very useful today as john murray will attest as we were walking down the second there were some pink flowers on a tree and we said i wonder what i wonder what pink flowers they are I wonder what and they're what? referenced on your pajama bottoms my pajama bottoms have a picture God. of the flower of every hole on the golf course. So I was able to whip out my pyjama bottoms and look at them. They were pink dogwoods, so they've already proved incredibly useful and I, well, won't, I won't hear them sniffed at. Who, who, who would have guessed that pyjama bottoms would be They're such a factual <laughs> source of it? A yeah. useful reference tool. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so, so in terms of this sort of house we're staying in at the moment, there's, there's a set of Arsenal pyjamas, aren't there? There's now a set of Masters pyjamas. So John Murray's pyjamas, what's, what's he got this week, do you know? He's probably no, forgotten them. I, I would imagine they're, they're sort of sort of 90s, 70s flannel. <laughs> Could you not? I imagine he, he's sort of a cross between what Morecambe and Wise used to wear and Bert and Ernie. <laughs> um, let's hear from uh, from the leader, shall we? And, and one would assume that he will be uh, the overnight leader. On seven under, he has a one-shot lead from Scotty Scheffler. Here's Bryson DeChambeau. It's been a, a journey, to say the least. One that I have... Uh, thoroughly enjoyed but also it's taken a big toll on me uh, in numerous situations. I will say that I've learned a lot from it and a lot of it was things that weren't really in my control at that point in time. I won't go into it but I'm in a place now where I've figured some stuff out with my golf game, golf swing. Uh, I'm just in a comfortable place where I'm doing the same thing every single week so I feel like it's just ingraining consistently over the course of time. I'm not trying new things, I'm not doing new things, I'm just doing more of the same and I feel like that's that's really what's um, been different from the you know a couple years ago to now. Like I'm just doing the same thing every single day in and day out. I'm not trying something new to I'm trying to figure something out. Um, and that's what I feel like is just accumulated into playing some really good golf. Some really interesting stuff there from Bryson DeChambeau, which we'll pick up with Andrew McGee and Trish Johnson. But I know John Murray has a Nikolai Hoygaard birdie opportunity. Which he has hauled from two feet, uh, only two feet at the 11th. I think that's the best shot we've seen hit in here today to the 11th. And he's rolled it in. This is the Dane, uh, who you'll remember from the Ryder Cup. This is his Masters debut. He's one of Luke Donald's picks, actually, uh, for the uh, Ryder Cup in Italy. He's the one with the twin brother, Rasmus. Uh, as we as we discussed very much uh, when we were in Italy and he is having a very good debut here at the Augusta National and he's on the 12th tee now uh, and he is now um what did I say he was three under par so he's three under par what a what a what an opening 12 uh, 11 holes that is to his first masters uh, Trish Johnson alongside John Murray. Just just going back to what Bryson DeChambeau said there, I thought, you know, he's not trying anything new. He's not chasing anything. He knows where his game's at. He's doing the same thing week in, week out. You know, you go back three or four years with him, and he, and he was a fascinating interviewee, and I still say that to this day. He's one of the most fascinating sports people I've ever interviewed. But at that stage, I mean, he was trying absolutely mm. anything and everything. Yeah, he was trying everything to just have that sort of, you know, 
um, just that bit more than everybody edge. else. That's the, what yeah, he's looking edge. for, wasn't it? Absolutely, yeah. that, the edge just part. And, and actually, you know, he was hitting it, even when he first came out on tour, he was hitting it so far. Uh, he re- it was almost as though he didn't really need to do... I don't know, do you know, it was almost like he was doing it for effect more than actually um, anything else. Uh, he hit it far enough, but now he sounds... Look, he's, he's matured, hasn't he? Let's be fair, yeah. I think I think that's the whole point, especially with young golfers. They, you know, they can... It's like his, his comment here, after one round here that, you know, or in the practice round, that it's a par 68 for him. Well, <laughs> mate, not a good comment. Yeah. It's always going to come back and bite you. But now he just sounds as though he has respect for the golf course. He has respect for the tournament. Uh, he's obviously in a really good place mentally. Uh, he, his game is in a good place, and yeah, you know, if he, it's, it's great being seven under. But if I had Scheffler behind me, one shot behind me, I think I'd have a sleepless night. To be honest. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I'll come back to Scheffler in a minute. But you made the point in earlier this evening during the commentary and talking about Deschambeau is that, along with, you know, for all the noise around live, for all for all that we criticise formats and 54 holes and this, that, and the other. For for Deschambeau and for Kepka, actually, there were there were other reasons. I'm sure there were financial reasons as well. But there were other reasons as well for them to go there. And maybe the two they are the two that are benefiting because they thought that how that is structured, whatever the schedule is, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, is going to suit their bodies. Very much so. Um, both have had their injury problems, and certainly when Kepka was making the decision whether to turn his back on the PGA Tour and go with Liv, the fact that he was given a nine-figure signing-on fee, not knowing how much longer his knee could stand up to the rigours of professional golf, it was a decision that made absolute sense to him. And, of course, subsequent to moving to live he's regained his fitness he nearly won the masters and he won the US PGA last year Bryson DeChambeau a little less so but he's had as I say fitness and health issues as well and I suspect if you remember back to the time when these contracts were being handed out he was as big a name as they could get so he would have been receiving a massive massive signing on fee in the way that John Rahm has to go there as well and in the end the the money makes a, a makes a huge huge difference but when you're as talented as a Kepka as a, as a, a Deschambeau is then potentially you can make the live schedule work for you keep you fit keep you lightly run and if you have the means to be able to get yourself tuned up to to the highest level at the right time you can then be a big factor in the majors as well would you agree with that trish yeah, very much so. Yeah, I think, and, and here yeah, I have to remember as well that he, he is a major champion. It's not as though, um, you know, he's just someone that's gone to live and he, he's got that in him. And I, I think once you're a major champion in the men's game and, you know, you've won multiple tournaments anyway, it, it is a, a special feeling when you come back to a major. It's something that he's, he's always got in him. And I, I actually remember thinking when he when he went to live, he had massive hand problems, didn't he? He had a huge problem with his hand. And I, I really believe that he, both him, and Kepka, as Ian just uh, alluded to, thought that their careers really were winding down because they just wouldn't be able to keep up with the rigours and, and the work ethic that you need on the PGA Tour to keep going forward. Hoygaard's tee shot on the 12th, by the way, Golden Bell has missed the green to the left uh, by by quite a way, actually, probably 15 feet, and he's a little fortunate it didn't roll all the way back down into Ray's Creek. Just uh, as we were talking about Brooks Kepke, he bogeyed the first today and then he has parred everything since then and he's playing with Brian Harmon. They're both on our leaderboard here. Brian Harmon level par through seven. He's parred everything as well, Ian. Yes, he has. He's uh, he's just been steady Eddie all, all the way round. I'm just watching Max Homer, who's uh, making real progress and just hit a wonderful approach into the ninth. He's playing with Tiger Woods and at three under par, he's got a chance to get to four under and within three of the lead. Tyrrell Hatton at the 10th missed the green to the left, but he's played a very nice chip shot there. He's left himself an awkward one down the slope, but it's only three, four feet from the cup. He's currently at three under par, another live player, and going very, very nicely, Tyrrell Hatton. What hole, sorry, did you say Tyrrell Hatton? Ten. All right, Tyrrell Hatton's on ten, so he'll 
he probably won't finish, will he? He'll probably he'll probably be what 14, 15, maybe. Yeah, well, I would think so. Something like that. I, I mean, you've got a better idea. You can see the skies. How much more daylight do you think uh, wow. that, that we have? I mean, Alistair Bruce Ball's just licked his finger and stuck it in the air, and you've and you've come up with as an answer. I have absolutely no idea. I mean, I'm I'm not very good at. Well, You're I'm, no Thomas Schaffernacker, are you? No, I'm, no I'm, I'm, I'm terrible at judging. And even sort of pace of rounds and trying to do the maths in my head. Well, I mean, Ian, you said just before 8 o'clock, didn't you? Is that right? When, when 7.57, I believe. That's just before 8, the, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, I yeah so. but I was just trying to give you a little precision. Yeah. Because precision's You're very important clock, at, at, at Augusta. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's Look, that's I, the I, official I, time for dust. Well, it, it is still, I mean, it is still light out here and, and good daylight. I mean, there are... Is, there is plenty of blue sky. What I would say Jason is there Day's are... Jason Day's got sunglasses on. There are. Well, I keep switching between my normal glasses and my sunglasses mm. as well. I'm at that age. and the. Um, but there are some heavy clouds around, and once once they block the sun, then it does get... Obviously, it does get considerably <laughs> darker. Uh, Jack, good I reckon insight. it's about, about... Well, looking at 11 here, because these are the holes you wouldn't want to play when it gets down. I reckon you've got just about... Just over an hour. About an hour, hour and ten at max. That's about it. I think no one's going to want to play on after that. No. Not to make it fair, anyway. OK. And they're probably going ten, what, ten, ten minutes a hole, 15 minutes a hole, depending on what the hole is, I, I suppose. Uh, max Homer, just uh, you, you weren't with us earlier, but he's your pick, isn't he, Trish? He was, actually, yeah. It was a toss-up between... Um, uh, blah, 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 blah. Clark, wasn't it? Wyndham Clark and Max Homer. And I did, I think I did just... You yeah, did. Go for Max Homer. So, three yeah, he's doing all right. Three under he? through eight. Yeah, he's he's a, just birded the par five eight. He's yeah. a bit tasty, is Max Homer. Yeah, and he's on the ninth and he's surveying a birdie chance right now. It'll be Tiger Woods who will be playing first, putting first in this. And actually, I just get an observation from Trish on this with Tiger Woods because it just suddenly struck me. You know, everything about his putting stroke is so so conventional um, you know you look at Scotty Scheffler who's gone to the the mallet style putter and that's made a big difference for him when his performances on the greens were holding him back in in the year but Woods has got that traditional um, sort of ping answer style I know it's not that that make that he uses but mm. uh, he's got that but the other thing that he has is the narrow grip and so many golfers now have that thick grip on on the putter but not for Tiger Woods no and, and actually when you think over his whole career he's never changed never. that at all I can't yeah. even remember him going to an overlap you know he's never really changed his grip whatsoever but I do think funny when we were talking about him yesterday about you know could he compete could he actually get another green jacket um, the one thing we sort of maybe alluded to a bit was his his passing when you watch when he plays so little uh, mm. you know tournament golf what we have seen from him in his heyday oh. he was exceptional oh my god oh. has pulled his chip from off the left side of the 12th green wow. what a shot that was uh, chipped it up onto the putting surface rolled on rolled on hit the flag dropped in and that takes him to four under so he wow. is he has birdied 11 and 12 and the sounded, first two sound, holes it sounded like he was celebrated that by that one other person in the grandstand <laughs> with you as well <laughs> <laughs> yeah, is, that, is that the guy who's finished fixing well, the they've, well they've been rewarded for staying around because that was worth seeing so he's four under the day Sounded Sorry, Trish. like a Danish cheer to me as well, <laughs> I have to say. Uh, so Trish couldn't finish what you were saying. Well, just to say... I, I forgot what I was saying in front of the life out of me. <laughs> so, Tiger Woods has just made... We were talking about how yeah. textbook is putting. He's just made a textbook par on the ninth, putted up from around about 30 feet and taps it in. As we now turn our attention to the tenth, Tyrrell Hatton is there. Big break left to right on this par putt. And he's read it to perfection and the ball goes into the cup. So a good par save on the difficult 10th and he continues to go nicely does Tyrrell Hatton he is at three under par we await uh, the birdie putt of Max Homer which will be coming up after Jason Day has putted well, on the ninth. I was just going to bring bring in a discussion about Max Homer again there which I, I, he he is playing in in the same group as Tiger and I, and I wonder actually as it gets a little bit darker and a bit colder and we've been talking about you know the crowds are sparse on certain holes actually for Max Homer to be in that group with Tiger and all the energy and all the crowds that are going round with them that's kind of what you want Trish isn't it? 
Oh, absolutely. I think Max Homer, when he saw his saw the draw at the start of the week, he, he'd have been absolutely beside himself. He would have loved that. I mean, he's a top, top class player. He showed his metal, didn't he, coming down the stretch that last hole at the Ryder Cup mm. <clears throat> to have to take a drop where he did, which most people didn't even know he'd done and still get up and down and try to halve that match. Uh, the, the guy's just top class, everything about him. He hasn't really got a weakness at all. I think it's just a matter of time. And, and being in that environment with Tiger, I think he will thrive in that uh, under those conditions. And yeah, um, obviously, what he's got a, a birdie putt to get four under after nine holes. And it's not easy out here this afternoon. Definitely easier, in way easier conditions this morning. So if he gets in at, well, he's not going to finish, but you know, if he can get anywhere around about three or four under, I think he'd be delighted. Adrian, Adrian Moronk here on 17, who is seven over, and I would imagine he's probably not in the best of moods, really. So the three-foot putt there, was that was that for par? And just, just at the moment, he was about to pull the putter back. Uh, Grayson Murray's caddy's green cap flew off, <laughs> flew off his head, went scuttling across the green <laughs> right through Adrian Moronk's eye line. I, Ian, if you get a second, or when you get a second, I'd be yeah. really interested to know, and I, I should have been keeping a count. In fact, I, could, I probably can look at my own scoreboard, but... We've just seen this group here, Lee Hodges, Grayson Murray and Adrian Moronk, pepper the flag on the 17th. I mean, no, no approach shot was further than 10 foot yeah. away. None of them have been able to make the birdie parts. It is such a tricky green, this, wherever you put the pin. Just, it, I mean, I, I don't know if you've got how many birdies have been made I'll, on I'll, the 17th. I'll be, able, I'll be able to get that for you yeah. in, in just a moment. I have to say, Jason Day has just held out, hold out for his par. He is wearing the baggiest trousers and they are flapping like sails on, a, <laughs> on an ocean-going yacht. And, and they are a real threat. You remember when Tiger Woods was in his pomp and he always wore those baggy trousers? They're, they're, they're from that era. You, you wait until you see them down at Amen Corner. Anyway, here's Homer for his birdie. Sends it forward, judged beautifully. Dead weight, the ball disappears. Homer makes his move. He goes to four under par, into a share of third, and within three shots of the lead. So we've got Homer on four under, and we have Hoygaard on four under as well, who will be coming down third. 13 shortly. What have you got in front of you at the moment, John? Uh, we've, we've got uh, Patrick Reed, former champion, one under par. Uh, Kurt Kitayama, who is also one under par, and they're playing with the Korean Sungjae Im, who is three over, and he's been uh, he's been in trouble here at the uh, 11th as well. So um, we're just watching them playing the 11th. Okay. Ali, I, I can tell you only yeah. two birdies on the 17th, seventh hardest uh, hole on the course, and that's skewed somewhat, obviously, by that uh, extraordinary second shot from Patrick Cantlay yeah. for the for the eagle too. Yeah. So. Yeah, you know, no one is making birdie putts really. No. What's, the, what's the hardest hole on the course at the moment? Hardest though? hole on the course is 18. Uh, we've not had, uh, we've had one birdie on the 18th. I'll try and find out who that was for you um, in just a moment. Just one birdie there. Uh, the easiest hole on the course has been the par 5 8th, which obviously is downwind today. And there have been three eagles there and 47 birdies. Um, we have just on the... Uh... Oh, it's Danny Willett, of course, with the birdie yes. on, uh, on 18. And DeChambeau was one of the birdies here on 17. He held that brilliant yeah. putt from the back right of the green. In amongst all of this, with the, the big names that we're talking about and, and the conditions and the wind and how difficult it is, gone on to our leaderboard at the moment is an amateur, is a US amateur, Neil Shipley, who is two under, having played 14. Trish, that is that is some effort in these conditions. Yeah, we were just talking about him, actually, me and John, uh, a little while ago, uh, when he was just about to hit his tee shot into um, into 12. Uh, yeah, he's a big fella. Uh, he's uh, yeah, young lad. Um, big hair. Big, lots of hair. <laughs> Possibly could do with a short back and size. Mm, just, to, just think, just my thoughts. Um, <laughs> but what? A, yeah, good swing, good looking player, um, and you know he'll be enjoying every second of this obviously if he can get it in the clubhouse under par uh, that'll be a, a hell of a, a start to the tournament whether he can keep it going or not that's a you know very different matter but what a day for the young fella what a day and i think those flowing locks are coming into view cat 
I'm not sure he's really enjoyed his visit to the 15th for the first oh, time. He's just bogeyed it. Do, do you know what? He hit an absolute monster of a second shot. It went behind the grandstand almost on the far side of the green. So he had to drop all the, the, the fencing. He had to move the spectators out of the way. His first attempt to play from behind the grandstand landed short. So he took a, a free drop because he was too close to the grandstand for his uh, his fourth shot. He, he, he missed the birdie putt at the the par putt to save his par. So he has dropped a shot. He moves back to to one under par. But going behind the grandstand, I think he does have a bit of a problem with navigation. He's been allowed to play four practice rounds in the three months running up to the Masters to bring a friend. He decided to bring his brother Max and his college coach Jimmy Beck. They weren't allowed to play. They just had to walk alongside him, which seems a little bit mean. Anyway, they drove down Magnolia Lane. And they didn't know where to go, so they just went round and round the roundabout until someone came out and told them where to park. <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant. He's from Ohio State as well, so it might be that time of the night where we asked John to guess what, what they're called if you go to Ohio State. Uh, the... Uh, <laughs> I've got the answer to Trish that is if you need. trying to tell me. The Ohio... I thought she was going to say... Uh, uh, I was trying to lip-read what she was saying. Oh, was, oh. It looked like... Oh, Octopuses? <laughs> <laughs> Cat, the answer? The Ohio State Buckeyes. Yeah. So Not one I you mean, want to no. lip read badly. <laughs> I was going to say, you could have misread that lip, lip read in, in all sorts of different ways. So thank goodness you went with octopus. <laughs> <laughs> is he on? Be- better, is, better book eyes than book teeth, I suppose. The absolutely. The Ohio State octopuses. <laughs> is, he on six, is he on 16 then? He is on 16th. Right. He's playing alongside uh, Camillo Villegas and... Uh, and no, he's not. He's playing alongside Mike Weir and Ryo Hisatsuna, the Japanese uh, player who's also here on a uh, special invitation from Augusta. So just watching Mike Weir teeing off first and uh, Neil Shipley, as you say, this is quite a, uh, quite a rotund figure in a uh, yellow T-shirt and that long kind of, it's almost like a bob of brown hair spilling out from uh, underneath his, uh, his white cap. And... Uh, impressed you really I mean we hadn't seen the best of him have we playing down the 15th he made a bit of a hash of it well I was impressed that you used um, navigation and Shipley in the same sentence that was clever oh yeah sorry yeah, yeah didn't, very, I didn't even notice very, that very well um, if you want to play college uh, mascots you can throw me in there because I probably know most of them yeah but you know mm, I'm cheating yeah you are okay here we go here we go we got some golfers but the it's amazing usually at this time of day we have full grandstands there's green empty chairs everywhere around the 15th looking over at the 17th i can see what you're talking about mark that's i can see about seven people over in there yeah all the whole place is following one group like they used to do the tiger woods guys absolutely and ian is watching them yes and they have found uh, the fairways down the uh 10th hole and uh, are in decent shape as they make their way down there. I've, I've been quite impressed with Woods actually, one under par in these uh, conditions. Just watching Max Homer, uh, rather Victor Hovland on the 18th, he's at one under par, a round that promised more than that. He just puts up to the hole side. Wyndham Clark bogeyed the last, so his Masters debut uh, opening round ends over par, one over par 73. And just a, a quick word on Rory McElroy as well. Uh, 71 today, one under par, his first under par opening round at the Masters since 2018. Here's Hovland finishing up on the closing green and he taps in from just uh, a couple of feet and looks a little rueful as he takes the ball from the cup. A par four to finish and a one under par 71 for the Norwegian. We won't know till we hear from him, but can you anticipate what what Rory will feel after that round then? I think he'll feel a sense of frustration, but I think he'll feel a sense of, of satisfaction that he remained patient throughout because that was his game plan. And I think that's going to be a very difficult thing to maintain. He'll be playing with Scheffler again tomorrow. And Scheffler has shot a 66 with, well, basically looking like he didn't get out of second gear uh, in doing it. Whereas McElroy, it was a stressful round. He missed some good opportunities, especially that putt on 
on, on the 16th. So there'll be a mixture of frustration, but also an element of satisfaction in there, I would imagine. Let's go back to Amen Corner, because uh, a couple of men who are, who are threatening this leaderboard are coming into view for John and Trish, and that's Tyrrell Hatton and Mathieu Pavon. Yeah, and as you said that, looking to my left, suddenly from behind the television tower, I saw the figure, the unmistakable figure of Tyrrell Hatton, who has hit his approach shot, which has landed just to the right, just off the green to the right-hand side. And the hole at the 11th here today is cut right at the front left, so it's one of the tricky positions, not too far away from that big black-looking pond that is to the left of the green. And uh, Tyrrell Hatton is three under, and Mathieu Pavon, who I think has captured all of our imagination with the story that Ian's been telling about him, his Masters debut, first time he's playing in the Masters, the Frenchman, who is two under par. I'm not sure whether there is a ball on the green. Their uh, other playing partner is Keegan Bradley, the former American Ryder Cup player, and I think it is Pavon who is heading to the right, so both Pavon and Hatton. No, you think he's on the green? Yeah, he's got, well, he's got a putter in his hand. I think there he is yes so it is he so he is on the green and he will have a put of uh, probably eight feet for birdie yeah it's going to be a quick one we've seen this we've seen loads of chips I don't think we've seen anybody putt from that angle it's about yeah eight foot right to left down the hill and it is swift so they've both arrived they all three of them arrived at their balls so we'll have the shots around 11 to come Ian the tall lob lolly pines that surround so many of the holes here at the Augusta National swaying in the breeze. It's more than a breeze, it's a wind, a gusting wind that makes judgment so, so difficult. And Tiger Woods won't be able to feel pretty much any of that breeze. He's looking up now at the top of those trees, just trying to gauge the direction and the strength of the wind. 216 yards out, Lance Bennett, his caddy comes over just for one final word another mutter from Woods as he gets himself ready to play this from the right side of the fairway took a three wood off the tee propelled it 306 yards down the slope uh, a dramatic fall that wouldn't be a miss on a ski slope but here it is one of the most iconic views that you get here at Augusta National and Tiger Woods with his second shot oh he doesn't like it it's peeled off towards the right towards the bunker and it just catches the bunker and he's short-sided himself there the flag only uh, a couple of paces off the right side of the green so a very delicate difficult bunker shot to come for Tiger Woods and very very frustrated with himself John Oh, there was a real gust of wind just blew up there, Ian, as I uh, had to grab the, the papers on the desk in front of me <laughs> to make sure that didn't all fly off into uh, Amen Corner. And um, Terrell yeah. wouldn't like that, would he? <laughs> that would be the, wrong, oh be the wrong time for that to happen. <laughs> It'd be like Hugh Grant in, what was that... Um, was that Love Actually? No, it was Colin, it was Colin Firth. Colin in Firth, that yeah, film, in yes. Love Actually. Yeah. <laughs> the book. There's a, all my notes headed off into Ray's Creek. Um, but they're just waiting. Uh, Keegan Bradley and uh, Mathieu Pavon and Tyrrell Hatton for the group in front. Patrick Reed's group to play up to the 12th, which I have done now. Uh, so it'll actually be Keegan Bradley to, to play first. He is two over par. And uh, the tall figure, he's, he's allowed... Um, Tyrrell Hatton and Mathieu Pavon has just moved away to one side where, while Keegan Bradley is actually going to play. John, yep. ju just, uh, just whilst you're waiting for that, uh, just knees back down on the course, Brian Harmon's gone birdie, birdie. He's birdied eight and birdied nine. So he's now on two under the Open champion. And Brooks Kepka, who's playing with Harmon, also birdied the par five eighths to go back to level par. So those two are out there and progressing nicely. I mentioned... Patrick Reed in the group in front he, he did birdie the 11th with um, an excellent putt actually from, from 8 feet or so, so Patrick Reed another former champion, they always seem to do well, you can bet your bottom dollar that, uh, that the former champion some former champion will be up there at the top of the leaderboard, Danny Willett of course and, uh, and Patrick Reed at 2 under, so Keegan Bradley has, has really run that by, by, by quite a distance from off the 11th green. Yeah, he's just played a remarkable shot. And for some unknown reason, he's the only player we've seen that's decided to putt it from about six yards off the front of the green. And uh, he's just come up, he's just about stayed on the green the other side. It was a, it was a bit of a shocker. It'll be Tyrrell Hatton to play next uh, from just off the green, but Ian? 
Fantastic tee shot from Max Homer down the left side of the tent. So he's given himself a re really lovely flat lie for this shot from 170 odd yards in. He's tugged it to the left, front left corner, and a lengthy birdie putt to come for the American there. Homer going very nicely at four under, John. Tyrrell Hatton also taking a putter from uh, just off the green though, and he rolls it up onto the putting surface and it goes down towards the hole and keeps on going by, well, that's five feet. <laughs> Hatton. <laughs> Did he really trip over the No, I, I think he, he was he was in two minds whether to break the putter, kick the putter, or just probably well we can't see if he swore from here to be perfectly honest but I, I would he hazard did. a guess yeah there was a few expletives there he's not impressed with that he's he's run it at least six or seven feet past and uh, look at him I, I love watching Tyrrell Hatton because it's just he never stops does he he's livid <laughs> waving his arms around and he's swishing the putter on the surface so he's got work to do we thought um, he's got work to do there to make his par four to remain at three under Keep hold of those notes, John. Now is not the time no, for them to the head <laughs> Tyrrell, Tyrrell yeah. Hattons. I've spent a long time on them this week. I don't want them disappearing into Ray's Creek. <laughs> uh, here on 17, we have a player in uh, red numbers uh, as well, and that's Cam Davis, who is three under the Australian, Ali. Yeah, Sydney side. He's got a bit of major championship pedigree about him. I was just sort of um, reminding myself of, of last year, USPGA Championship, part of the reason why he's here, tied fourth uh, there, three under to par for his first round today 17th green we've been talking about it all day safely on the putting surface uh, in two seemed a little bemused by the putt actually gave it enough up the middle of the green it just turned away left to right so he's left himself maybe two or three feet uh, for his par to stay at three under par playing alongside Camillo Bijegas uh, and Denny McCarthy your man in the sweepstake who actually here Mark at two over that's got a fiddly one I'd say that's seven or eight feet chipping from the right hand side of the green came up short so you 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 will have um you have a vested interest uh, in this part Denny McCarthy standing over it in various shades of grey uh, Ian Tiger Woods third shot at the par four tenth 35 feet away from the flag in the bunker so short-sighted himself We'll be looking to get this close, just nudges it out, and the ball then releases down towards the hole side. Beautifully judged by Tiger Woods, should make his par, John. Très bien, très bien from Mathieu Pavon, who's rolled in that birdie put from eight feet. So he's gone to three under now. The, uh, the Frenchman who won the Spanish Open back in October and won on the PGA Tour here in America in January at the Farmers Insurance having a, a wonderful year and uh, is now three under as Tyrrell Hatton has stepped up this from six feet which he does hold to remain at three under so both Hatton and Pavon three under yeah, fantastic putt that from Tyrrell Hatton. Very glad that went in. He always scares me if he's going to miss, to be perfectly honest. So, but Pavon, uh, I think we can count on one hand, John, the amount of players that have actually hit this green today. But to hit it, what, six foot to the right-hand side, pin high? Exceptional shot today. Yeah, they, they've said, as, um, as has been spoken about when references have been made to Mathieu Pavon, that he's the, the first Frenchman to win on the PGA Tour since the early 1900s. But in actual fact, really, I think, Ian, you would say that he is the first Frenchman to win on the modern PGA Tour, and he's having a very good Masters debut so far. He is, because um, when Arno Massey won the Open, the PGA Tour didn't even exist. Exactly so. So, <laughs> so then trying to claim it is... A it's little dis misleading. Disingenuous, disingenuous, I would suggest. I think it's an excellent yes. way to describe it. Yes. Homer from long range on the 10th comes up well short with his uh, birdie putt. And so he will have, what, four feet there to save par and remain at four under. Uh, the uh, big white scoreboard here has actually taken Brooks Kepke's name off the leaderboard, so we wait to see who is uh, about to replace him. Brian Harmon uh, stays there on two under, and his progress is incredibly steady, Ian. It is, and that birdie at the ninth was a, a real highlight, but he went seven straight pars and then birdied the par five eighth, which, as we were saying, in terms of 
in relation to par has been the easiest hole of the day. Harmon taking advantage of that. And then the putt that he made across the back of the ninth green, well, that took me all the way back to Hoylake because that was the kind of putt that he was routinely knocking in uh, in the course of his six-shot open victory. And, and, and with memories of that, given how steady he is and how he just basically, I know it's a completely different tournament and different conditions and we're going back, you know, eight, eight nine months to his open win. But given his form and how steady he is, could he hang on to Scheffler's coattails? I think it will be very difficult for him just because of the lack of length that he has. He'd be giving up so many, so many yards on, on Scheffler. Now that's something that is always a bit of a disadvantage as uh, Jason Day slots in a long range putt for birdie on the 10th. That's, that's one thing on a Lynx golf course. It's quite another on a golf course like this, which is an absolute beast at 7,600 yards. So I think it's asking a lot, but he can, when that putter gets going, he can make out, he can golf his ball, as they say. So, um, and, and emboldened by being a major champion. Yes. So you, you, you never know. And he's a Georgia boy. Um, he knows this place. So this, I'm not saying he could overhaul a Scotty Scheffler or even a Bryson DeChambeau, but I could see him posting his best masters this week but there's a confidence isn't there trish obviously that comes with being it being being a major champion and all of a sudden feeling like you belong like you deserve to be there and like you are in the set moving in the same company and the same circles as somebody like scotty scheffler yeah and also like again i'm going to reference the Ryder cup again though but someone like max homer who was in mint form you know actually asked wanted to play with brian Harmon. i think he's you know it, it's it's what the other players think of you as well that makes a huge difference and quite clearly he is very highly rated by his peers and if he keeps putting as well as we know he can you just never know it, it, but i do agree with ian i think it is a monstrous golf course and he is giving up sort of 40 odd yards it's it's tough to do that over four rounds but if the putter keeps keeps going uh, don't never say never Homer made his par, by the way. His putting stroke looks really secure on those short-range putts. Straight into the middle of the cup, so he remains at four under. Here's Tiger Woods to get up and down from the bunker. That's a really, really sensational up and down from the bunker on the right there. He'll treat it as being very, very routine, but you can't help but be impressed. And Tiger Woods remains in the red figures. He's at one under par as he heads to the 11th tee. Uh, Tyrrell Hatton's name is on that leaderboard now, three under through 11. You must be sit watching him on 12, are you in? Uh, uh, what you call John? Yeah, it's <laughs> where, whatever his name is. Yeah. Uh, yes, I am. <clears throat> Tyrrell Hatton. So it's binoculars at the ready here in these. It's just beginning. And actually, we've got a little bit of cloud cover, cover coming over as well. So I would say for the first time now, even though we've still got sunshine, you are thinking that the light is just not quite what it was. So Tyrrell Hatton, three under, bearded, bristling, all in black, sends his ball through the air towards the 12th green. Oh, and it's landed short. It's on the bank. I think it's going to roll back. It is. Groans, groans, and Tyrrell Hatton who, who did actually have a, quite a long think about that, Trish, didn't he? Because the wind was gusting around. He did step off it and he walks away and he's in discussions with his caddy. And I can almost see him gritting his teeth from here. There's actually lots of, um, the, 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 again, there's lots of gesticulating there. They're deep in discussions between them, the two of them. Yeah, I think I'm, I'm amazed he didn't back off that because just as he stood over it for a, you know, a period of time, it was a massive gust of wind. And when you see where that ball pitched, I mean, he's pitched it 30, no, 15 yards short of where he's aiming. That is just, that's a terrible decision. And I don't think you can blame your caddy for that. That's up to, you know, you can just feel it, can't you? It is just blowing one minute, it's absolutely calm. The next minute, it's a two club wind. Yeah. And he's misjudged that by two clubs. You know, as you say that, um, Trish, I'm looking at him through the binoculars and it's almost as if what you're saying is exactly what his, his body language is saying to, uh, to his caddy, uh, Pavon, now, with his tee shot and he's landed it back left. So on this, on this hourglass shaped green with the wider portions at either side, it is back left. So he will have a putt there to, uh, to get 
well, it's a, it's, a, it's a long, long outside birdie chance from the position that he's in. Yeah, it is, but it was a really impressive shot. Again, he just, he, the wind was still up and he just hit such a, a lower a lower flight shot just to make sure that it didn't get up into that wind and get it to stall. And he just, he almost hit it straight through the wind and got it to the back edge. It's really intelligent play. Yep, so the Frenchman, uh, three under, and uh, Tyrrell Hatton, you would think, will drop shot or shots here, but we'll see. Uh, five past seven here in Augusta at the moment, so five past midnight back in the UK. Should we should we do a quick leaderboard, Ian? Yes, let's do that because Bryson DeChambeau is the leader, seven under par after his 65. Scotty Scheffler is in the house and one shot worse, 66. But there is a threat out on the golf course. Nikolai Hoygaard hit a wonderful second shot from the pine needles on the 13th. That set up a two-putt birdie. He's birdied the 13th. He's at five under par. So the European Ryder Cup player from Denmark is within two shots of the lead and he's got the 15th and the 16th to come so who knows Danny Willett in the clubhouse with his 68 Max Homer going nicely he's on the 10th tee as we speak 11th tee as we speak and he is at four under par among those at three under par is Tyrrell Hatton but he's gone into the water at the par three 12th uh, players out on the course showing up nicely Mathieu Pavon we've been talking about Patrick Reed through 12 holes is at two under par Ludwig Big Aubert, eight holes in, has got it to two under par. The same mark as Brian Harmon as he plays the 10th. And Tommy Fleetwood is very quietly going about his business. His first birdie came at the 7th. He's followed it up with one at the 8th. And the Englishman is at two under par in the final group out on the course. So if, you, if we go back 90 minutes or so, a couple of hours ago, it, it felt like everybody was going to fall away, didn't it, Trish? And all, all of a sudden, there are quite a few out there who have defied what we were thinking about the conditions and have started to make moves on this opening day. Yeah, you know what? There's just been sort of an hour, isn't there? Of yeah. Just momentum, basically. I mean, it's a bit like watching a, a flipping Ryder Cup or something mm. where they're looking up and they're seeing all red numbers. Um, yeah, it's really been fantastic. And, you know, this where we are at Amen Corner, these these are not birdie holes today. And yet, we've seen, we're just looking at the board there, uh, Hoygaard has birdied uh, 11, 12 and 13. There's been a couple of players, that Fitzpatrick made a couple of birdies through them. So, mm. yeah, sometimes it's just a bit of a momentum shift and you you can feel it you know sometimes you can just feel the crowd uh, the buzz out there and, and it gets the players going um, the other, but it's great it's, it's very entertaining the other thing to say Mark is that that, that spell 6, 7 and 8 they're the 11th 12th and 18th easiest holes in terms of scoring today so you know, the, the players that I've been talking about have made progress through that spell. Uh, the seventh has yielded, you know, as I say, 12 birdies, 50 birdies on the eighth. The ninth has been gettable. And then it's kind of almost holding on to your hat, uh, in a, in a, in a, literally, but also in a metaphorical sense, down the back nine, where only the 13th and the 15th have, have been real, genuine birdie chances. Um, you're watching Tee Shots on 11, aren't you, Ian? Yes, I am. I was, but I was actually looking at those statistics, oh, okay. so I didn't see them. All right. Well, we'll... we'll but Homer, I believe, is in the pine straw of okay. the tee. So, right. well, well, we'll try and find out where those tee shots have gone. Well, whilst we do that, let's hear from a man who, who was in the clubhouse a very, very long time ago, former champion, Danny Willett, who shot a very impressive 68 today, four under making contact on the first was a was right up there you know I've not been under pressure for six months or so the last time was Wentworth so yeah I had no idea how I was going to be I was nervous uh, anxious about kind of what you know what was going to happen what you're going to shoot but um, you know I've put in a lot of hard work over the last few months now with the shoulder and the strength and getting the reps on the golf course and just lovely to get out there and, and shoot a score that's not only I mean yeah not not much more than respectable it's amazing really in, in the conditions that there are as you mentioned the Wentworth your last tournament and you were told after the operation was it 12 to 18 months maybe yeah. recovery yeah 12 to 18 and after the first few weeks I was kind of that was the plan because it you know it felt like the shoulder was going to drop off I'd never had surgery before like that you know so I didn't know but um, yeah some pretty intense rehab and, and a great team of people around me that have worked hard and yeah, just nice. This was always a freebie. You know, I was, I, w I never planned on playing this week up until about two months ago where I thought, you know what, I'm strong enough. I just need to get some golf reps in. And yeah, lo and behold, it's, it's worked out all right so far. <laughs> Danny Willett talking to Andrew Cotter. John. With Tyrrell Hatton, three under, and Mathieu Pavon, 
who is also three under. Tyrrell Hatton has taken his drop after his tee shot at the par 3 12th rolled down into the water and he set himself up with a bogey putt from probably eight feet and Pavon now for birdie. I think he's left that a little short. It was a long, long birdie putt. No, he walks around behind it. It's close enough and he's just going to brush it in, which he does now. So he remains at three under, safely through Golden Bell with a par. And, uh, and Tyrrell Hatton now, this is just to drop the one shot, Trish. Yeah, it's a massively important putt, this, just to keep the momentum. You know, if he can get away after hitting that dreadful tee shot on 12, if he can make bogey, I think it'll almost feel like a, you know, almost feel like a birdie, really. Um, it's such a difficult shot to play when you just got a little wedge shot in here as well, because the green's just, the depth of it is hardly, you can hardly see it. When you look over that front bunker, you can hardly see any landing area. Big putt, this. As here in the grandstand behind the tee, more and more people have arrived. Tiger Woods on his way, and Tyrrell Hatton has holed it. He's holed it for his bogey four. Hallelujah. <laughs> yes, so that'll make him feel a little better for the time being. But that means that Tyrrell Hatton, uh, currently the world number 19 live golfer now, he is back to two under par for the tournament. Yeah, Tiger's coming down 11 with Jason Day and Max Homer. Do, do you think he'll get to get 12 in as well, Trish, as the light starts to fade? Yeah, if they're if they're coming down 11 now, I think, they're, yeah, there's no question they'll, they'll get 12 in, which actually... Mind you, starting on 13, that's not the nicest uh, <laughs> hole to start on tomorrow morning, is it? But uh, I'd rather start there, I think, than 12. Yeah, the light's starting to fade, Andrew McGee, isn't it? Well, do so. Up from the south, um, it's definitely fading quickly from the, the clouds and the blustery conditions are continuing, continuing through the night until through tomorrow too. So let's just get ready for this again. <laughs> uh, yes, Howie. Joe Murray was trying to take the light quite early. If he's out there batting, the umpires are not taking that from him, are they? No, but he's tra he's trying he's trying to go in, isn't he? He is absolutely. I think a little, little scared of the pace coming at him. Ian, news of those tee shots on 11? Yes, uh, the tee shots on 11. Tiger Woods is in the fairway. Max Homer in the pine straw. And someone else in pine straw is Nikolai Hoygaard, who's making the big move at the moment. The Dane at five under par. And his ball leaking off the fairway on the 14th. So it'll be interesting to see if he's got a clear look at the green. Danny Willett said it there, didn't he, in that interview that when we were talking much earlier this evening that, that, that that's what it felt like with him he said it, it, it was a freebie for him exactly I think that was um, a, a, we were talking about it weren't we about when your expectations aren't there it's much easier to mm. in, in a strange way it's a, it's a, it's it's easier to surprise yourself and play really really well we've got sight now actually of um, Max Homer who's at four under par. Some really interesting quotes, by the way, which I'll give you when I can, from Rory McIlroy on Scotty Scheffler. But Homer from the pine straw down the right has just played very conservatively. I don't know if he's even come into sight for you yeah. because yeah. he's laid it up a good, good way back, probably 80 to 100 yards short of the green. Yeah, just seen it, Ian. The ball has just rolled into our sight. So you know where we sit here, which is in the grandstand, which is set well back from the 12th. T. It, it, it's immediately at a right angle to my left. So that is probably that's probably a hundred hundred yard a uh, hundred feet short of the green. Yeah, it is about a, yeah about yeah 80, 90 yards short of yeah. the green. And but you know what? Uh, that's probably left him an easier shot because this pin is straight into the teeth of the wind. This pitch shot, so you can pitch it all the way up get it to bounce once or twice and then just spin back so you'd expect him to get it within like, eight feet or so from there tiger woods at one under par is in the middle of the 11th fairway and he's just rehearsing that delivery of the club before getting himself ready almost stands to attention 209 yards out woods as he gets ready to play this second shot into the always difficult par for 11th and he's just backed off a puff of wind and those trees really swaying bending more than swaying in the wind looks very very hazardous and you think back to last year three trees came down and i'd suggest the winds weren't as strong then as they are now but woods is now back in the zone two practice swings 
gets himself ready, stands at right angles behind the ball, club in right hand, then takes the grip, settles himself down. And John, you'll see this one arrive. He's over it now. There it goes, up into the evening skies. It's heading towards the right of the green. And down here, and sure. hundreds of people are pointing at it because they can see it down just uh, behind the ropes. And it has. It's come up short, as Ian, as Ian said there. It's come up short, probably 15 yards short of the green and then rolls down to its resting place. Yeah, I mean, you can feel that wind is absolutely... I mean, it's probably about a two and a half, three club wind. So no wonder's tight. And it, the thing is, it's not constant. It is absolutely swirling. And for right now, all you want to do is avoid that water. And that is what most players are just trying to do with that front pin, left-hand pin today. The chances of Tiger getting up and down from there are very, very good because it's such a, a straightforward pitch because you're straight into the wind. So I wouldn't be surprised if he goes close with this pitch. Yeah, but the flag that is uh, that is in the hole at the front left of the 11th green is absolutely flapping away furiously now. It's totally unfurled and we can clearly see the, the map and flag logo of the Augusta National on it. But uh, it will be Max Homer who's just arriving at his ball to our left who is as we said probably a hundred yards short of uh, the green or thereabouts and as we do that here comes Tiger Woods into sight in that peach coloured shirt and those beige coloured trousers and the white cap so it'll be Max Homer playing shortly in. Fantastic second shot into the ninth for Tommy Fleetwood from the middle of the fairway all over the flag and that has come to rest maybe five feet from the cup so a real chance for Fleetwood to climb on this leaderboard and go to three under par currently at two under no drop shots for the Englishman and he's looking very very good indeed I think Homer about to play his third shot into the 11th shot. Yes, he is. He's just... The, the upper part of his body is caught in a shard of this evening sunlight here in Georgia. But now the wind really getting up and above, above and behind him I can see the tops of the trees really being tugged one direction and the other. And his approach shot lands at the front of the green. That's excellent. And then it takes a hop and checks and he's put that to eight ten feet yeah beautifully played just played it under the wind a little bit straight into the teeth of the wind knew as soon as it bounced it was just going to stop and then just just check back a tiny bit and i have to say jason's daddy's trousers are i can't remember if it was ian or chapman said but they are truly remarkable they just he's got he's got a new clothing supplier and they are <clears throat> i mean it's almost it's almost mc hammer isn't it <laughs> It's, they, are, they are voluminous. Which, which, for a golfer, is never a good name, really. <laughs> Missed cut hammer. Uh, uh, very good. And, uh, Just to let you know, John, um, Hoygaard had to play out sideways on the 14th. He was right up against uh, one of the pine trees, so in a spot of bother on 14 at 5 under. Well, the the, uh, the galleries have swelled here, but, I mean, it's still not... It's not a packed house by any means, but uh, a number of people arrived in the, in the stands. Many of them as well actually have arrived with bags of shopping from the merchandise... <laughs> various merchandise outlets a man just down in front of us has got one of the master's garden gnomes in a box that he's carrying around the course with him so um, a mixed bag <laughs> and it's Tiger Woods who is going to play from this is from 15 yards maybe a little bit more than that short of the green Woods who is one under having played in just the one event on the PGA Tour this year and he pulled out of it oh and it he sends it towards the hole and I thought it was going to roll in but it just checked and he's left that to within inches that's to within inches for his par four absolutely superb shot the way he was just practicing his, his shot there and he knew you were going to hit it in low he's going to hit it really hard checked up and I tell you what doesn't check up he's hold it fantastic shot Tiger at his very best excellent excellent work from, uh, from Tiger Woods the now 48-year-old Tiger Woods. So, um, Jason Day, it is. The Australian level par with his... He's a little bit like the old baggy trousers. Madness video. I hope he doesn't take off in his baggy trousers. Uh, Jason Day, in these blustery conditions, just has a look at it. He's also short of the green. 
and uh, just has another look at it from behind. He's in that hollow that is just down in front of the 11th green. And uh, Jason Day, who's got a very good record here at the Augusta National, but has had so many injury problems, sends it up and lands it just to the right of the hole, and it rolls and curls round behind the hole, actually, but it, that's to within a foot, 18 inches. Yeah, beautifully played, very different technique to Tiger, very sort of stiff-wristed, very little wrist in it at all, but uh, kept it a lot lower, but beautifully played. Great short game, Jason Day, just a little bit different to most players, very wooden, but, uh, yeah, he's, it's close enough. I think he's just going to tap it in, is he? Yeah, it looks like he's just going to mark it and tap it in for his four. Yes, he is, in his cream-coloured shirt. We've been talking about his trousers, but his cream-coloured shirt uh, walks around behind it. He'll waste no time over this, so this is to remain at level par. So in it goes, and uh, I think it'll be Max Homer next to play. Max Homer, very popular figure on the PGA Tour. He's just got an amiable, nice way about him, hasn't he? Yeah, he's very friendly, and he's you know he very he's very on, um, sociable. Uh, you know, he's on his social media all the time, and he's very complimentary about very complimentary about women's golf as well. Nice fellow, Max Homer. I really do like him, and he's exciting to watch as well. He's got a bit of he's got some character. That's what we want to see, isn't it? It's his fifth Masters, but I think he's you know he's reaching another level now in the game. Top point scorer in Italy at Marco Simoni. When we missed you, Trish, you would have loved it there if you'd been able to be with us. But um, he was he was one of the standard bearers for the United States. And this to remain at four under par. After that excellent approach shot, here he is. And from six feet, he holds it. It just drops in. That is well played. What a good fall that was after being in the pine straw off the tee. Do you know what was so sensible as well? Makes birdie, but gets to birdie, birdie, gets to four under par, hits it in the trouble, and he doesn't try and take on too much and, you know, hit it in more trouble, gives himself a, a chance at par and gets up and down from 100 yards. Brilliant play. And Tiger Woods, that's the applause for Tiger Woods, just rolling in there. Tiger Woods, who is attempting to, to break a record this week, yet another record at the Augusta National. If he's here at the weekend... That will be a new record for the number of consecutive cuts made. Listen to this. There are still hundreds and hundreds of people here at Amen Corner, in the stands and in front of the grandstands there, in their coloured shirts and coloured hats. And uh, they've given the acclaim to Tiger Woods as he gets up onto the 12th tee. Shall we stick with this? I presume this is what we are all yours concentrating on. Yes, let's do that. Now, Trish, do you want to just say a few words while I change my glasses and get the binoculars out? <laughs> well, yeah, so this 12th hole now is, well, for the first time, the flag actually is whipping around. It's been very... Well, it hasn't been moving, even though we know there's been a two-club wind up here. But Jason Day is just contemplating probably hoping he doesn't get blown away right I've got myself organized so I've got the binoculars now and um, looking down on Jason Day he just leans forward and uh, actually slightly stumbles as he secures his ball and tee into the ground and just looks up, and this is this is a real test, Trish, isn't it? The, these conditions now here, on this famous slice of golfing land, in the, in these conditions, such a test. It's such a difficult shot, this, and the only thing you have to make sure you do is have enough club. The front bunker is almost, that's no place to go. You cannot be short of the green. If you hit it long and you hit it long left, the chances are you're going to get the bounce to come back down. So you've got to make sure. But I think this shot requires the lower shot. Keep it under the wind. And that's not easy when you're only hitting in an eight iron. So with Tiger Woods and Max Homer standing to one side, it's the Australian, Jason Day, to play first. And, and actually something is 
something has happened that's distracted him and there's actually a leaf just blown across as well and he did look at the gallery and then another leaf has, has blown across the tee now, I think he's just he's at a loss what's going on here. The wind is just swirling all over the shop and he's just looking at his caddy just saying, well, you know, what, what number are we playing? That's the difficulty. You get a number that you're trying to hit your shot and then when you stood over it, that number changes by 20 yards and you just have to get called off it until it calms down. Now he's just looking to see whether or not... Now, because you can see that... that the flag, what, two seconds ago, yeah, yeah. it was right to left. You can see it was on the left-hand side of the hole. Now it's going the other way. So now he's just doubled. You've got to stick to your original plan, no matter what. It's only 150 yards today. It's the shortest hole on the course, but it messes with your mind. And that's actually quite a high trajectory from Jason Day as the ball sets off towards the green and it's landed left. It has landed, he's missed the green on the left-hand side. He's actually down when Nicholas Hoygaard was, and that's where he chipped in from, wasn't it, Nicholas Hoygaard? Yeah, he's a lot further left and a lot shorter than that, but the only thing he's got going for him is he's going straight up the green and he's got plenty of green to work with. And the fact is, it's dry, and that's a bonus right now. So it will be Max Holmer to play next, who is, is right in contention on this first day of this 88th Masters, on four under par, three shots behind the leader, Bryson DeChambeau. So it is the tall, bearded Max Holmer, curly hair just sticking out of the back of his cap, who sends his ball up and on towards the green right over the flag and I think that has caught the bunker <laughs> or is it just on the it is is that through the back all right so it's through oh it's, it's stuck on the yeah I must say I can't see that and it uh is the light Ian, can getting, you, can you the see the pictures getting, of that? Is the light getting worse? <laughs> I think it is. <laughs> you, you, you did remember your binoculars, didn't you, John? Yeah, I did. <laughs> yeah, uh, where, just checking. Where, um, where is it? It's between the bunker uh, and the water, and it's it stayed up. Wow. Ali's, uh, Ali's just whispered to me, I've got no chance there without my binoculars. <laughs> you have not. You've absolutely um, got no chance. I think it's probably symptomatic of the fading light, though, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Nikolai Hoygaard, by the way, is, uh, has bogeyed 14, so he's gone back to four under, and you've got news of Tommy Fleetwood. Wood, Wood's, Wood's playing now, uh, Mark, right. and his ball has gone through the green, and it has landed up in the pine straw at the back, and it has stayed up there, right? I mean, it's virtually underneath one of those bushes with the blossom. Well, actually, you had thought that had to come back down. Every time we've seen a ball go up there, it's come back down, but unfortunately for him, he didn't pitch up there. He landed it pretty much at the back of the green and then it's just rolled up there and it's... Oh, he's, I wouldn't have thought he's got too nice a lie the way that stayed up there, but you never know. That is going to be very, very tricky for Tiger Woods. So um, so none of them, none of the three, unsurprisingly, make the green. OK. Fleet, Fleetwood News, Ian? Another birdie came at the ninth. Uh, I described that magnificent uh, second shot in there, fully capitalised, knocked it in, three birdies in a row, and Fleetwood is motoring at the moment. Three under par, no drop shots, and the Englishman is in a share of sixth place. Let's hear from another man who motored all the way through the afternoon, again with no drop shots. Scotty Scheffler uh, shot a 66, six under. He's one off the lead held by Bryson DeChambeau, and here he is. Well, it's always nice getting around here bogey free. I, uh, you know, I did a good job of staying patient today. We, we, we kept the golf course in front of us and I mean, I executed some really nice, um, up and downs to keep the round going and yeah, I enjoy coming here and competing in this golf tournament and, you know, the first day is, is over and I'm off to a good start and, um, you know, going into tonight, I'll just focus on going home, getting some rest. I may, uh, go hit a few balls, but outside of that, I'm going to go get some recovery in and some dinner and then try to get some sleep. I mean, I think in, in terms of, of these tournaments, yeah, I think limiting your mistakes, I mean, obviously a lot easier said than done, but 
um, yeah, limiting your mistakes is important. It's important to kind of keep that momentum of the round going. And um, I felt like today when I was in some challenging spots on some tough holes, it did a good job of you know pitching up there nice and close. And um, yeah, it was overall it was, it was a pretty solid day. Uh, I'm very calm, Scotty Scheffler. After that, 66. Do you have those Rory McIlroy quotes you were talking about? I here? do. He said, "Scotty does such a good job if it doesn't look like it's six under par, and then at the end of the day, it is six under par. <laughs> He's just so efficient with everything. If you look at Scotty compared to the rest of the field, the amount of bogey-free rounds he plays and he shoots is phenomenal, and that's the secret to winning major championships and winning big-time golf tournaments. It's more." limiting the mistakes rather than making a ton of birdies. The players have reached their balls on 12. T uh, Tiger and John. <laughs> Max Homer is, uh, is just preparing to play from this very unusual position. At least that's my excuse. The, bo the ball has landed almost like on the front lip, the area just short of the front lip of the front bunker. And, uh, and, and from where we're looking here, it is framed against the white sand behind it. Uh, but Max Homer is just having a look at that, but it's Jason Day who is going to play first from off the left side of the green. So Jason Day, who is level par today, level par for the tournament, just pitches his ball up onto the green and it rolls across the surface towards the hole and right to the whole side. Excellent play from Jason Day, Trish Johnson. Yeah, to be honest, he hit the worst shot, but he's probably had the easiest uh, the easiest little pitch shot straight up the green from a decent lie. Tiger's got a shocker of a lie. Uh, it's, it's even worse than I thought it was originally, and I, I'm not even sure if he's going to actually be able to get straight in line with the flag because the bunker might be in the way as well, and it's on such a steep downslope in that pine straw. This is going to do really well to get within 10 feet. I'm not sure, actually, how he's going to get up there to get a stance with the with that bush and, and also the backswing. And I, I would think that will be an issue as well with the branches of the bush that's up on the steep bank. But it is Max Homer who's going to play next. Jason Day, by the way, has tapped that in. So uh, it is a par three. He will be very relieved. He'll take that after the indecision and second and third thoughts that he had on the tee. Max Homer now just chips this forward, bunker in front of him, up onto the green, it rolls up towards the back of the green and stays up there. And he's left himself a really tricky one downhill, probably, what, eight feet, maybe more? Yeah, I think it's more, to be honest, I think he's pretty unlucky there. I don't think he could get into the back of the ball. And it's such a, a he's going down downhill from his lie. He's got to get it over that bunker very quickly. And as soon as it lands on the green, it's just going to shoot forward. So he's probably got it as good as he could do. Right, now Tiger Woods steps up to the back of the green and the stance is very, very awkward. And he is standing way below the level of the ball. And, and now he's putting his right foot back up onto the 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 steep bank there but that he's not happy with that so his feet are right down below where the ball is so he's 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 clutching down the shaft of the club and then bumps it down into the area be, before the green and up it comes onto the putting surface and he has put that to within probably seven eight feet that's a brilliant shot i can't tell you how difficult that was he's got the ball about two foot outside his right foot and he's just got to make sure that he catches the ball first and doesn't get the pine stuck in between club and ball. But And to judge that and leave it where he has, I, you know, I can't tell you how good that was. Yeah. Lovely touch from the great man, the five times winner around here, the 15 times major champion. So with Jason Day able to stand away to one side, it's up to Max Homer and Tiger Woods, who've both got work to do to finish off here. This for Homer to stay at four under and for Woods, Tiger Woods, to stay at one under. And it will be Max Homer who will play first. And this put down down the slope, down the green from where he is, this, this really requires the classic Augusta touch. Yeah, it very much depends on how much he wants to give this because it's a left to right putt down the hill. 
and if it gets away from you, if it misses the hole, it's just going to keep going on and on and on. So he's either going to, if he wants to hit it firm, then obviously he's got to take some break out of it. But that's a bold move because if he misses, he's got six foot coming back. I think it's going to be just the one that you just give a little bit more break and just get it dying into the hole. Oh, we're well into the evening now here in Augusta, Georgia. With the light certainly beginning to fade, Max Holmer, as we look at him, one foot certainly higher than the other. That gives the idea of the slope that he's putting down towards the hole and it does not fall into the hole. So it is a bogey. It's a bogey four, which he taps in and Max Homer drops back to three under. So Tiger Woods, Ian, will have to finish off next to remain at one under. And just to bring you up to date with Tyrrell Hatt, an excellent third shot into the 13th, fully capitalised, knocked it in from maybe three, four feet, four, a bounce back birdie, so he returns to three under par. So two Englishmen at three under par in Tyrrell Hatton and Tommy Fleetwood, and remember Danny Willett in the clubhouse at four under. So Tiger Woods, there's only Tiger and his caddy on the 12th green now. And I can see the reflections of both of them in the waters of Ray's Creek. Tiger Woods in that peachy colored shirt, Georgia Peach, steps forward. And this now from seven, eight feet, this to remain at one under. ball rolling now towards the hole and in well played Tiger Woods very very good par three to remain at one under we'll be delighted with that and actually you know, I think we've still got maybe another two, feels like another 10-20 minutes of, of light so to get through 11 and 12 with pars that is as well as one up on the field that's for sure fantastic three there from Woods and if he can make birdie at 13 well get to two under who knows? Yep, so he's one under, he is one under, but Max Homer drops back to three under, Mark. And uh, we've got three more groups to come through Amen Corner. And actually, Brian Harmon, the Open champion on two under, is currently with his playing partners. Brooks Kepka on, on level par and Tom Kim one under. They are on the 11th green now. Oh, we've, we've seen Fred, Freddie Couples uh, down below us there through his group of 317, although uh, the uh, the amateur in that group, Stuart Hagerstad, didn't wait for Hadwin or Couples to put out, did he? He marched off to the 18, and I wonder whether that was just to try and get the hole done? I think so. I mean, he, he'd finished up, and he, he certainly wasn't going to disturb them by moving away because he was down at the bottom of the slope behind the 17th green so I think he's probably just thinking Do you know what I want to get on with this get this round finished before play gets called for the night and Freddie Couples uh, made his bogey five he's moved out to seven over par and he's going to take his time he's just strolling down that uh, that narrow long 18th tee getting ready to play the last hole of the first round I think well, Hagerstad might have played his tee shot whilst before, before Couples and Hadwin arrived on the tee well, uh, he'd do that so that once you've played that shot then you can complete the hole yeah, that, yes so, so so they wanted to get it he wanted to get it done yeah exactly yeah. exactly yeah. You, you wouldn't want to come back and just finish no. off on 18 no. would you uh if Nick, you can avoid it Nikos Hoygaard is on 15 cat yes where well, Andrew McGee and I have just shrugged on some light layers as the chill of the evening begins to descend a pinkish tin is tinge is bouncing off the underneath of the clouds overhead and reflecting on the dark surface of the pond Andrew McGee actually just said that everything's a lot clearer now <laughs> and it's not as dark because he's taken off his sunglasses <laughs> you know as Arizona people we just sleep in our sunglasses I just forgot I was wearing them <laughs> it's like oh actually there is a bit more daylight than I thought lovely lovely out here so just keeping our voices down because uh, behind us uh, Shane Lowry's group just teeing off on the 16th but Nikolai Hoygar he seemed to be in a good position from the top of the hill and he certainly got the length to go for the green but he's chosen to lay up on the par 5 15th Hoygar at 4 under par playing alongside two time uh, winner Bubba Watson and Adam Schenk Watson 1 over par Schenk uh, at level par at the moment and the wind is howling wow the sending blooms of ripples across the surface of the pond. Hoygar has stepped off this ball and he's looking up at the trees thinking where on earth has that come from? 
Well, he's looking at the flag. It's just ripping straight downwind for him, which is which is difficult to, to get any spin on this ball to hold the to hold the green with just a wee wedge. Let's see if he can figure it out. He's taking a long time to get the to make a correct decision here because this is a big stop. This is four under par. Doesn't want to mess it up right now on this difficult shot. And he dropped a shot on the 14th as well, so doesn't want to go for back-to-back -back bogeys here. Playing in his first Masters, of course, the young Dane, 23 years old, cool, calm member of the Ryder Cup team in Rome in the autumn. Won uh, the DP World Tour Championship last year and has been focusing his attentions since on the PGA Tour. Runner-up at the Farmers Insurance on his first start of the year, but he's slid down to a couple of missed cuts at the Arnold Palmer and the players on his last couple of appearances. But obviously rediscovering some magic here on the biggest stage of all and he's just launched this one into the growing darkness bouncing a couple of times beyond the pin now needs to put on a little bit of backspin but unfortunately that one's moved sideways for him and is working itself away from the hole yeah most of those shots we've seen coming in right of the pin and then having a little hook spin spinning down to the hole he ended up landing left of the pin which is this green is everything from right to left it's a huge slope coming across this green he He's not totally happy with that. He threw his arms up in a bit of exasperation, but hitting the green from there is not terrible. Not maybe the best approach then to this 15th hole. Nikolai Heigar could have gone for the green, given where he was. Chose to lay up, but he's got a really long birdie putt coming up for uh, 25 foot or so if he wants to pick up another shot here. Bubba Watson, though, and Adam Schenk both on the green in two, so they've got some eagle chances coming, Chappers. Uh, Justin Rose coming down 17-1 over uh, Peter Malnati in that group provided one of the more heart heartwarming stories of the PGA season but he has struggled today he is nine over speaking of struggling I think Tiger's in trouble on 13 Ian yeah he's ballooned his tee shot on the par 5 13th way way right as far right as and if not further right than any other player I've certainly seen going through that 13th hole today so he's got a, a forest of pines to negotiate when he gets to the ball by contrast Max Homer's hit a wonderful tee shot shot raking low draw that has gone round the corner and certainly has put the green very much in range for him as for Tommy Fleetwood he on the 10th missed the green to the left and left himself around about 10 feet for his birdie uh, rather for his par and couldn't take that opportunity he's dropped a shot at the 10th and so Fleetwood back to two under par and as the sun starts to set away to our right and goes behind the clouds uh, Brian Harmon has dropped a shot in front of John Murray. Yes he did he, uh, he he was short of the green and he ended up dropping a shot so he is one under par and he is now with his playing partners Tom Kim and Brooks Kepka on the 12th tee. So Brian Harmon the Open champion, one under par for the tournament. Brooks Kepka is at level and Tom Kim is one over and it is Kepka now who plays his tee shot towards the 12th green through the gathering gloom and the ball comes down right at the back of the green. So he will have that downhill put of 12, 15 feet for, for a birdie from there for Brooke Kepka. Yeah, all over the flag, a really good shot. Just, uh, it's, it's gonna be a quick putt, but at least he's got a birdie chance. And so now, Brian Harmon, the Open champion, Last year at Hoylake at Royal Liverpool, Brian the Butcher, as he was dubbed by the British tabloid newspapers for his love of hunting and then eating the, the meat that he gathered. So the Butcher, which did very much amuse him, I know. He's over the ball now and off it goes towards the 12th green to the right of the putting surface. Oh, and it's landed short on the bank and it's rolling back down and it's into the water. And he's the latest, he's the latest player whose ball, even though conditions now have changed again and it doesn't seem anything like the, the swirling wind that we saw for, for Jason Day and Tiger Woods a few moments ago, but he's in the water. Yeah, that's just a poor execution because, as you say, John, uh, the wind has died down. There's hardly any wind here right now, and he's not even pitched that on the front edge. So whether it could have been a mishit, and it wasn't a mishit, it's certainly a misclub. 
Yep, so he's dropped a shot at the 11th, Brian Harmon, and every chance that he will drop shot or shots at the 12th as well. Tom Kim just about to tee off at one over, and uh, and just coming down the 11th now, Mark Ludwig Aubert on his Masters debut, indeed his major debut, two under par. Turn into some kind of comedy sketch here on 17 because everybody that's coming up now is trying to rush through Ali, aren't they? So they can get on to 18. So Justin Rose in this group with Eric Cole and Peter Malnati, they actually sent Malnati ahead, sprinting to the green to get to his ball first so that he can put out and get onto the 18th tee and get that hole underway so that they don't have to come back tomorrow to play 18. Cat. Just hanging on to my notes, having a John Murray moment here. The wind that John's been battling with on the uh, Amen Corner has found its way down here to the 15th and 16th. Puffs of white sand being lifted out of the bunker as Nikolai Hoygar attempts this 25-foot birdie putt. And that one curling round a little bit short, coming up a couple of uh, feet short for Hoygar. He should be able to just uh, tap it in for his par. But I was watching him, Andrew McGee, walking around the lake here. And, and th they look like fireworks exploding on the surface of the pond, those ripples racing across in the wind. He was having a real go at his caddy, who was rather magnificently called Christian Christiansen. He was looking at his yardage book. That approach shot, he was hoping for a lot better. He was hoping to pick up that drop shot once again. I think they might have been, I was just trying to, we were both talking about, what are they doing? And I think he wanted to be closer to the green on his third shot, and he laid it back too far, which just made the shot just too difficult with the with the wind blustering as it is. That's the first time we've seen the sand just rip out of that bunker over there because it's gusting that hard. Yeah, so quietening down over at Amen Corner, but here at 15, 16, still a plenty of drama, plenty of wind. Bubba Watson, the two-time champion, just gliding one by. That was for birdie for, for Bubba. He'd found the green in two, so he had a good look at Eagle. And his birdie putts drifted by by about five feet or so. He gave it a bit of a wave, a sarcastic wave yeah. from the former champion as it headed down towards the water. Justin Rose is spending as much time here, Ali, trying to watch Malnati on 18, see whether he's taking his tee shot, but he can't take his tee shot because the group ahead, the Freddie Couples group, are on the fairway, so he can't take his shot. But Justin Rose is half watching Malnati on the 18th whilst trying to line up his own putt. Well, Malnati at nine over, you know, has had a very difficult first round. He's sort of taken one for the team there, hasn't he? He rushed through his two putts, made his two putts and made his par on the 17th. Justin Rose's birdie putt is on its way from back left of this green. That's when Deshambo hold his birdie putt from earlier in the day. He's knocked that up to about two or three feet so he'll need that to save his par and keep himself at one over par and we had John Murray asking for the light from the umpires Mal Natty who wears that sort of white floppy hat looked like sort of David Garrett prowling in the covers as he went sprinting off the back of the 17th green uh, to get to the 18th tee but Rose has told him to get on with it, but he can't because the group ahead are in the way. Ian. Tiger Woods from the pine straw deep into the woods down the right-hand side of the par 5 13th. He could just bunt it low, running it through that ochre-coloured pine straw. The ball then emerging into the second cut and then eventually just about making it onto the fairway, but still a long way back in two on the par 5 second. Jason Day is in a similar position and he's got a an opportunity to fire something that will get much more advanced down the fairway and Max Homer will be next to play on this 13th in prime position in the middle of the fairway looking to find the green in two. Uh, Malnati has, has gone. I don't know whether the group ahead have moved but Malnati has gone encouraged by Rose to do so. Cat. Nikolai Hoygaard just tidying up for his par here on the rather messy looking 15th green now. There's a splatter of sand all over the, the, the far edge of it that uh, spilled out once it was lifted out by the wind a short time ago. All still, all calm again. Once again, not a breath of wind. It's just been such a weird topsy-turvy day in terms of the wind. But uh, yeah, Nikolai Hoygaard just tapping in from a couple of feet for his par. He'll stay at four under, so three shots off the lead. And they are, it looks like, going to walk on to the 16th tee so we should have some play here in just a moment okay back to Matt Homer with Ian second shot and he's laid it up 240 yards out I thought he was a bit closer and didn't take on Ray's Creek and uh, has laid it up probably to 100 yards short of the green as we can now see Tyrrell Hatton on the 14th looking for a birdie and he's not happy at all. He's looking to the heavens. He's now chuntering. I mean, it, 
it almost looked like a miss hit that putt and it's come up short and he's got a smile on his face and a oh my goodness me he's so so animated the good thing about the masters is that the microphones can't get close enough for Tyrrell Hatton because sometimes it can get a bit too fruity as it did at live last week um, if we've got time I can tell you about Wood's third shot on the 13th long iron in hand ball very much above his feet so a real test of golfing craftsmanship here looks to have made very good contact there beautifully balanced follow through finds the heart of the green that's a superb shot from tiger woods and he's safely aboard the putting surface and he's given himself a birdie chance from 20 feet uh, 10 to 8 in the evening here at augusta and it is getting gloomy 10 to 1 in the morning back home in the uk what news of Hoygaard, Cat? <laughs> well, you'll like this, Mark. It is getting a bit gloomy, and there are two players in this group wearing blue shirts and blue caps and blue trousers, so we were looking at the wrong guy. And <laughs> <laughs> Nikolai Hoygaard actually birdied the uh, par 5 15th, so he has moved back to five under pass. So our mistake. Yeah. It's getting very late in the has day. He, has he put his sunglasses back on? <laughs> next we were both like, no, no, that's definitely him. <laughs> I even have my binoculars out. Oh, oh, can hear the hooter blowing, Mark. And just as Nikolai Hoygar and the actual Nikolai Hoygar was putting his uh, tee peg in the tee on the 16th, the hooter blows for the end of play on day one of the 88th Masters. So Bubba Watson, Adam Schenk and Nikolai Hoygar will start again on the 16th. The rules official has just come out and is clarifying what they need to do. Yep, they're heading off towards the back of the tee, and I think okay. that is the end of the action for the opening day, Mark. They're heading off there. Eric Cole and Justin Rose are teeing off on 18 at the moment, and Justin Rose is going to take his tee shot. What's happening around Amen Corner, John? Well, Ludwig Albert has made his par four at the 11th to remain at two under the Dane, and... Brian Harmon is just, having taken his drop after his tee shot ended up in the water, he has just played his pitch shot there, which he has judged very, very well. I mean, he's playing it from way out towards the, the Byron Nelson Bridge, which is uh, a way to, in the distance to my right, that's where you walk down from the 13th tee as you make your way down the par five. But he's judged that pretty well, Trish Johnson. He's left that probably 10, 12 feet, but the problem is that he is he's there in three already, isn't he? Yeah, he is, but he's played a really good a recovery shot there, and I think you're right, John, I think he's got somewhere around about 8, 10 feet down the hill. I mean, it's a big putt. To finish, if you finish off with a double bogey and finish bogey, double bogey, your last two holes, that will be a real kick in the teeth. Yep, so he's got to finish off, as has Brooks Kepka on the 12th end. On the 13th, Max Homer playing a beautifully spun wedge from 75 yards in to the green with his third shot to the par five. And he's given himself probably seven, eight feet for birdie. Be very interesting to see whether he wants to take that birdie putt in this light or come back and have that the first shot and for the morning. And it's a putt the, to get to four under. And that's the choice, Ian, for all of them yes. now. Is yep. it they can complete the hole that they are on yes. or they can stop now and 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 pick up first exactly. thing tomorrow exactly that so they, it's if it was uh, if the hooter had gone because of threatening weather that would be it they'd just have to go off but that's not the case it's due to darkness so they and have the option and so you know Eric Cole and Justin Rose and Peter Malnati they're on the balance of the the marathon that is the 72 hole tournament they probably feel that it's they're, they're better off giving themselves a, a bit of a lie-in tomorrow and getting it done and playing the 18th in the dark and that hence they're they're making their way up there do now you, do you have to make the decision as a three no i think you know you can do it individually as, as right. far as i know yeah so uh, so it, it could be that someone would say well no i'm 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 going to stop now but clearly on the group on 13 homer woods and day they're going to putt in the darkness okay there's and they're still going on 12 I think yes they are they've uh, they've opted to finish the 12th so Brooks Kepka remember he had that put for birdie from right at the back of the green he's rolled that down he hasn't holed out yet and now Brian Harmon has this put for his bogey four and this is all of this is all of 10 feet and it is very very gloomy here now 
in terms of, of playing sport and in terms of how it can mess with the mind. And there are lights on up in the undergrowth, up on the banks above Amen Corner. We can see them glowing in the dark. And Harmon now putting for his bogey four, and he holds it. Well hold, Brian Harmon. Yeah, that's fantastic, really. That is so gutsy, because it just, OK, one shot dropped, but a, to drop one on 11 and then two on 12 and then go and sleep on that, come back out in the morning, would be so difficult. That was a really, really gutsy putt from Harmon. And so Brooks Kepka just has to uh, finish this off, which... Now, has he hauled out? I'm not sure he did. I think, I think, I think he's left it. Yeah, I don't think he wants to finish in the dark. I think he uh, he's happy to come back and give himself that tomorrow. I haven't seen him hole out, no, definitely. No, I, think he's, I think Brooks Kepka still has a short putt to take there when play resumes in the morning. And he's actually just walking back across the green now to, uh, yeah, he's just... Yeah, he's just putting a couple of tees in to make yeah. sure that the, his marker is... If he just leaves the marker there when they when they come and uh, do the greens, then that will disappear. But if you put tees down, they'll, um, they'll uh, still be there in the morning. Yep, so Brooks Kepke, Ian, is going to begin in the morning, on the second round morning, to complete his first with a short put to remain at level par on the 12th green. But that is it. That's the end of, that's the end of play here at Amen Corner for this first evening. On the 13th, Tiger Woods uh, has just cozied his birdie putt up to the whole side, just 18 inches to negotiate here for his par five, having driven into the wilds of the woods. And Tiger Woods will resume on the 14th tee, which is probably one of the more friendly uh, shots that you could resume with uh, first thing tomorrow morning, and he will do so at one under par. Max Homer still to putt. He's got the birdie chance that would take him into a share of fourth place with Danny Willett at four under par. Uh, Nikolai Hoygaard at five under par. Scotty Scheffler at six under par after his 66. And Bryson DeChambeau, the leader at the end of day one at seven under par after his round of 65. Jason Day is next to play. Always a very deliberate golfer. And he's taking advantage of the last vestiges of light here. This is for a birdie. And this would take him to one under par in the same mark as Tiger Woods with those voluminous gray, dark gray trousers. Sends this putt forward and, well, maybe, maybe he should have had a look at it in the morning because he didn't spot the borrow there and he left it on the high side. And so that will be a par five for Jason Day, and he remains at level par. And next to play will be Max Homer. And Homer has had a really, really good day. He's at three under par. He's had to battle the worst of the weather. He's never really been a factor in a major championship before. He looks a much more composed golfer than the one who played with Tiger Woods at the Open Championship at St. Andrews, the 150th Open the year before last. Now he's a Ryder Cup success story, albeit an overall defeat. And now he has acquitted himself extremely well with his uh, first round here so far. Now here is uh, Justin Rose on the 18th playing his second shot. Peering through the darkness as the ball lands in the back right area of the green. Pretty much pin high, good distance control. I wonder if he'll want to putt that though. Anyway, here is Max Homer for his birdie, dribbling it down the slope. Will it stay up? Yes, it does. And there's a clenched fist from Homer because a birdie that takes him to four under par. And he will sleep very, very well after that. And these three will resume on the 14th tee, and Homer will do so, having just pocketed a birdie that puts him into a share of fourth place with Danny Willett. Yeah, Bryson DeChambeau then, the leader overnight. Seven under, Scotty Scheffler, the world number one on six under. Um, the news from here is that the first round will resume at 10 to 8 in the morning, tomorrow morning. So that is 10 to 1 
uh, UK time in the afternoon. The second round will begin 10 minutes later. So the second round will begin at 8 o'clock here at Augusta, 1 o'clock in the UK. Updates, of course, throughout the afternoon uh, on Five Live, especially during Colin's show as well. I think plenty of us will be on during Colin's show. Uh, and then we'll be on again, Five Live Sport, from 7 o'clock updates there with Darren on the Friday Football Social uh, and then full commentary on Sports Extra again from 8 o'clock. We'll do a bit more on Five Live as well. But uh, 10 to, uh, what did I say, 10 to 1 UK time. The first round will resume 1 o'clock. It will uh, get underway the second round and we'll keep you up to date all the way on Five Live Sports Extra and BBC Sounds from a very, very gloomy Augusta as the final few patrons file towards the exit. It's good night from us. <laughs>